You never go to work, but you can earn $10 billion every day. Simply because your father is the world's richest man, and your mother is an unparalleled national scholar. Your grandfather is the head abbot of country. Your family is the top in the world. Every member of the family dominates the world in their respective fields. At the age of three, because you like the moon, your grandfather directly initiated a moon exploration project. When you were four, you inadvertently said you liked Mars. Your grandfather immediately announced a plan to immigrate to Mars. You received special training at the age of five. At eight years old, you single-handedly fought dozens of military champions. At 12, you were already able to go abroad for missions. By the age of 18, you had already achieved numerous military merits. Even upon retiring, you had trained 88 national warlords. And at 20, you obtained dozens of academic degrees. Becoming a lifelong honorary professor at Cambridge, Stanford, and Harvard, with investment abilities surpassing the stock market god, once made billions from stock trading daily, causing a global financial tsunami. At least 1,000 companies under your control are among the Fortune Global 500. You stood at the top of the pyramid from the moment you were born. If you wish, you can turn the world upside down with just a flick of your finger. But being so extraordinary, you have also aroused the jealousy of other countries. So, while training on a secret island overseas, you were ambushed by an enemy destroyer. Missiles flattened everything. When you jumped into the sea and were saved by a woman. This fortunate woman not only saved you, but also saved the whole world. Because since birth, a chip has been implanted in your body, linked to the nuclear bomb button. Once your heartbeat stops, the nuclear weapon will automatically cover the entire globe. The meaning of the family is that you are the whole world. If you die accidentally, this world has no reason to exist. And at this moment, you are sitting on the family's nuclear submarine. Subordinates are reporting to you that the person who will save you has been found. Her name is Qin Meng, she is a college student. You smile slightly. This woman saved the whole world. You should give her a lifetime of endless glory and wealth. She saved your life, you protect her for a lifetime. In addition, the butler told you that the attackers have been found. They are from the south, have been successfully captured, and more than 50,000 people have been taken as prisoners. Coldness flashes in your eyes. I am originally kind, but do I have to slaughter the people? The mistake is not mine, but this world. Finally, you decisively ordered strong men to go and work as miners, not allowed to leave for 50 years, and young women to make fires and cook. Let them guard the border for 100 years. At the same time, send this to the world media, warning them that this is the consequence of offending you. You completed all of this without joy or sorrow, as if it were a trivial matter. After speaking, a cold air swept through the nuclear submarine, almost freezing it. The butler was so shocked, thinking to himself, young master, you're becoming more and more domineering. Three hours later, you smoothly landed from the armed helicopter you transferred to from the nuclear submarine. At this time, Dongzhou International Airport has already been completely evacuated. A 50-kilometer radius has been taken over by the military. Ten fighter jets are patrolling. One hundred Rolls Royces are there to welcome you, and these are just the tip of the iceberg of the family's power. There is also a helicopter escort overhead. Tens of thousands of elite soldiers in the camp are ready to rescue at any time. The butler has already arranged everything for you, and the university president has been replaced with our own person. And we have already bought all the nearby buildings. Your father has already handed the tiger tally to the butler. We can mobilize 300,000 people at any time to protect your safety. Your face is indifferent, your eyes stern. Even if a million soldiers came, they wouldn't be able to harm you. You alone can withstand everything. You were injured by a warship last time just because you were careless and didn't dodge. Even though Dongzhou University is a prestigious school with a hundred years of history, the aristocratic children in the school have never seen such a terrifying scene and are all shocked. As the motorcade stops, hundreds of well-trained bodyguards are on guard around, only opening the bulletproof car doors after ensuring safety. You get out of the car indifferently, waving to the butler to withdraw all the snipers, simply because you don't like the feeling of being watched. As soon as you enter the school, the butler, Chen Shang, immediately stands up. Everyone looks at the young master, and he loses a hair. Wipe out three generations. After you enter the university, you directly come to the class where Qin Meng is. In just a few hundred meters, at least 20 women faint. Doctors are already used to it because three doctors were killed by your handsomeness when you were born. In addition to your strength and talent, your looks are also the best in the world. You scan the classroom with your eyes, but that Qin Meng is not there. So you randomly find a seat and sit down. Everyone stares at you with wide eyes marveling at how handsome you are. Their idols are not as handsome as you. 
All the goddesses are smitten. Even the school flower, Lu Yao, is seeing such a handsome person for the first time, much better than the clown she has recently dated by thousands of times. This man will definitely be her next boyfriend. Then Lu Yao walks over actively, even saying that as the school flower, she wants to be friends with you. You glance casually, sneer, and once again, it's a vase that actively throws itself at you. You've seen too many women like this, a bit pretty and arrogant. Lu Yao is ignored, feeling very frustrated. Defiantly, she says, why are you so aloof? She just wants to get to know you. You calmly say that she is not worthy. The magnetic voice makes the girls in the class scream again. In terms of appearance, figure, and temperament, your household servants are a hundred times better than him. Your voice is as cold as ice. Even Princess Bai Bai was once chosen by you. They are all top-notch in the world. Lu Yao's looks are only at the village level. Lu Yao's face turned pale. He has never been humiliated like this before. He was about to slap you. The steward outside saw someone trying to harm you. Immediately ordered the sniper to shoot to kill. But at this moment, you suddenly slapped Lu Yao away and calmly asked where Qin Meng is. What? You're here to find that ugly woman Qin Meng. Lu Yao covered his face, looking shocked. Are you blind? She is the ugliest girl in the whole school. The steward outside once again proved that anyone who dared to insult the young master must be executed along with their entire family. 30 seconds later, all the information about the ancestors of the Lu family for 18 generations has fallen into my hands. The Lu family of the Eastern Zhou dynasty, committing the crime of disrespecting superiors, deserves to be executed, the steward's voice was icy. But you only want to find Qin Meng. Whoever reveals the location of Qin Meng, you will reward them with a building. As soon as they heard this, someone immediately stood up to speak, but was stopped by Lu Yao. You frowned slightly. This woman has repeatedly opposed you, so she doesn't need to live anymore, as you slowly raised your finger. The sniper lurking outside immediately aimed the gun at Lu Yao's head. Suddenly, a person rushed in from outside, looking fearful, and apologized for being late. You were suddenly shaken, she's here. But when you saw her, even someone as knowledgeable as you was stunned on the spot, almost collapsing onto the chair. Seeing you take the initiative to strike up a conversation with Qin Meng, the women in the class all looked at you with envy and resentment. Among the crowd, the most unwilling one is the school bell Lu Yao. In terms of looks and figure, she is the best in Dongzhou, or can't she compare to this ugly girl? Then Lu Yao stepped forward and stood in between you. Just as she was about to speak, she was slapped by you. Your eyes coldly swept over, the gap between you and me was destined from birth. Don't act ungratefully, or I'll wipe out your whole family. The steward outside understood it well. The richest person in Dongzhou, daughter of the Lu family, guilty of insubordination, should be beaten to death. At this point, you tried to restrain your aura as much as possible and asked Qin Meng with a smile what reward she wanted. Anything that exists on earth, you can fulfill. Qin Meng shook her head, indicating that she didn't seek any return. At this moment, her phone rang, it was her mother urging her to go on a blind date with the greasy man, Lu Xiao. Turns out, before she disfigured herself, she was extremely beautiful, and was known as the twin flowers of Dongzhou along with Lu Yao. The matchmaker who visited her house every day could hardly contain her excitement. Later, due to some business problems at home, her mother arranged for her to go on a blind date with a greasy man, hoping to borrow some money urgently. At this point, Qin Meng's eyes started welling up. It's not something anyone can come up with, the several million that her family is short of. You look calm. Money is the last thing you lack. Not only the top four banks in the country, but also 13 foreign banks belong to your family. Even the printing bank needs your family's approval to operate. You openly said you want to go with him. At this moment, the butler who had been hiding in the dark gave a cold order, instructing the general of Dongzhou to summon all those with stars on their shoulders to see him within 10 minutes. Those who are late will be punished. After doing all this, the butler still looked worried. If something were to happen to you and you were killed, this world would cease to exist. At this moment, you are sitting across from Lu Danning. Seeing your contemptuous behavior, Lu Danning was stunned, who the hell are you? You immediately put your arm around Qin Meng's shoulder and replied, she's my girlfriend. Do you understand now? Lu Danning laughed in anger, Qin Meng, do you have any idea what the consequences are of making me angry? Don't you want the money? Qin Meng's face turned pale in an instant, and she quickly pushed you away, saying, I'm sorry, he's not my boyfriend. I was wrong, Lu Danning immediately looked smug, the room has already been prepared planning to play with Qin Meng and then discard her. Your response to Qin Meng, instead of blaming her, was to snap your fingers. Suddenly, all the customers in the restaurant stood up. Behind the cashier, several waiters instantly concealed their smiles and prepared to draw their guns. 
The cleaning lady suddenly transformed into a top-level secret agent. Even the dog next to them instantly bared its teeth. After preparing to attack the butler outside the door, the restaurant was already filled with a chilling atmosphere, locking eyes with Lu Danang alone. While Qin Meng went to the restroom, the butler came in. You asked indifferently, did you bring the money? With that, he casually grabbed a handful of money from the black bag and threw it at Lu Danang's face. This is one million, take it and disappear from my sight. Lu Danang was somewhat shocked, you dare to throw money at me, damn it? Before he finished speaking, you threw a few more bundles at him, this is 8 million. Is this enough? You're asking for death, Lu Danang fumed with rage. Suddenly, the butler roared, ignorant insects, do you know who you're talking to? In the face of the butler's powerful aura, even a victorious general would be scared into helplessness. And you had lost your patience, grabbing the bag and fiercely throwing it at the man's face. This is 50 million. Don't let me see you bothering Qin Meng again. Get lost like the insect you are, you don't even have the right to stand in front of me. Lu Dunang's body was trembling, although his family is wealthy, it's only around 100 million. Who the hell has ever seen a little animal that's been slapped with 50 million? Is having a bit of money something to be proud of? Prepare to die. The steward suddenly shouted, daring to shout at the young master, it's a crime punishable by death. With a command, the surrounding hidden bodyguards all rushed over and pressed Lu Danang to death. The steward's eyes were sharp, daring to offend our young master with the courage of a mere ant. Directly sink into the East Sea. After saying that, ten bodyguards picked up shields, blocking your line of sight. Because of this trash, blood can't splash on you. Immediately the steward picked up his phone and ruthlessly said, The Lu family of Dongzhou, leave none alive. In just a few moments, not a single member of the Lu family was left alive. You smiled indifferently, I was originally kind, but now I'm covered in blood. Wait for Qin Meng to come back with snacks. But Lu Danang, your expression was indifferent. He left and promised not to harass you again. Hearing this, Qin Meng's face changed. She couldn't go back without borrowing the money. She couldn't explain it at all. As you said this, you stood up, revealing a smile. I'll accompany you home. Outside the door, the steward was full of vigilance. When the young master goes out, clear all the streets and enter a level 3 alert status. After doing all this, the steward still felt it wasn't safe enough. Then in a cold tone, where is the Eastern Zhou warlord? How dare you be late, bring him to me. Started trading stocks at the age of three, making billions of dollars a day. Directly triggered a global financial storm. Hundreds of Fortune 500 companies were wiped out. Countless financial tycoons went bankrupt and jumped off buildings. Even the stock god Buffett cried and begged you to spare him. But despite all these grandiose achievements, your mother-in-law still looks down on you. So, you directly took out a diamond card with $20 billion in it. Your mother-in-law was instantly dumbfounded. But she simply thought you were just a nouveau riche from a forced demolition. And she bragged that her daughter was going to marry the richest man, she wouldn't even look at a homeless nouveau riche. This is when Qin Meng's father brought out the contract, demanding that it must be signed, otherwise never come back to this house. Qin Meng felt extremely wronged, longing for death. At this moment, you lifted Qin Meng's face and said to her, You saved my life which means you also saved your own future. Welcome to my world. The steward outside the door was shocked to see this action. Even when a princess from a hundred countries appeared voluntarily, you didn't touch her, and even sent her to the cold palace, turning her into a resentful woman. Xin Meng's face turned red and hot, she lowered her head and said in a self-deprecating tone, I'm so ugly, you wouldn't still like me, would you? You smiled slightly, it's just a scar on your face, it's not like it can't be cured. The next second, the steward walked over respectfully. The top hospital is ready, and the best doctors in the world are waiting for you. Take Qin Meng and sit in a convoy of hundreds of Rolls Royces. At the same time, Qin Meng also became curious, who are you, and how can you have such great power? The butler beside him looked excited, the young master is truly the pride of heaven, standing at the top of the food chain since birth. If the privileged represent the upper class, then you are the master of the discourse in this upper class. The difference between them is not about money or the number of people on your shoulders, stars can bring them closer. If one day you can't bear it and want to die, then the earth will be destroyed along with you. Soon the convoy arrived at the hospital. Hundreds of top professors from around the world were immediately asked to stay for a three-day examination. You will only need three days to recover, the hospital director respectfully said to you. You waved indifferently and said, just three days. If the surgery is successful, each of them will be given a hospital and receive the next Nobel Prize in medicine. From now on, the hospital and the 50-mile radius will be taken over by the military. No one is allowed to disturb the treatment, and intruders will be killed without mercy. 
After doing all this, you look at the butler and ask the person from the Wu family to come with the contract to see me. The butler has already sent someone to inform him. Smiling, he asks you to go back to the hotel and rest first. The largest six-star hotel in the Eastern Zhou Dynasty, Atlantis, had already been bought by him. On the other side, the richest man Wu Jiahao handed the contract to his son Wu Meng, continuously reminding him to be more modest and not to act superior in the future. Honesty signed the contract. Wu Meng casually took the contract. When arriving at the hotel, they found that the usually crowded entrance was deserted. Hundreds of black-clad bodyguards with guns remained vigilant at all times. As soon as Wu Meng got out of the car, he was detained by several bodyguards and frisked with a metal detector. Then the butler approached to report to you that there was a Ferrari driving loser outside, claiming to be from the Wu family. Seeing that you didn't pay attention, the butler tacitly understood. After leaving, with a cold expression, made Wu Meng sign the contract quickly. The man was stunned, thinking this was too damn arrogant. After all, he was Wu Meng from the Eastern Zhou Dynasty. Who in the circle dared not to give him face? He immediately rushed towards your room. The next moment, dozens of warlords blocked in front of your room. Boldly roaring, he said that for you to come and sign the contract was a blessing earned by the Wu family for eight lifetimes. Sign it quickly and get lost. The pressure released by the Eastern Zhou warlord was sacred and not to be violated in the slightest. After returning home, Wu Meng, looking sullen, immediately had the family's hackers investigate your identity. But they can only find out that you were a parvenu from Kyoto. Your identity is classified as top secret, with no more than three authorized viewers worldwide. Twenty minutes later, General Dongzhou carried the hacker with broken limbs, asked the expressionless sword why the investigation was necessary. The hacker desperately begged for mercy, saying it was Wu Meng and Wu Xiao who ordered me to investigate. The steward immediately said coldly and boldly, rebellious people, daring to betray the young master's three generations of blood relatives, sentenced to life in Iron City prison with no chance of parole. As for Wu Meng's actions, even if his ancestors suffered a hundred times over, it wouldn't be enough. After speaking, General Dongzhou immediately knelt down and begged the steward, I am willing to take on the task. This made the steward furious. I will give you 30,000 elite soldiers to go and eliminate the Wu family, but let one person go. Bring him to see me, the steward angrily said. After Ring Zhan saluted, he left with a fierce look on his face. Xin Shen didn't care about this matter. He had just arrived in Dongzhou and dared to offend him. It was only right to die a hundred times. Wu's mansion. There were seven or eight people in the living room. Except for Wu Meng, the rest were friends he had called. Brothers, I need your help today. Wu Meng grumbled, today my old man asked me to sign a contract, guess what, the damn guy didn't even see me and kicked me out. Damn, really? Who's so arrogant, dares not to give Wu Xiao face? A big round-headed man laughed and said, it's simply ignorant, who doesn't know the name of Wu Xiao and Dong Zhou. Another man in Adidas said coldly, no matter who he is, daring to be so arrogant in Dong Zhou, he must leave an arm behind. Yes, I agree with what Zhao said. Today we must restore Wu Xiao's face. Wu Meng laughed heartily. With his good brother backing him up, he could walk sideways in the hole of Dong Zhou. Let's go, let's go to Atlantis. I want that ignorant outsider to kneel in front of me and beg for mercy. Several rich young men had just stood up when suddenly, there were a few screams from outside the door. With a bang, the door was kicked open. You don't need to go anywhere today. A group of camouflage-clad men rushed in, and Jean entered with a cold and indifferent face, and casually kicked the Wu family's bodyguard to death. What are you doing? Do you know where this is? Who let you in? Wu Meng had just angrily shouted when a sergeant suddenly smashed his head with the butt of a rifle. With a scream, Wu Meng knelt on the ground with blood streaming from his head. His other friends were also firmly pressed to the ground, their faces full of fear. Wu Meng looked terrified and said, Who are you? My father is Wu Tian, the honored guest of the Dongzhou governor. Ying Zhan exuded a solemn and murderous aura, his face cold and stern, You are not worthy to know my identity. You dare to investigate Master Shin's identity, a hundred deaths would not be enough to atone for your mistake. At the mention of Master Shin, Wu Meng suddenly realized something, his face filled with horror, you, you are the people sent by that outsider, who are you? Ying Zhan sneered, my master's identity, you, a mere ant, are not even qualified to inquire about. He glanced coldly at the others and said, I don't know who you are, 
But being with this person, I can only send you on your way together. No mercy. Stop. Wu Tian hurried into the living room and scolded, What are you doing? Release my son immediately. Dad, Dad, please save me. Wu Meng thought that the straw to save his life had come, and said with great joy, These ignorant people dare to kill your son, let them see the power of our Wu family. Don't be afraid, son. With me here today, no one can touch a hair on your head. Wu Tian's cold eyes looked at Ying Zhan and said ominously, I don't care who you are, or who's behind you, today, if you dare to hurt my son, I won't let you leave this door. To tell you the truth, the governor of Dongzhou is already on his way here. Today? Before he could finish his sentence, Ying Zhan's eyes were filled with killing intent. Not to mention the governor coming today, even if the governor of a province came here, it wouldn't stop him. At this moment, several Audi cars stopped outside, and then the governor of Dongzhou quickly ran in. Governor Chen, you finally came. Wu Tian immediately smiled, with the governor here, the safety of the Wu family could be ensured. The governor didn't even look at Wu Tian, but quickly walked to Ying Zhan and knelt directly. Trembling, he said, Chen Sanping, I pay my respects to the East Zhou warlord. Although he was the governor of Dongzhou, he was completely insignificant in front of the warlord. Chen Sanping was very flustered at this moment, and he also hated the Wu family father and son to death. It's okay if you get into trouble, just don't drag me down, he thought. He wanted to strangle the father and son himself. This, this. Wu Tian and his son were both dumbfounded. Their last resort, the last trump card, Chen Zhou Chang, actually knelt before a man? In an instant, the father and son were overwhelmed and cried out in unison. That was Chen Zhou Chang, an absolute authority in Dongzhou. And now he was kneeling in front of someone else. Words cannot describe the feelings in the hearts of the two. Wu Tian trembled all over, a fear like never before shrouding his mind. Ying Zhan's eyes were cold as he said, Chen Zhou Chang, you know your place, and you know it's urgent to distance yourself from them. Get up. After Chen Sanping got up, wiped the cold sweat from his forehead, and said, General, may I ask, what crime has the Wu family father and son committed that warrants death? Can you spare them for my sake? The Wu family had a close relationship with him, and Chen Sanping wanted to spare their lives. Ying Zhan sneered and said, Chen Zhou Chang, do you know who is behind me? Do you know what the consequences will be if he gets angry? Today, you have committed a grave offense by pleading for the Wu family father and son, and you must lose a hand. Chen Sanping's face turned pale. General, don't scare me. Who exactly is behind you? I am a governor, how dare you harm me? He thought he could safely distance himself from the Wu family's affairs. Who would have thought that the other party still wanted to break his arm? I also wanted to spare you, but you don't know your place and asked what you shouldn't have. Ying Zhan's eyes flashed with a cold light as he suddenly struck. Crack. Chen Sanping's arm was twisted. Ah. Chen Sanping writhed in agony on the ground. Wu Tian and his son were terrified, the world was too crazy. He was a governor, and he had just had his arm disabled. One arm for your life, remember, don't inquire about my son's identity casually. Your status is too low. Ying Zhen kicked Chen Sanping out like a dog, and he lay on the ground. Kneel, kneel quickly. Wu Tian and his son knelt down, and he forcefully pressed his son's head to the ground, saying miserably, Spare us, spare us. My Wu family is willing to hand over a hundred billion in assets, just spare my son's life. A mere hundred billion, my son doesn't care for it. Your son is blind and has offended the wrong person. Kill. Ying Zhan said sternly. Ah! With two despairing screams, the father and son fell in a pool of blood. The others also fell. Ying Zhan's eyes showed neither joy nor sorrow. He had done what he had to do, and this was his. Moment of glory. Ying Zhan returned to the Atlantis Hotel and entered. He stood straight and respectfully said, reporting to Master Shen, the Wu family father and son have all been killed, and Shen Sanping dared to speak out of turn, so I have disabled his arm as an apology. If Master Shen feels it's not enough, I will immediately have them eradicated. No need, you have done well, thank you. Shen Chen said indifferently. 
Thank you for your praise, Master. Engjan knelt down excitedly, trembling, to receive the praise of Master is my greatest honor. Shinshan asked him to stand up. The butler came in and said, Engjan, prepare the helicopter, the young master is going to the hospital to pick up Miss Qin Meng. Okay, I will arrange it immediately. Engjan respectfully left. The butler smiled and said, Young master, this Engjan looks very loyal. I have checked his file, he has numerous merits, 15 first class merits and 3 special merits. I suggest promoting him to the East Zhou War God. Whom, you arrange it. Shinshen picked up the clothes prepared for Qin Meng and said, I don't know if these clothes will fit her or if she will like them. His mind had already flown to the hospital, with no interest in anything else. The helicopter landed on the rooftop, and Shinshen boarded the plane and left. Soon, he arrived at the hospital. The hospital was guarded by tens of thousands of elite soldiers, and everyone was prohibited from entering or leaving. The challenger had already arrived here in advance to wait. When Shinshen saw him coming down from the helicopter, he immediately arranged for hundreds of people to go over and protect him. Stand outside and wait, I don't want to scare her, Shinshen said. He walked into the room alone. Three days had passed, and Xin Meng's recovery surgery had ended, but the bandages had not been removed yet. These three days were the happiest time for Qin Meng. Although she didn't know Shen Chen's exact identity, she was treated very well in the hospital. She felt a kind of care and concern that she had never experienced before. She seemed to have developed a great fondness for Shen Chen. Let me help you remove the bandages, Shen Chen said gently. Qin Meng's body trembled slightly, and she nervously grabbed his arm. Shen Chen slowly removed the bandages, and she felt the light, but she dared not open her eyes to look. Look at yourself in the mirror, you are truly as beautiful as a celestial being, Shen Chen encouraged. Qin Meng slowly opened her eyes, and in the mirror was a flawless, fair face, with the scar already disappeared. After being stunned for several seconds, tears began to well up in her eyes. She couldn't believe that she had truly recovered her previous appearance, and even looked better than before. Since her disfigurement, she woke up from nightmares every day. Whether at home or at school, she was mercilessly mocked and insulted every day. She even took sleeping pills. In an instant, she collapsed into Shin Chen's arms and cried, venting all the grievances of the past year. Shin Chen gently patted her shoulder and said softly, You saved my life, and I will protect you for a lifetime. This was his promise and his vow. From now on, no one in this world could bully Qin Meng. She, Qin Meng, would be Shin Chen's woman from now on, becoming a couple that even the heavens would envy. I've bought clothes for you, try them on, Shin Chen said, taking out clothes for her to try on. Outside the door, the steward stood with a slight smile on his face. He had watched the young master grow up, and in these twenty plus years, he had never seen the young master care so much about a woman. Even those princesses from the great powers had never caught the young master's eye. From now on, this Qin Meng was no longer Cinderella, but the mistress of the Xin family, who was above all things. He felt a little envious of Qin Meng. You better not have any extra thoughts, Ying Zhan. If I find out that you have any second thoughts about the young master, the steward suddenly warned, instantly making Ying Zhan feel like he had fallen into hell. He knelt down and trembled, saying, I dare not, I have no second thoughts about the young master. I, Ying Zhan, swear to the heavens that I will honor the young master for the rest of my life. If I betray him, may the heavens strike me down. Ying Zhan was truly terrified from the bottom of his heart. As a warlord, he knew how terrifying the power of the Xin family was. And among the 88 warlords, he was the lowest. The other 87 were all loyal to the Xin family. If he betrayed the Shin family, without the Shin family taking action, these 87 people could crush him. Ying Zhan's scalp tingled slightly. He had just had a jealous thought, and the steward had already noticed. It was too terrifying. Get up, the steward said indifferently. As long as you are loyal to the young master, after the three-month probation period, I will appoint you as the war god of the eastern province. Upon hearing this, Ying Zhan's breathing paused, and his heart rate increased. There were 88 warlords in the country. But there was only one war god. If he were appointed as the war god, he would be above all others. 
He knelt down again, trembling, and swore, I vowed a fight today and will never let the young master down, nor the Shin family. I will serve the Shin family for generations to come. Shin Shen turned away as Qin Meng began to change clothes. I, I'm ready. Qin Meng said weakly. Shin Shen turned around and was dazzled, unable to help but praise, so beautiful, I thought a fairy had descended to earth. Humph, your praise sounds a bit perfunctory, Qin Meng said, but she was secretly delighted and twirled in place. She couldn't believe that the beautiful woman in the mirror was really her. Shin Shen smiled and said, shall we go home or to the school? I want to go to school, Qin Meng wanted those who had mocked her to see that she was no longer an ugly woman. Shin Shen took her hand and said with a smile, from now on, no one can bully you. Prepare the helicopter, the young master is going to school. Enter level 2 alert, shoot down any airborne targets. Notify zone 8, tighten security and deploy 500 emergency assault teams for protection. The steward issued orders one after another, and two WZ-10 attack helicopters took off from the camp to provide escort. Shin Shen led Qin Meng out, and the steward smiled, young master, the entire area is secure and we can depart at any time. Qin Meng asked, are we taking a taxi? No, we're taking a plane. Shin Shen took Qin Meng to the rooftop, where the helicopter was already waiting. Qin Meng was stunned. She had only ridden in a plane a few times in her life, let alone a helicopter. She was even more curious about the man who was protecting her. East University Today, the campus bell, Lu Yaoyao, personally set up a stage on the playground and filled it with flowers. When everyone was puzzled about what was happening, a video of Lu Yaoyao in a wedding dress appeared on the big screen. My goodness, what is Miss Lu going to do? Come over here, is Miss Lu going to marry someone? This must be a proposal, which rich second generation is proposing to the East University Bell. The entire school was instantly a buzz. Nearly a few thousand people gathered on the playground. Lu Yaoyao, dressed in a wedding dress and holding a basin of flowers, looked as pure and innocent as a saint. This doesn't seem right, why is she holding flowers? Shouldn't it be the person proposing who brings them? Many people were confused and didn't understand the meaning behind this. Soon, almost everyone who wanted to see Lu Yaoyao had arrived. She picked up the microphone and said in a voice that everyone could hear, I'm waiting for someone, a man. This instantly raised the atmosphere to its peak. It could be said that at least four or five hundred men let out howls of despair. Their goddess was about to be taken away by a rich second generation. Lu Yaoyao continued, I have never liked anyone in all these years, and this man's appearance has completely occupied my heart. I've thought about it for three days, and finally gathered the courage to stand here to tell everyone that I want to give him a warm home. Who is it? Who could it be? Is it Master Li, or Lord Wang? Everyone began to speculate, and there were no more than three men in the entire school who could make Lu Yaoyao confess her feelings. Rumble. A helicopter suddenly appeared over the school. It caused a huge sensation. Although East University was known as an elite institution, most students drove sports cars to school, which was already quite ostentatious. But no one had ever seen anyone arrive at school in a helicopter. Thousands of eyes turned to the man and woman who descended from the helicopter. A perfect couple. The man was tall, handsome, and elegant, like a cold prince from a comic book. The woman was gentle and beautiful, like a fairy descending from the heavens, breathtakingly beautiful. Everyone was stunned. There were such handsome men and beautiful women in the world. Suddenly, more than 20 black BMWs rushed past and surrounded the helicopter. After Shin Chen got out of the car, dozens of bodyguards quickly surrounded him. Young master, there are too many onlookers. Should we drive them away? No need, they will get used to it sooner or later. Shin Chen held Qin Meng's hand and walked forward. He was still puzzled by the large crowd. The crowd automatically parted to make way for the two of them. In the front, Lu Yaoyao stood in the middle of the flowers in a wedding dress, her smile becoming more and more intense. He's here. Lu Yaoyao held the microphone and said, I've been waiting for you for three days, and you finally agreed to see me. Shin Chen was stunned for a second. How is this woman still alive? 
Was she deliberately waiting for him to appear? Lu Yaoyao walked over with a shy expression, knelt down on one knee, and handed him the flowers. Shen Shen, will you be my boyfriend? I want to marry you and be your woman. Boom! As soon as she said this, the scene immediately exploded, causing a sensation. It's impossible, this can't be happening. Who is he, that he can win the love of Lu, the campus beauty? I refuse to believe it. At least a hundred men were jealous. She's not worthy, she doesn't deserve my idol's love. My idol is mine. Many women also cried for Shin Chen. He was so handsome, he should always be single. Lu Yaoyao didn't deserve him. Will you marry me? Lu Yaoyao's eyes were sincere as she waited for Shin Chen's answer. Shin Chen's mouth curved into a faint smile. Suddenly, he embraced Qin Meng beside him and said indifferently, You're a cheap woman. Do you even know what you are? Do you deserve to be my woman? I love her, Qin Meng. Lu Yaoyao's expression suddenly froze. She stood up, her eyes turning cold. What did you say? How am I inferior to that ugly woman, Qin Meng? Are you blind? The goddess standing in front of you is Qin Meng. Shin Chen said expressionlessly. As soon as he finished speaking, everyone in the audience looked at Qin Meng in shock and disbelief. With a strong sense of incredulity and shock, they couldn't believe that in just three days, Qin Meng had become such a stunning beauty. Tall figure, fair skin, and a face that looked like a first love, no one dared to think of her as a clown. Lu Yaoyao's body instantly stiffened, her eyes filled with horror. How could this woman, who was not inferior to her in looks, turn out to be Qin Meng? How could this be? In just three days, how could that ugly woman become so beautiful? It's fake, it must be fake. Lu Yao Yao was instantly furious. This ugly woman must have worn a fake face, and she was going to expose this woman's lies. You can't fool me, this face must be fake. Lu Yao Yao, driven by jealousy, suddenly reached out to grab Qin Meng's face. You wench, you're asking for death. Suddenly, Ying Zhan stepped forward and kicked Lu Yao Yao in the stomach. She screamed in pain and spat blood onto the lawn. How dare you offend the young master, you deserve to die. Ying Zhan walked over with a murderous aura. Ying Zhan, let it go. Let her live like a dog, just throw her out. Xin Chen took Qin Meng's hand and left. He didn't want to kill Lu Yao Yao in front of Qin Meng, for fear of scaring her. After the two left, the onlookers were once again in an uproar. The most beautiful campus flower, Lu Yao Yao, had proposed to a man and was beaten by a scumbag. The forums began to repost the posts frantically, and the popularity instantly rose to the top of the East Continent's hot search. Xin Xin didn't need to worry about this at all, because someone would take care of it. After returning to the classroom, Qin Meng walked to the back row. This time, we won't sit there. Sit in the front. Xin Chen walked to the front row and said lightly, Excuse me, beautiful lady, can you move over a bit? Wow, he's so handsome. The beautiful lady was so excited that she fainted directly. Xin Chen pushed her aside and sat down directly. Xin Meng covered her. Mouthen smiled, can you be gentler with beautiful women? No. I will only be gentle with you. Xin Chen said calmly. Ying Zhan sat behind them and drove away all the people in the second row. Several bodyguards also mixed into other positions. Soon, the teacher came in to start the class. Hey, are you two in this class? Yes. Qin Meng nodded nervously. The old professor looked at Qin Shen and said, I'm not blind, such a handsome person must not be my student. You, get out. Ying Zhan's eyes turned cold. How dare this old man drive away the young master, he must be taught a lesson. He was about to get up, but Qin Shen waved his hand and said, I heard that your class is very good, so I will accompany my girlfriend to listen. The old professor chuckled, young man, you have good taste. Ordinary people don't have the chance to listen to my class. Now, everyone open your textbooks. Xin Shen had no interest in this course because he had received top-notch education since the age of three. After a dozen minutes, Xin Shen closed his eyes and started to doze off. 
That student, I hope you respect my class. The old professor scolded, just because you are handsome, you think you don't need to study hard. After graduation, companies look at qualifications and abilities, not your face. Shin Shin opened his eyes and said slowly, the questions you ask, even a three-year-old can answer, no need to study. What are you saying? The old professor looked angry. Qin Meng pulled Shin Shen's arm and whispered, Professor Wang is our most formidable math teacher, who has won many awards abroad. Yeah, just because you're handsome, you think you can do whatever you want. Humph, being rich is nothing special, there are plenty of rich people in the school. Who does he think he is? Several men in the back row made disdainful remarks. Shin Chen smiled. Although he didn't need to prove anything with his strength, he needed to shut people up. Then, Shin Chen took the initiative to walk to the podium and said calmly, You are still teaching quadratic equations, your level can't teach me. Next to the blackboard was an unsolved math problem. This problem had been in the school for over 10 years, and no one had been able to solve it. The Goldbach conjecture, an unsolved problem in the world. Shin Chen said calmly. The old professor sneered, so you understand this, do you also want to solve it? Don't overestimate yourself, this is a world-class problem, how many geniuses have tried for hundreds of years? Let me try, I can't say I'm 100% sure, but a 99.9% .9 chance is still possible. Shin Chen began to write. Don't overestimate yourself. The old professor laughed angrily and was about to drive away this troublemaker, but suddenly, he looked flustered. Swish, Shin Chen's writing was like a god's, slowly unraveling the problem that had stumped the world for nearly 300 years. The old professor took off his reading glasses, rubbed his eyes, and then stared at the blackboard. He kept muttering, it's impossible, this can't be, how could this kid? This is a problem that has stumped countless top mathematicians. Done. After Shin Chen finished writing the last symbol, he casually flicked the chalk. The old professor, with a face full of shock, looked at the blackboard. All the explanations were flawless, without a single flaw. A world-class problem that had stumped the world for over 300 years was solved today. The old professor took seven steps back, his old face showing a look of horror, so this is it, this is how it is. He said excitedly and tearfully, we were all wrong, the correct answer starts from here. Who are you, and how did you solve it? Shin Shin calmly replied, I received prenatal education from the moment I was in my mother's womb. My teachers were all Nobel Prize, Fields Medal, Wolf Prize, Abel Prize, and other award winners. As for how I solved this problem, it's because I have met the descendants of Gödel, who is one of my many math teachers. The old professor collapsed to the ground, unable to bear the shock, and fainted on the spot. He was quickly taken to the medical room. Xin Meng let out a sigh and said, what you just said, is it true or not? She had never even heard of those awards, but she found them very impressive. You can believe it. Shin Chen smiled. He not only came from a noble family, but his personal abilities surpassed everyone else's. There were no more than two people in the world who could match him. Qin Meng, is it really you? You've really become beautiful. A girl with a ponytail walked over excitedly and immediately hugged Qin Meng. Jin Chan, how did you know I was back? I missed you so much. Qin Meng was very excited. Jin Chan was her best friend and one of the few good friends she had. Whenever she was sad, it was Jin Chan who encouraged her to come out. Jin Chan pinched Qin Meng's cheeks, feeling amazed. Her skin was too good, and even the previous scars had disappeared as if she had changed her face. Jin Chan was extremely envious and looked at Qin Shen, feeling a little nervous as she said, handsome guy, you're amazing. You cured Qin Meng's face. Can you help me with my treatment too? Jin Chan, you haven't disfigured yourself. Just eat less spicy food, and you won't have pimples. Oomph, you're making fun of me. The two of them started to play around. Suddenly, Jin Chan put on a serious expression and said, Did you just hear that Zhong Junhao is going to hold a birthday banquet and has invited many people? He also invited me, and I don't want to go alone. Can you go with me? Qin Meng frowned slightly. Zhong Junhao was known as a rich second generation who drove different cars every day and took girls out to play. 
Before, Zhong Juanhao had bullied her, and although he didn't succeed, it had scared her so much that she couldn't sleep for several days. Qin Meng, you're so beautiful now, you should let Zhong Juanhao see. Jin Chan snorted. Forget it, I don't want to see him. Qin Meng shook her head in refusal. Let's go together, I'm afraid to go alone. Let your boyfriend take us together. Is that okay? Jin Chan started to act coquettish. Xin Meng really didn't want to go. She was afraid when she thought of Zhong Juanhao. Suddenly, Shen Chen put his hand on her shoulder and said gently, It's a classmate's birthday banquet, of course we have to go. And we have to give the most valuable gift. Xin Meng didn't want to go, but seeing Shen Chen's determined eyes, she also gained some confidence. She was no longer the ugly woman, and she no longer had to be. Afraid of being called ugly by others. Let's go pick out a gift. Jin Chan giggled and pulled Qin Meng away. Xin Shen looked at Ying Shan and said calmly, Send someone to protect Qin Meng. If she loses a single hair, I will hold you accountable. Ying Shan nodded, but he was also a little flustered. The young master's aura was indeed powerful. Just a few words made him feel the breath of death. He became even more awed in his heart. Ten minutes later, Xin Chen left by helicopter and arrived at a super luxurious mansion. The butler led hundreds of maids out to greet him with a smile and said, Young master, all the villas in this area have been bought. This mansion has more than 30 rooms, barely enough to stay for a few days. Ying Shan was shocked to hear this. This mansion in the eastern province was a well-known super mansion with a history of over a hundred years. It was worth over 30 billion, and no wealthy person had been able to acquire it. The Xin family was indeed wealthy and powerful. At this time, Ying Zhan saw hundreds of Bentleys and Rolls Royces appearing one after another, and then they were being transported into other villas. Ying Zhan couldn't help but ask, Steward, are these all? The steward calmly replied, These are all the things the young master uses on a daily basis, it takes hundreds of rooms to store them. Ying Zhan was stunned and said, Can one person use so much? The steward glanced sideways and said coldly, The young master is of noble status and should enjoy all the comforts in the world. Regardless of clothes or watches, the young master only wears them once. As a general in the Eastern War Zone, Ying Zhan also spends tens of millions each year and considers himself to enjoy life. But after witnessing Shen Chen's life, he realized that he was actually just a beggar. Ying Zhan, bring me the list of everyone tonight. I want detailed information on everyone, including the family background of all direct descendants within 18 generations. After the steward's cold command, he turned and went back inside. Young master, over 3,000 gifts have been prepared, please choose a few. The steward said respectfully. Just pick a few, as long as they are the most expensive and the best. Xin Chen said indifferently. He was sending them on behalf of Qin Meng, so the gifts had to be the best in the room. After taking a shower, Xin Chen went to the garage. Hundreds of supercars were parked at random, and every car ever produced in the world was here. Young master, this Bugatti was just airlifted here. After modification, it is now the world's fastest car, Faster than a plane at full speed, you can try it. The steward smiled. Then that's it, it looks more low key. Shin Chen has owned countless luxury cars since childhood, and in his eyes, any level of sports car is just a grocery shopping car. The Bugatti roared down the mountain road, and Ying Zhan got off his BMW, looking envious. Qin Meng, where are you? I'm coming to pick you up. Shin Chen contacted the other party and said, I've already prepared a gift for you. I'm at in town, come over. Xin Meng sent the location to the other party. She had just bought a watch at in town, spending several thousand yuan. Jin Chan chose a belt, a coach brand. Xin Meng, I've called a car, let's go. Jin Chan said. Xin Meng said, Xin Shen said he's coming to pick me up, let's wait a bit. Your boyfriend has a car, what car? Mercedes or BMW? Jin Chan's eyes showed anticipation. Xin Meng didn't know what car Xin Chen had. Seeing the other's reaction, Jin Chan said with a hint of disdain, I don't ride in ordinary cars, at the very least it has to be a Mercedes or BMW, Maserati is the best. Xin Meng showed an embarrassed smile. 
Okay, I'm just kidding with you, Jean Chan said with a smile, you and your boyfriend work hard, you'll be able to afford a BMW in the future. V Room A supercar worth hundreds of millions quickly appeared, and everyone on the street was in awe. Wow, what just flew by? Look, it's a Ferrari. Nonsense. Ignorant fools, this is a Bugatti, several times more expensive than a Ferrari. There's only one in the world. Which rich second generation is this, is he from in town? Under the shocked gaze of Jin Chan and the others, the Bugatti stopped beside them. Shin Shen, with a cold expression, got out of the car, exuding a noble temperament, like a domineering CEO descending from the sky. Sorry to keep you waiting, get in the car. Shin Shen opened the car door. Qin Meng didn't recognize the car and thought it was a Lamborghini. Jin Chan, on the other hand, was wide-eyed and shocked, how did you get this car, did you buy it? Sort of, it was a gift from someone else. Shin Shen said calmly, the car was a gift from the Bugatti CEO, and he didn't want the other party to kneel and beg him to accept it. Xin Meng's face turned red, she was very afraid of being stared at by others, and her heart was beating fast. After getting in the car, Shin Shen said to Jin Chang, you can sit in my bodyguard's car, the Bentley, for a few minutes. No inconvenience, no inconvenience, Jin Chang stammered in response, the Bentley was also a super luxury car. Oh my god! Even the bodyguards ride in a Bentley, what is Qin Meng's boyfriend's background? He must be so wealthy. Xin Shen stepped on the gas pedal, and the sound of the V16 engine could be heard several blocks away. He held the steering wheel with one hand, looking calm and composed, while Qin Meng, sitting in the passenger seat, secretly admired him, her heart pounding. At that moment, she felt that Xin Shen was too charismatic, and she couldn't help feeling inferior. Is there something on my face? Shen Chen smiled. Qin Meng whispered, What does your family do? You have a helicopter and a sports car, you must be very wealthy. Then she added, You don't seem to be low key at all. Do I need to be low key? Shen Chen thought of his own strength, invincible family background, and the influence to control everything. He had no reason to be low key. Qin Meng laughed and said, I've seen many protagonists in novels who are very low-key, aren't you afraid of someone more powerful than you? Shin Shen said, they are low-key because their own strength is not strong enough, and they need to endure. I don't need to do that. If I want to, I could destroy the world tomorrow. A true strong person never pretends to be weak, that is a foolish act. The gap between those protagonists you mentioned and me is probably insurmountable in this lifetime. Qin Meng was shocked and speechless. Shen Chen laughed and continued, You probably think what I just said was arrogant, but I'm just stating a fact. In this world, there is no one more powerful than me. Qin Meng couldn't help but laugh. She felt that Shen Chen was bragging a bit. After all, there are many remarkable figures in this world. No one dares to say they are invincible. She secretly thought that maybe he suddenly became wealthy, so he became so arrogant. At this moment, at the entrance of the Atlantis Hotel, seven or eight students gathered together, they had just arrived by subway. Soon, a Bentley appeared, and Jin Chan got out of the car. Wow, Jin Chan, why are you here? This, luxury car. Where did you get it? Several friends who usually got along well immediately gathered around, with envy in their eyes. This belongs to someone else, Jin Chang said. She looked around and asked, Where is Qin Meng? Hasn't she arrived yet? Put. A girl with short hair laughed and said, Qin Meng really dares to come, is she coming to seek humiliation as an ugly duckling? Yeah, Zhong Xia used to pursue her before, maybe he feels unwilling to let go, so he came to ask Zhong Xia to reconcile. Jin Chang frowned slightly. The current Qin Meng is a beauty, much more beautiful than them. These sisters probably didn't know about her transformation. At this time, a Mercedes AMG sports car appeared, and the girl with short hair became excited, look, it's Zhongxiao's supercar, he's here, he's here. She was more excited than anyone else and quickly took out a mirror to touch up her makeup. Yay, look at you, are you trying to throw yourself at Zhongxiao? You came so early. Zhongjuanhao waved to them, and Jinchang turned to go in, 
But Zhong Ju and Hao stopped her, Chan'er, you've become more beautiful again, let me have a good look. Go away. Jin Chang took a step back, frowned, and said, I don't want to argue with you on your birthday, but don't go too far. Ha ha. Zhong Ju and Hao laughed and said, your reaction is just like that ugly Qin Meng. You even invited her to the group. Where is she? That ugly Qin Meng is probably hiding and doesn't dare to come out to see us. Zhong Ju and Hao coldly smiled, she better not come today. If she dares to come here, I will make sure she regrets it. With that, Zhong Ju and Hao entered the hotel surrounded by a group of girls. Zhong, when are you going to take me for a ride in your sports car? Yi Yi asked in a provocative tone. Zhong Ju and Hao smirked, you can ride in the sports car anytime. Tonight, I'll take you on a plane. Ugh, Zhong, you're so bad. Yi Yi playfully hit him and her eyes were already a bit dazed. Hurry, quickly. Suddenly, the manager of the Atlantis Hotel rushed out with a group of people. Roll out the red carpet and arrange the flowers over there. Get ready. Manager Chen, today is my birthday, there's no need for such a grand reception. Zhong Ju and Hao thought it was for him and couldn't help but show a proud expression. Manager Chen looked at him disdainfully and said, Zhong Ju and Hao, who do you think you are? You're just a silver card member of the hotel. Hurry up and move aside, don't block our top VIP guests. Manager Chen led dozens of beautiful women and stood at the parking entrance, looking anxious. Zhong Ju and Hao's face darkened. He spent tens of thousands of dollars at this hotel every year, although he couldn't say he was very impressive, he was not someone ordinary people could compare to. Now, in front of his classmates, he felt embarrassed and humiliated. How could he swallow this insult? I want to see what kind of person is coming. Is there anyone in the East who is richer than me? Zhong Ju and Hao stood in place, waiting with a cold smile. Soon, dozens of Audi cars appeared, and a man wearing sunglasses got out of the car. Manager Chen thought he was a VIP and approached him obsequiously, Are you Mr. Shen? I am from this hotel. Get out of the way. The man pushed Manager Chen aside and said coldly, Don't block our young master's car. Make your people all step back a hundred meters. Manager Chen was stunned. This man with such a powerful aura was not the VIP they were waiting for. Was there someone else? Manager Chen looked at the license plate and couldn't help but gasp. The white background with red letters, only three numbers, was the license plate of the East Zhou Army. And it was the kind that only senior leaders could have. Manager Chen was shocked. This kind of big shot was just a bodyguard. Who was the person coming? Boom! A few kilometers away, the sound of a sports car could be heard. This sound, a Ferrari? Zhong Ju and Hao squinted. He knew all the rich second-generation kids in the East who drove Ferraris. Who was coming today? Suddenly, a white beast appeared on the street. A Bugatti, roaring like lightning, and the man named Ding Zhan stood up straight, holding a walkie-talkie, ordering his men to enter a state of alert. Anyone who dared to take a step forward would be shot on the spot. In the blink of an eye, the white Bugatti appeared in everyone's eyes. Zhong Juanhao was so scared that he felt suffocated. Bugatti, damn, is this for real? In the east, is there anyone who can afford such a luxury car? The car door opened, and a handsome man in white and a noble goddess got out of the car. So beautiful. All the girls widened their eyes. This man and woman looked like characters from a comic book, like a fairy tale princess and a prince. Manager Chen rubbed his eyes. He hadn't seen the guests' faces clearly, but suddenly a compelling aura overwhelmed him. Ing Zhan said coldly, the hotel security is now under my control. From now on, you must follow my orders. Manager Chen stuttered, I, our boss may not agree. Are you blind? The person who just entered is the boss. Ying Zhan coldly snorted. Manager Chen was instantly frightened. The handsome and suave man who had just entered was the owner of the Atlantis Hotel? Qin Meng, you finally came. Why are you behind me? Jin Chan ran over with a smile, linking arms with Qin Meng and whispered, Your boyfriend is so handsome, so aloof. 
Xin Meng glanced at Chen Chen, about to speak, when several familiar faces suddenly appeared. Who are you? Why do you look like someone we know? Yeah, you look like that ugly woman. What ugly woman? Jin Chan angrily said, you blind fools, she is Qin Meng. Wow! Everyone exclaimed, their eyes filled with shock. How is it possible? You are actually Qin Meng? This woman in front of them, as beautiful as a celestial being, was actually the universally recognized ugly girl at school. How is that possible? Please make way. Xin Chen's voice was indifferent. He had been silent, but as soon as he spoke, his magnetic voice immediately captivated a large group of people. Thud! Three infatuated women fainted. The three fainting women were carried to the side by security for first aid. Xin Chen furrowed his brow slightly. Why were these women so vulgar? He was just a little handsome, was it necessary to faint? Suddenly, Xin Meng giggled and said, It's too exaggerated, they actually fainted from your handsomeness. Yes, I am handsome, everyone on earth knows that. Xin Chen said calmly, then linked arms with Qin Meng and walked in. Qin Meng, I am Zhong. Zhong Juanhao stepped forward to greet, but was forcefully pushed away by Ying Zhan. What a mess of people, they didn't even have the qualifications to greet the young master. After entering the room, Qin Meng realized, sticking out her tongue, it seems like that person was Zhong Juanhao, and we pushed him away. It's okay. Xin Shen said indifferently, that kid used to bully you, today I am not only here to give a gift, but also to avenge you. Forget it, it's all in the past. Qin Meng shook her head. Ying Zhen stepped forward half a step, and said in a low voice, Young master, I have obtained all the information about that person, do you want? He made a neck-slitting gesture. As long as the young master gave the order, Zhong Juanhao's family would immediately disappear from Dongzhou forever. You are meddling. Xin Chen said. With just one sentence, Ying Zhan immediately broke out in a cold sweat and quickly apologized, I'm sorry, young master, I shouldn't have guessed your thoughts randomly. He immediately stepped back. At this time, other classmates also began to appear one after another. After entering the room, almost everyone's gaze was on Xin Chen and Qin Meng. Then they started whispering. Who is this beauty? This handsome guy is so cool. Did they come to the wrong room? Hearing their discussion, Qin Meng's face turned slightly red. You all don't know her? Jin Chan raised her chin, proudly saying, take a closer look, be bold and guess. At her words, several girls carefully observed Qin Meng. Slowly, they showed disbelief in their eyes, she, she couldn't be that ugly, woman, could she? Ugly? What ugly? She's the ugly duckling turned into a swan. She is Qin Meng. Jin Chan said happily. Wow. Oh my god. She is Qin Meng? Almost no one believed that the stunningly beautiful woman in front of them could actually be the ugliest girl in school. What had she experienced to become the most beautiful girl in just a few days? The school's number one beauty, Yao Yao, is probably not as pretty as Qin Meng. Some people were surprised. Qin Meng, you are too beautiful, did you have plastic surgery? What cosmetics do you use, tell me for my sister. Girls who used to ignore Qin Meng on weekdays are now actively coming over to show their enthusiasm. Zhong Juanhao's eyes were filled with anger as he tightly clenched his fists. The women who were previously dumped by him have now become so beautiful. Naturally, he is unwilling to accept this. Zhong Juanhao glanced at Xin Chen and sneered in his heart. Previously, he had sent someone to investigate the owner of that car. He suspected that the Bugatti was rented because he knew all the wealthy people in Dongzhou. The person in front of him was definitely a fake second-generation rich. Zhong Juanhao walked over with a glass of red wine and said lightly, My friend, I don't recognize your face. Where did you come from? Just doing some investment business, Xin Chen calmly responded. Oh, I don't know what you're investing in. The investment industry is vast, Zhong Juanhao wanted to force it out, he was sure this guy was pretending. Gold, stocks, hotels, tourism, energy. Xin Chen casually listed a few examples. 
He had invested in hundreds of industries, and it would take days and nights to finish talking about them. After listening to these words, Zhong Juanhao burst into laughter. Which of these investment industries can be done without a large amount of capital? Even the top investment companies in the country dare not claim to invest in so many projects. What else could it be if not a pretense? Zhong Juanhao sneered coldly, this man was definitely hired by Qin Meng to provoke him. It was nothing but revenge. All right. I'll make you regret it later. Zhong Juanhao turned and left, calling his friend. How's it going, did you find out? We found out that the Bugatti is registered under a company's name. That company is registered overseas, it should be a shell company. Good, that's great. A sinister smile gradually appeared on Zhong Juanhao's face. He was now 100% sure that the guy was a fake second generation rich. He had confidence in his heart. Jin Chang took out the gift she bought and said, everyone seems to have bought something, and they all seem expensive. Xin Meng took out her own box and said softly, mine is not cheap either, it's my pocket money for several months. She didn't want to give it, but since everyone else was giving gifts, she couldn't come empty-handed. Zhong Juanhao walked directly towards the two of them and said with a smile, Xin Meng, sister, I'm glad you could come to my birthday banquet and bring a gift. What did you buy? He directly snatched the gift box and opened it. It was a watch, a brand of DW. Zhong Juanhao casually flipped it a few times and said expressionlessly, How dare you give me this kind of cheap brand of watch, don't you know I only wear Rolex at the worst? Smack! In front of everyone, he directly smashed the watch to the ground. Xin Meng's face turned pale. Jin Chang angrily said, Zhong Juanhao, what are you doing, this watch costs several thousand. Zhong Juanhao sneered, a few thousand worth of trash, and you dare to bring it out, you're clearly humiliating me. Do you know that the cheapest gift my friends brought today is over five or six thousand? Xin Meng lowered her head, her body trembling slightly. Tears were swirling in her eyes, full of grievances and bitterness. Yes. She was about to apologize when suddenly a pair of gentle hands hugged her shoulders and said, this scum doesn't deserve your apology. Xin Shen looked at Zhong Juanhao with a cold gaze and said, the things of my woman are incomparable to the stars in the sky, and you have destroyed your own life. Ha ha. Zhong Juanhao laughed loudly, you fool, still pretending to be a second generation rich in front of me. To tell you the truth, I've long found out about your background. You're just. Someone hired by Qin Meng to pretend to be a second generation rich. You can deceive others, but not me. As soon as this was said, everyone was shocked. I knew it, how did Qin Meng suddenly become so rich and drive a sports car? It turns out it's rented. She must have spent her family's hard-earned money to show off. Laughing so hard, this woman is really vain. It's good that Zhong Xiao sees through their lies. People who just called Qin Meng their sister are now speaking ill of each other. Waiting to see the joke. Qin Meng's tears were already flowing. She was already a sensitive and insecure person, and now hearing others say this about her. Where could she bear it? Countless grievances surged into her chest, and hot tears burst from her eyes. Xin Shen felt Qin Meng's helplessness, and his eyes immediately turned as cold as ice. Dare to insult his woman. Blood must be shed. At this moment, in the control room, the old housekeeper had been observing everything in the hall. When he noticed someone disrespecting Xin Shen, his face had already turned cold as ice. Respond, what are you still standing there for? Immediately take down the disrespectful person to the young master. Kill them all. The old housekeeper's voice swept through the control room in an instant, and countless bodyguards were immediately pushed back. After receiving the order, Respond immediately moved forward. Stop. Shen Shen said. Young master, these people are disrespectful to you, they deserve to die. Respond angrily said. I told you to step back. Shen Shen said expressionlessly. Respond wanted to argue, but he heard the voice of the old housekeeper in his earpiece and immediately stepped back. Shen Shen didn't want blood to splatter on Qin Meng, afraid of scaring her. He looked at Zhong Juanhao with no joy or sorrow and said, You said everything about me is fake, all just for show. 
Yes. Zhong Juanhao sneered, I've long investigated your background, driving a rented luxury car, pretending to be a rich second generation. Oh, I see. Xin Chen nodded, then took off the watch on his wrist and said, You like watches, take this one. What a crappy watch, how dare you give it to me? Zhong Juanhao didn't even take it, and the watch fell to the ground. This watch seems extraordinary. A girl picked it up, carefully examined it, and immediately exclaimed, Oh my god, this is a top-grade Patek Philippe, a global limited edition, worth over 90 million. You're talking nonsense. Zhong Juanhao immediately rebuked, he's a fake rich second generation, how could he wear such an expensive watch? The girl carefully observed, her voice trembling, it's absolutely genuine, I come from a family of three generations in this business. I don't believe it, I'll call my grandfather, he's just in the hotel. The girl quickly called her grandfather. In less than a minute, a very elegant old man came down. Zhong Juanhao knew this person, and his face showed a pleasant surprise, Mr. Li, it's so good to see you. Your granddaughter doesn't know what she's talking about, insisting that fake goods are real, you quickly tell everyone, this is a fake watch. Mr. Li initially thought the watch was fake too. But when he held it in his hand, his face gradually became serious. After observing for less than three seconds, Mr. Li's breathing became rapid, and he covered his chest, saying, It's a real watch, a Patek Philippe Centennial Custom Edition, there are only three in the world. And this one is the most expensive and top grade of the three, even the president of Patek Philippe is not qualified to wear it. On the black market, it can sell for at least two billion, a sky-high price. Thump. A group of people fell to the ground. All with looks of astonishment. Zhong Juanhao's features were distorted, he had always firmly believed that the other party was a fake rich second generation. How could he possibly wear such an expensive watch? Young man, this watch has great significance, you can keep it. Mr. Li carefully returned it to Xin Chen. I don't want it. Xin Chen said indifferently, I have a house full of limited editions, I never wear them for more than two days. After hearing this, Mr. Li couldn't catch his breath and fainted on the spot. Zhong Juanhao trembled all over, feeling both angry and terrified. He was angry that the other party was actually richer than himself, able to wear such a precious watch. That watch is a gift from me. Xin Meng's gift also needs to be there. Xin Chen patted himself and found nothing, so he casually took off one of his own buttons. When he took off the button, the old housekeeper in the monitoring room couldn't stand it and muttered, Young master, what are you doing? How can you easily give that thing away? Button? When everyone saw this thing, they all looked puzzled. The button looked very high-end, all studded with diamonds. This button is a gift from Qin Meng to you, Xin Shen said calmly. Zhang Juanhao stared at the button, gritting his teeth and saying, a broken button, how much can it be worth, at most tens of thousands of dollars? Yeah, how can you even bring out a button as a gift? Someone who can wear such an expensive watch is actually so stingy. I'm sorry, can I take a look at this button? Suddenly, a woman in her forties walked over. The woman stared at the button, trembling with excitement, even her legs were shaking. Zhong Juanhao was stunned, how could a high society figure like Zhao be so heartbroken over a button? At this moment, Zhao couldn't hide her emotions at all, she explained to everyone tremblingly, this button is set with the world's most expensive diamond, it has a history of more than 300 years. It was once given by Louis XIII to his daughter, and was crafted by more than 20 masters of the time. It's called the Diamond of Hope, representing the peace that countless people longed for during that war era. This thing has been lost for more than a hundred years. I? I actually get to see the real thing today. As Zhao spoke, she became more and more excited, and cried nonstop. Zhong Juanhao, dumbfounded, asked, Zhao, is this button very valuable? Zhao ignored him again, wiped away her tears, and asked, may I ask, who does this button belong to? Suddenly, everyone's eyes turned to Xin Shen. Zhao took a deep breath, her eyes carrying a hint of pleading, Can you sell me this button? Name your price. Xin Chan remained calm. Zhao gritted her teeth and said, I'm willing to give you all of my assets, worth billions, just to buy it from you. What? Zhong Juanhao was shocked. Trembling, Zhao, what are you doing, 
buying this worthless thing for billions. You don't understand at all. Zhao said with tears in her eyes, you have no idea what this thing represents, it is the hope of countless people from that era. It's not something that can be measured by money. Her eyes carried a plea, a longing, wanting Shen Chen to sell her the button. She was even willing to offer all her wealth in exchange. Not for sale, Shen Chen shook his head slowly. Zhao's face turned pale, if she missed this thing, she might be depressed for the rest of her life. It's just a button. Since you like it, I'll give it to you, Shen Chen said lightly. Give, give it to me? Zhao's expression suddenly froze. Zhong Ju and Hao collapsed directly on the ground. The people around were stunned. The living room fell into a dead silence. In the monitoring room, the old butler let out a bitter smile. The young master actually gave away a button. What he was worried about was not the value of the button, but that without one button, the whole garment would be ruined. A waste of a million dollar suit. Are you serious? Are you sure you want to give the button to me? Mr. Zhao was almost suffocating. Yes, I like it, so I'm giving it to you, Shen Shen said lightly. A button may be insignificant to me, but it might mean a lot to you. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Zhao was trembling with excitement. She didn't know how to thank the other person. If it weren't for the other person's girlfriend being present, she would be willing to do anything for him. Later, Mr. Zhao left his business card and said excitedly, Mr. Shen, I am at your service anytime in the future. As Mr. Zhao left, the people in the living room were still in a state of shock. Zhong Ju and Hao's head was spinning. He had always thought that the other party was a fake rich second generation, not as wealthy as himself. But now, he began to doubt if he was still dreaming. Are you satisfied with the gift I gave to Qin Meng? Xin Chan said calmly. Zhong Ju and Hao stammered, Are you really that wealthy? Who are you? Xin Chen replied, Who I am is something you are not qualified to know. Since the gift has been given to you, I also wish you a happy birthday. Zhong Ju and Hao was speechless. Just when everyone thought the matter was over, Xin Chen suddenly waved his hand and ordered his men to eliminate the man and his family. The women who mentioned Qin Meng just now, cut off their tongues and send them to Africa as laborers. His subordinates back chilled. The young master was indeed extraordinary. Deciding the life and death of others was as simple as playing house. Qin Meng, let's go out for a drive. Xin Shen did not say those things in front of her, so Qin Meng was unaware of these matters. After the two left, the old butler also came out of the monitoring room. Master, you've been here all along? His subordinate was surprised to see him coming out of the monitoring room. The old butler, with his hands behind his back, said indifferently, You heard what the young master just said, handle it cleanly. Yes. His subordinate immediately straightened up and said, It is my greatest honor to serve the young master. His heart was beating fast. Every time he did something for the young master, it would make his adrenaline soar. And these trash, dying at the hands of the young master, was a blessing from their ancestors. After leaving the hotel, Xin Shen stood in front of the door. His mood was as calm as ever. But he couldn't help but sigh in his heart. I am inherently kind, yet I consort with evil, Xin Shen muttered to himself. Since the day he was born, he had been indoctrinated by the family. His parents often said to him, You are our son, the only heir of the Shin family, the pride of heaven, protected by the family. This world exists because of my grandson. Don't be afraid to cause trouble outside, if anything happens, the Shin family will cover for you. Son, if someone wrongs you, you kill them. My dear son, remember, no one in this world can make you suffer even a bit, you must be happy every day. Little cousin, you must be happy every day, if anyone makes you unhappy, your sister will clear the way for you. These were the words Shin Chen had been hearing every day since he could remember. Shin Chen, what are you thinking? Qin Meng felt that something was off. The coldness emanating from him made her inexplicably afraid. Sorry, I was lost in thought. Xin Shen held Qin Meng's hand and started walking towards the commercial street ahead. Qin Meng breathed a sigh of relief and said, Today, you helped me vent my anger. Zhong Juanhao's face turned green. 
she felt very happy. Many years ago, Joan Juenhao had left a shadow in her heart, and today it finally dissipated. In the future, she could sleep peacefully without nightmares. Shinchen smiled and said that Joan Juenhao will never appear again. Halfway through, Jean Meng suddenly said, My friend asked me to play a murder mystery game, but we still need a few more people. Can you invite some friends? Friends? Shin Shen was stunned for a moment, then shook his head, I have no friends. How is that possible? Everyone has friends. How can you have no friends? Xin Meng laughed. I really don't. Shin Shen furrowed his brow. His living environment had been different from others since childhood. He went out with hundreds of bodyguards, had fighter jets escorting him when flying, and had warships patrolling when going out to sea. He only interacted with world celebrities. In school, he sat separately from others. Looking at the whole world, how many people could be his friends? The children of the powerful and wealthy who wanted to be friends with Shin Shen would not be approved by their families. So far, he had everything in this world, except for a true friend. They know my identity and just want to gain greater benefits, he said. So I have no friends. Shin Chen shrugged. Xin Meng looked at him and felt like he wasn't lying. Suddenly, she walked ahead and said with a smile, then I'll help you find some good friends. But you can't show off your wealth anymore, otherwise you really won't be able to make friends. I'll try my best, Shin Chen nodded. He had tried to hide his identity and make friends, but failed every time. Because his temperament and appearance couldn't be hidden. The unique domineering aura and the air of looking down on the world on him were obvious to discerning eyes. In short, he wanted to keep a low profile, but even the heavens wouldn't allow it. Ten minutes later, the two arrived at the commercial. Street. The special forces had already been dispatched to blend into the crowd, keeping them and other pedestrians at a distance from each other. I want to eat ice cream, Xin Meng said, feeling a bit greedy, and immediately went to get two strawberry-flavored ones. Holding the ice cream, Xin Meng turned around and saw her parents walking over. Mom, Dad, what are you doing here? Xin Meng was stunned. He Ninjin said with a stern face, how did the task I gave you go? What about the contract with the Wu family? Upon hearing about the contract, Xin Meng panicked. After regaining her appearance, she had immediately gone to school. She had completely forgotten about the contract. I'm sorry, Mom, I'll go to the Wu family to sign the contract immediately. What's the use of going now? He Mianjin said with a wry smile, by the time you get there, it'll be too late. I don't think the contract can be signed. She glanced at Shen Shen and said coldly, you and this kid are done. Break up with him now. As soon as she heard that she had to break up immediately, Qin Meng panicked. She had finally met a man who treated her well. She was slowly accepting him in her heart. If they were suddenly separated, she might become the pitiful and self-deprecating person she used to be. Mom, give me two days. I will definitely go to the Wu family to sign the contract. I will make sure they renew it. Qin Meng regretted deeply in her heart. After regaining her appearance, the first thing she did was go to school. She had completely forgotten about the contract. But now it was too late. She could only pray that her parents would give her two more days. He Nianjin sneered and said, You're telling me now that you're going to sign the contract, I'm afraid you've been kicked in the head by a donkey. Once she finished speaking, she glared at Shen Shen and said, Don't think just because you're handsome, you can deceive my daughter. Now that my daughter has become so beautiful, the only ones worthy of her are the wealthy young men from the East Island. You are not worthy. With that, she grabbed Xin Meng and tried to leave. Xin Meng struggled and didn't want to leave, tears welling up in her eyes. Wait. Xin Shen said calmly, you haven't clarified the situation yet, you can't take her away. If it were someone else, Xin Shen would have made them disappear forever. But out of respect for Qin Meng's parents, he calmly spoke a few more meaningless words. What do you mean? I can't take my daughter away? He Nianjin said angrily, What do you want, are you trying to abduct my daughter? I'll call the police, believe me. Confronted with such rudeness, Xin Shen was already burning with anger, 
wishing he could rub this old woman's head on the ground. Shin Shin said calmly, you just want the contract, that's all. He snapped his fingers and someone immediately handed over the contract. This is the contract signed with the Wu family, a 20-year agreement. What? A 20-year agreement, that's impossible. Xin Ziming immediately picked up the contract, not believing that the Wu family would sign a 20-year contract at once. But the next moment, he was proven wrong as the contract clearly stated a 20-year term. Xin Ziming's breathing became rapid, then he was overjoyed, wife, wife, look, it's really a 20-year contract. Nonsense, your eyes must be playing tricks on you. At first, He Nianjin didn't believe it either, but after looking at the contract, her eyes nearly popped out of her head. It's really, really 20 years. He Nianjin stuttered, with this contract, the company could make millions in profit every year. Xin Meng was overjoyed to find out that the contract had been signed long ago. She wouldn't have to be separated from Xin Shen again. Hurry back and convene the board of directors to announce the great news. The couple didn't care about Qin Meng and left with smiles on their faces. Qin Meng breathed a sigh of relief, her parents were only interested in money, which she disliked, but at least it shut them up. At this moment, 30 meters away from the two, Zhou Xiao, am I mistaken, or is there a top-notch beauty over there? She's 10,000 times more beautiful than your fiancé. Shut your dog mouth, do you think I'll believe you? Joe Binbin said, but couldn't help but turn back out of curiosity. When he saw Qin Meng's profile, his eyes immediately widened in shock, damn, she really is a beauty. This beauty, she looks a bit familiar. Zhou Binbin walked straight over. Qin Meng? Zhou Binbin subconsciously called out. When Qin Meng heard someone calling her, she turned around subconsciously. She didn't recognize Zhou Binbin and looked puzzled, do you know me? Qin Meng, it's really you. No. How did you become so beautiful? Women change a lot in 18 years. Zhou Binbin looked Qin Meng up and down, with a strange look in his eyes. He had heard that Qin Meng was a famous ugly girl at Dongzhou University. But the woman in front of him was a top-notch beauty, surpassing his fiancée in both looks and temperament. Zhou Binbin regretted not agreeing to the marriage proposal back then. Are you? Zhou Binbin? Qin Meng hesitated. It's me, it's me. Zhou Binbin said cheerfully, do you remember me? We almost got engaged back then. Qin Meng looked a little embarrassed. Three years ago, when her grandfather was still alive, he had arranged a marriage for her. At that time, she almost married a stranger. Fortunately, the other party rejected her because of her ruined appearance. That person was the present Zhou Binbin. Zhou Binbin has been staring at Qin Meng, the more he looks, the more he likes this woman. Suddenly, a sudden chill made him shiver. Xin Shen hugged Qin Meng's shoulder and said indifferently, enjoying the view of my woman? Do you want me to gouge out your dog eyes? Such a handsome man, but such a venomous mouth, Zhou Binbin cursed silently, still smiling on his face. Are you Qin Meng's boyfriend? You're really lucky. I almost got her back then. He sighed intentionally and said, if I had known that you were so beautiful, I would have definitely won you over. Maybe our children would be running around by now. After laughing, Zhou Binbin took out a card and said, I'm organizing a car show, and many celebrities will be there. Xin Meng, you should come too. See you tomorrow. Zhou Binbin left with a smirk, feeling jealous of Xin Chen because Qin Meng was too beautiful. Xin Chen took the card and casually flicked it away. Qin Meng asked, why did you throw it away? You can't touch things from other. Men, Xin Shan said calmly. Qin Meng blinked, it's just a business card, isn't it? Could it be, you're jealous? Xin Shan smiled faintly. Jealous? He, the proud son of heaven, jealous of a lowly person? Obviously, that was impossible. Suddenly, Qin Meng picked up the card and said, let's go to the car show tomorrow. I have tens of thousands in savings and want to buy a car for myself. What car do you like? I'll buy it for you. With just one sentence from Xin Shen, not to mention a sports car, even a tank or aircraft carrier would be delivered by someone the next day, 
begging him to accept it. Xin Meng chuckled, I don't want you to buy it for me. I want to buy it with my own abilities. You must have worked hard for your money. Save it to buy milk powder for your child. Xin Meng skipped away. Xin Chen watched expressionlessly. Milk powder money? Why did that sound strange? Ying Zhan, who was beside him, struggled to hold back his laughter. But it was too difficult. His cheeks hurt. If you want to laugh, go ahead, Xinxin said. Ying Zhan dared not laugh and said seriously, Young master, I will be in charge of security at the car show. If you have any needs, just let me know. He quickly left. Then he found a place with no one around and burst into laughter. In the evening, Xin Chen lay in his luxurious mansion. Over twenty top maids waited on him. A bonfire burned. Xin Chen took a sip of Lafite Rothschild and murmured, What does she mean by asking me to save money for milk powder? He was still pondering the meaning of that sentence. The old butler smiled and said, Young master, your schedule for tomorrow has been arranged. Leaders from all over Dongzhou will come to greet you. Let those unimportant people go away. I'm tired of their flattery, Xin Shen said lightly. The old butler nodded slightly. Young master, madam has given you another 100 billion pocket money. Go buy a few parks to relax, Xin Shen said helplessly. His mother gave him money every month, starting from a minimum of 100 billion. Sometimes, she would give four or five hundred billion. He really didn't need the money. The liquid assets in his account were not less than two hundred billion, and he made tens of billions in net profit from his investments every day, which he couldn't spend. At this time, Xin Meng called on video, and Xin Shen smiled slightly, got up and went upstairs. The butler watched Xin Shen's back, a kind look on his old face. Ying Zhan came from outside the door. Master Steward, our people have been placed at the car show. We've sent the guest list for investigation. The young master will be very safe. The butler turned around, his old face as cold as ice, and said, Are you sure it's completely safe now? Ying Zhan nodded firmly. Suddenly, the old butler took out a list and said coldly, This person had a prison record 15 years ago. Why is he still on the list? Hearing this, Ying Zhan's face suddenly changed dramatically, and he hurriedly knelt down to explain, I'm sorry, Master Steward, this is my mistake, I. The old butler's eyes were cold and stern as he said, Your one mistake could affect the young master's personal safety. Do you know how serious the consequences are? I don't think we need you, the Eastern War Marshal, anymore. As soon as these words fell, several bodyguards immediately appeared in the dark corner, and a chilling air enveloped Ying Zhan. Ying Zhan broke out in a cold sweat and said in panic, I'm sorry, please give me another chance, I was wrong. The old butler stood with his hands behind his back, looking down at Ying Zhan and said indifferently, Among the 88 war marshals, it was your ancestor's blessing that allowed you to protect the young master. But since you didn't take care of the young master, what use are you? We don't need waste. Upon hearing this, Ying Zhan's face turned ashen, as if he had fallen into hell. Just as Ying Zhan was being taken away, Xin Shen suddenly appeared, smiling and chatting on a video call as he walked downstairs. The old butler glanced over, and the bodyguards immediately stepped back. Ha, huh, Ying Zhan, why are you kneeling? Xin Shen looked puzzled, then said, Tomorrow, you'll come with me to the car show, don't bring anyone else. He walked towards the backyard. The old butler snorted coldly and said, If it weren't for the young master keeping you, you wouldn't survive tonight. Thank you, Master Steward, for sparing my life. Ying Zhan hurriedly nodded in gratitude, feeling utterly terrified. At 8 o'clock in the morning, Xin Meng took the subway to the car show. She arrived a few minutes earlier than Xin Chen, and the car show hadn't opened yet. Xin Meng, you're here too. Lu Yaoyao appeared, wearing a white dress, looking as beautiful as a fairy. The two women standing together attracted the attention of all the men on the street. Qin Meng felt a little nervous and asked, Yao Yao, are you here to see the car show too? Of course. Lu Yao Yao looked around and said, Where's Xin Chen? Why haven't I seen him? Is he coming today? Actually, I came for him. After the failed confession at school, B 
being publicly humiliated and beaten didn't make Liu Yaoyao give up. On the contrary, she loved Shen Chen even more. She believed that the only person in the world who could match Shen Chen was herself, Liu Yaoyao. Qin Meng, on the other hand, was not worthy. At this moment, a Porsche 911 appeared, and Miao Wu immediately ran towards Liu Yaoyao after getting out of the car. Yao Yao, I bought you a new limited edition LV bag, you'll definitely like it. Miao Wu had been pursuing Liu Yao Yao for some time, but she had never been interested in him. This made Miao Wu feel very frustrated. He vowed to pursue Liu Yao Yao and then dominate this seemingly innocent and aloof woman. Ha, huh, Yao Yao, who is this beautiful woman next to you? Miao Wu was amazed when he saw Qin Meng's beauty. She was absolutely stunning, on par with Liu Yao Yao. One was aloof and beautiful, the other charming and lovely. If he could have both of them at the same time, he would have no regrets in this life. Miao Wu swallowed hard, thinking that if he couldn't pursue Liu Yao Yao, pursuing this beautiful woman wouldn't be a bad idea. Liu Yao Yao said expressionlessly, she's single now, you can consider pursuing her. After speaking, she walked into the car show. After hearing that she was single, Miao Wu became excited and said, Beauty, let's go in, I'll buy you any car you like. No, thanks. I'm waiting for a friend. Qin Meng shook her head and refused, but Miao Wu forcibly pulled her inside. The moment their hands touched, Miao Wu was excited and trembling all over. He was on cloud nine. Today, there are hundreds of new cars on display, with four to five hundred concept cars from various brands. Liu Yaoyao walked ahead, swiftly passing by the civilian brands and arriving at the luxury car area. Her usual mode of transportation is at least a Mercedes or BMW, and she wouldn't even consider a car priced below 500,000. Miao Wu also comes from a wealthy family, and his own car is a Porsche. Qin Meng, which one do you like? I'll give it to you, Miao Wu said, putting on a generous appearance. The car Qin Meng likes is not in this area. She only has tens of thousands of dollars and wants to buy a recently released Wuling Mini. I'll wait for my friend to come, you guys go ahead, Qin Meng said, knowing she can't afford a million dollar sports car. Miao Wu wouldn't easily let her go, immediately blocking her way and saying with a smile, Qin, you don't have to be shy. One or two million is nothing to me. You can choose any car you like, with your looks and temperament, only a Mercedes or BMW is worthy of you. No, it's not necessary, thank you, Qin Meng said, shaking her head vigorously. She knew this man had ulterior motives. Seeing Qin Meng's refusal, Miao Wu felt embarrassed and his eyes turned resentful. Nowadays, which woman doesn't like sports cars? In front of him, she's playing hard to get, just wanting something better. You have to take this car today, even if you don't want it, Miao Wu said angrily, reaching out to grab Qin Meng's arm. Suddenly, his hand was struck hard, and with a snap, Miao Wu cried out in pain and took two steps back. Who dares to hit me? Miao Wu raised his angry gaze. He instantly turned pale, feeling as if his heart had been cut by a knife. You dare to touch her, do you not want your head anymore? Who are you? Miao Wu's face turned white, filled with fear. What a terrifying gaze. Staring at it, it's as if being pulled into a black hole, instantly tearing his soul to pieces. He even wanted to bow down and worship. Do you even deserve to know my identity? Xin Shen's cold eyes were like a devil from hell, instilling endless fear in people's hearts. Lu Yao Yao was immediately overwhelmed by his dominance, trembling all over. Her eyes sparkled. This is the man she's interested in. So arrogant. She likes this kind of person. Kneel. Xin Shen said coldly. Miao Wu didn't want to kneel but he couldn't resist the pressure and knelt down. Slap yourself, Shen Shen said expressionlessly. Slap, slap. Miao Wu reluctantly slapped himself, crying as he did so. Do you have any complaints about being hit? Shen Shen questioned. No, no, Miao Wu was so scared that he didn't dare to say a word of retort. Shen Shen, let it go, Qin Meng didn't want to escalate the situation, and said softly, he drives a Porsche, his family must be very powerful, we can't afford to provoke him. Shen Shen chuckled and said, even if he drives a sports car, I can make him have no place to be buried. 
Xin Meng rolled her eyes and quickly pulled him away. After they left, the invisible pressure disappeared. Miao Wu began to pant heavily, his back soaked with cold sweat. He's too terrifying, who is this man? That kind of disregard for life and death is not something an ordinary person can possess, Miao Wu wiped away the cold sweat, his heart still trembling. Suddenly, Ying Zhan appeared in front of him, his eyes cold, get out immediately. If it weren't for the young master's good mood today, you would already be a corpse. Miao Wu was suddenly startled. Although he didn't know Ying Zhan, the aura he exuded was definitely that of a soldier. He was so scared that he fled from here in a panic. After running out of the gate, Miao Wu gasped for breath. At first, he was still very afraid. But slowly, as he thought about the process of slapping himself, a sense of humiliation surged up. He was angry. What's so great about it, my family also has soldiers. My brother is the king of soldiers. Miao Wu couldn't swallow this breath and wanted to regain his face, so he called his soldier brother directly. How did you come so early? Xin Chan asked with a smile. Xin Meng said, I'm fine, I got up early to take the subway over. You must have been stuck in traffic, right? Xin Chen smiled without explaining. He came by plane, but there was no place nearby to park the plane. He could only leave it on the rooftop of a nearby hotel and come here in a Bentley. Xin Chen wasn't very interested in the car show, he was just accompanying Qin Meng to have fun. Today, hundreds of new cars were released, and whenever Qin Meng encountered one with a nice appearance, she would take out her phone to take a picture. Over an hour later, the two arrived at the Wuling booth. Standing here, Qin Meng couldn't move. Her eyes were fixed on a light blue Wuling Mini, which was small and cute. She wanted to buy it. But it seemed like there was a shortfall of 7 or 8 thousand in her account. Buy it next time, wait for a discount. Qin Meng muttered. Xin Shen smiled and said, if you like it, then buy it. I'll give it to you. He waved his hand and walked forward to accept the challenge. Bought it, Xin Shen pointed to the Wuling Mini. Yes. The challenger misunderstood and immediately contacted the steward. Steward, the young master wants to acquire Wuling. Understood. The steward didn't ask much about the reason, just acquiring a car company would cost several billion. After putting down his phone, the steward picked up another phone and said, buy all the shares of Wuling. Three minutes later, I want to see the acquisition agreement. At this time, the total market value of Wuling was less than 6 billion. When hundreds of billions of liquid funds poured in, the founder of Wuling and all the shareholders were dumbfounded. The sudden acquisition by a state-owned enterprise caught everyone off guard. But they were extremely happy and excited, even though they were being acquired, it caused the company's stock price to skyrocket several times. In less than 10 minutes, the Wuling acquisition contract was delivered to the steward. The steward sent someone to the car show venue with the contract. The challenger handed the contract to Shen Chen and respectfully said, Young master, this is the acquisition contract. Wuling is now yours. Shen Chen frowned slightly and said, I bought a car, why did you acquire the company? Forget it, spending a few hundred billion is just for fun. Qin Meng chuckled and said, You two are. Really humorous. She thought the two of them were joking with her, after all, how many people could afford such a large car company? The challenger was extremely embarrassed, it seemed that he had misunderstood the young master's intention again. Xin Meng gathered the courage to find the salesperson and began to negotiate the price for the car. This car cost 30,000, and she only had a little over 20,000 in her hand. Xin Shen wanted to give it to her, but Qin Meng refused. I'll lend you 5,000, and I'll give you an IOU. I'll pay you back when I earn the money. Qin Meng wrote an IOU on the spot, and she wouldn't borrow it if he didn't want it. Xin Shen was speechless, he had socks that cost tens of thousands, so a few thousand really didn't matter to him. Okay, I'll lend it to you. Xin Shen didn't refuse for the sake of a few thousand, and Qin Meng showed a happy smile. She had liked this car for a long time and was finally able to own it today. At this moment, there was a cry of surprise from the luxury car area. Miao Wu was fighting with Lu Yao Yao over a new limited edition Ferrari. The starting price of this car was 5 million, 
and now the two of them had raised it to eight million. Niao Wu gritted his teeth and said, Yao Yao, you're going too far. I want to keep this car for a collection. Do you have a say in this? Lu Yao coldly snorted, saying, the highest bidder wins. If you're not satisfied, then keep raising the price. Nine million. Niao Wu clenched his fists. Ten million. Twelve million. Fifteen million. The price shouted by Lu Yao could buy a Lamborghini. Niao Wu's face turned green. He didn't expect Lu Yao to compete with him for this car. It infuriated him. You have the guts to offend my Miao family for a sports car. Let's wait and see. Niao Wu threatened fiercely. Lu Yao paid and left with the car keys. Where are you going? Niao Wu immediately followed. A few minutes later, Lu Yao arrived in the Wuling area and stood in front of Shen Chen. I just bought a sports car, and I'm giving it to you. Lu Yao placed the car keys on the table. What? Niao Wu exclaimed, you offended me and fought me for a sports car just to give it to this man? So what? Lu Yao said word by word, he's the man I have my eyes on, so it's only right for me to give him a sports car. You, are you crazy? Niao Wu shouted. His beloved goddess, at the cost of offending him, gave a sports car to another man. It was a humiliation to him. A great humiliation. You must really like this Ferrari. Lu Yao stared at Shen Shen with her beautiful eyes, knowing that men like sports cars. The roar and the push of the back, few could resist. Trash, I don't need it. Shen Shen said coldly, just stay away from me in the future. I don't need you to give me anything. He casually threw the car keys into the trash can. Lu Yao's pretty face turned pale. Her confession was rejected once again. It made her angry and aggrieved. Why did he reject her? How was she inferior to Qin Meng? In appearance, knowledge, and background, she was hundreds of times stronger than Qin Meng. She was a woman with an extremely strong competitive spirit, always striving to be the best. She would never allow herself to lose to anyone. Lu Yao gritted her teeth and said, Can you tell me what I need to do for you to agree to be my boyfriend? Shen Shen said, I would be very grateful if you never showed up again. Hearing this, Lu Yao couldn't hold back her tears, feeling both angry and resentful. She resented this man for being blind to her qualities. She was angry that he didn't appreciate her efforts, having already put aside her dignity as the campus bell and actively pursued him, yet he still dared to refuse. Bastard! Niao Wu clenched his fists tightly. The goddess he had pursued for so long had offended him for another man. Another beautiful woman was also revolving around this man. Why could this man capture the hearts of two beautiful women? He would never accept it. Xiao Wu, are you okay? A rough voice came. Niao Wu was overjoyed. His soldier king brother had returned. Huge brother, you finally came. Niao Wu said, surprised and delighted, huge brother, help me teach someone a lesson, and I'll give you a Maserati. Hearing this, huge brother immediately grinned, then it's a deal. If someone dies, you've got my back, and I want a convertible Maserati. That's no problem at all. Killing someone is just a small matter. Niao Wu sneered, then pointed at Shen Shen and said viciously, It's this kid. He took away two women from me. Beat him to death for me. Huge brother flexed his muscular arms, his eyes cold, I don't care who you are. If you offend my cousin, then I'll have to break your hands and feet. He took a step forward, ready to act. Wang Hu, stop. Lu Yao immediately stood in front of Shen Chen, saying coldly, you're not allowed to touch him. If you do, I won't let you off. Lu Yao, have some shame. Even if you throw yourself at him, he doesn't want you. Get out of my way. Niao Wu was furious, the goddess he admired once again spoke for his enemy, making him resent Shen Chen even more. He quickly pushed Lu Yao Yao away and shouted, Hu Gu, quickly kill him for me. I don't want to see this bastard for even a minute. Hugo grinned and stepped forward. Suddenly, a terrifying figure stood in front of them. With cold eyes, Ying Zhan said, Wang Hu, you are really audacious. 
Dare to try and lay a hand on me. Wang Hu looked closely and his expression slowly changed, shocked, he said, You, you are General Zhang? You know it's me, so kneel down. Ying Zhang shouted. Wang Hu took two steps back in fear, his heart pounding, and said in a trembling voice, General Zhang, I was wrong, I was wrong. Who good, what are you doing? Why did you kneel down? Hurry up and do as I say, stammered Niao Wu. Shut up! Huka slapped him and roared, You blind fool, this person in front of you is General Zhang of Dongzhou. You are asking for trouble. General. Zhang? Niao Wu's face changed dramatically. He knew what those two words represented. They represented someone who was untouchable in Dongzhou. General Zhang, how come you are here? That person, what is his identity? Hugo asked shakily. Ying Zhang slapped him and said coldly, Your status is not worthy of knowing the young master's identity. Hearing this, Hugo was extremely shocked. This was General Zhang of Dongzhou, a figure above all others. Who exactly was that young man, to make General Zhang so wary? Ying Zhang, do you know them? Shen Chen asked. Ying Zhan smiled bitterly, young master, this person is Wang Hu. Who used to work under me? He offended the young master and deserves to die. Please punish him, young master. Then execute him and bury three generations together, Shen Chen said indifferently. Wang Hu cried out in shock and said trembling, General Zhan, spare me. I was blind today. He then punched Miao Wu several times and shouted, you damn thing. How dare you offend General Zhang? I'll kill you. He pinned Miao Wu to the ground and ruthlessly punched him, causing Miao Wu to spit out blood. His ribs were broken. Ying Zhang, with a cold sweat on his face, said, Young master, Wang Hu has been in the army for 15 years and has risked his life with me. I guarantee he is a good soldier. Please spare his life. Xin Shen said calmly, Ying Zhang, do you think you have the right to beg for mercy in front of me? Upon hearing this, Ying Zhan fell into an icy abyss, feeling cold all over. He said in a lifeless tone, Young master, if you insist on killing Wang Hu, then I. Xin Shen, let it go. Spare them, Qin Meng pleaded, they haven't done anything wrong. There's no need for such severe punishment. Xin Shen remained silent for a moment and then said, If Qin Meng intercedes for you, you may live. Thank you, sister-in-law. Ying Zhan was overjoyed. Don't call me sister-in-law, I'm not. Qin Meng quickly refused. Ying Zhang turned to Wang Hu and reprimanded, Wang Hu, get rid of Miao Wu for me immediately. This person must disappear wherever the young master appears in the future. Wang Hu took a deep breath, grabbed Miao Wu with one hand, and took him away. When Ying Zhang turned around, he found that Xin Shen had already left. He quietly patted his chest, finally feeling relieved. You shouldn't have defied the young master. That's a capital offense, the steward suddenly appeared. Steward, I was wrong, Ying Zhan bowed his head. The steward chuckled, but I have never seen the young master change his mind for anyone from childhood to now. That Qin Meng can make the young master change his mind, it's quite unexpected for me. Ying Zhan exhaled and said, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. The butler said lightly, in this world, it must operate according to the young master's wishes, and no one is allowed to change that. This Qin Meng, you should pay more attention to her. If she hinders the young master, then she should be eliminated as well. Ying Zhan shuddered all over. At this moment, Ying Zhan gradually understood. The Xin family will always be an unattainable existence. High above, like the master of everything in this world. He looked up at the sky, feeling emotional. The Shin family is a top-tier family that stands shoulder to shoulder with the heavens. In the eyes of others, he, as the Eastern War Marshal, is probably just an ant that can be crushed at will. But he firmly believes that as long as he serves the young master well, he will definitely have the ability to stand alongside the gods in the future. Shin Shen accompanied Qin Meng to handle the formalities and put on the license plate. When they drove out, Qin Meng looked nervous and excited. She finally had a car she liked, even if it was small, it was still hers. Qin Meng gripped the steering wheel with both hands, feeling awkward and not knowing how to shift gears. 
Xin Shen, with a faint smile, said to Qin Meng, I haven't driven a car since I got my license, so don't make fun of me. It's okay, I can teach you, Xin Shen, who had won several world championship trophies, even had Michael Schumacher as his defeated subordinate. I don't want you to teach me, I'll learn by myself. Xin Meng began to figure it out on her own, shifting gears and stepping on the gas, after about half an hour, she basically got the hang of it. After driving around for a while, they returned to the car exhibition. Jin Chang had already bought drinks and was waiting. When she saw the two of them coming down, she immediately ran over. Qin Meng, congratulations on buying your first car in life. You have to take me for a ride in the future. Jin Chan, don't make fun of me, you're the kind of person who won't ride in anything less than a Mercedes-Benz or BMW. Qin Meng said in frustration. Hee hee, then I'll ride in your boyfriend's Bugatti, Bentley is also fine. Jin Chang looked straight at Xin Shen. Who wouldn't like a man who is so rich and handsome? She had already secretly given her heart to Xin Shen. At this time, Xin Meng received a phone call, and after answering it, her face looked a bit unpleasant. Xin Shen asked, is there something wrong at home? Yeah, Xin Meng smiled bitterly, there's a problem at home, I have to go back first. I'll go with you. Xin Shen took the initiative to sit in the passenger seat, and Xin Meng waved goodbye to Jin Chang. Ying Zhan saw Xin Shen leaving and immediately arranged for someone to follow him, and notified the traffic management department to give them a green light all the way. Then, there was a shocking scene on the main road. A Wuling Mini drove unimpeded, with someone directing traffic along the way. And today, being Sunday, the normally congested Zhongshan Road directly gave way to an empty road. Under the astonished gazes of countless drivers, the Wuling swiftly left. Xin Meng, who was driving, was still a little puzzled. She thought she would be stuck in traffic when she came back today. Who would have thought that everyone would give way to her voluntarily? They arrived home in 10 minutes. Mom, Dad, I'm back. Xin Meng parked the car and walked into the living room. In addition to her parents, there was also her younger brother, Qin Xiaotian. You dare to come back? He Nianjin was instantly furious, slapped the contract on the table, and angrily said, This contract is invalid, it's fake, you actually dare to use a fake contract to deceive us. Fake? Xin Meng was stunned, and she subconsciously looked at Xin Shen. Xin Shen said calmly, The Wu family personally signed it, how could it be fake? You're still talking nonsense here. He Nianjin said angrily, I took the contract to the company and Desheng Capital doesn't recognize it at all. And also said that the Wu family has already moved out of Dongzhou, so this contract is naturally useless. Xinxun understood the other party's meaning, because the reason the Wu family was destroyed by him, the company that cooperated with the Wu family did not recognize this contract. So, he Nianjin misunderstood. But Xin Shen did not explain the reason. You leave my daughter immediately, right now. He Nianjin said anxiously, you dare to use fake contracts to deceive us, I won't settle this with you for now. I will settle with you today, about the theft at home. Mom, did we lose something at home? Qin Meng was shocked. What do you think? He Nianjin suddenly sneered and said, we lost 30,000 yuan at home, and your brother said he saw you take it. No, I didn't. Qin Meng quickly waved her hand and explained eagerly, Qin Xiaotian, don't falsely accuse me, when did you see me take the money? Sister, stop covering up, it was you who took it. If you didn't take the money, where did the car outside come from? Qin Xiaotian's words immediately made He Nianjin furious, and she shouted, what, you took the money to buy a car? You are too bold. Qin Meng's face turned pale, she never took the money from home. But no matter how she explained, her mother didn't believe her, because she had no evidence. At this moment, the challenger outside the door was not idle either. He was not only a bodyguard, but also a servant who took care of miscellaneous matters. Serving the young master not only had to be able to fight, but also had to be smart. He had to keep an eye on everything and solve all the troubles for the young master. He immediately used his connections and made a call to the chairman of Dicheng Capital. I am the challenger, you may not know who I am, but you have offended the wrong person. The challenger said coldly, you have five minutes to bring the contract to me, 
if you are one second late, I will destroy your family. After speaking, he hung up the phone directly. The chairman of Dechang Capital, Zhang Dechang, was stunned. He was in a meeting and received a strange call out of the blue. Initially, he didn't take this matter to heart. But Zhang Dechang became more cautious and immediately called another friend to inquire about this person called the challenger. What? The next second, Zhang Dechang was so scared that he almost collapsed and said in a trembling voice, What did you say? The challenger is the warlord of Dongzhou. In an instant, Zhang Dechang was horrified and trembling all over. The warlord of Dongzhou actually sought him out. And he almost mistook the other party for a scammer. Quick, prepare the contract. Zhang Dechang rushed out of the office in a panic, without waiting for his secretary, and drove off in his Mercedes. Not long after, Zhang Dechang arrived at the door of Qin Meng's house, trembling with fear. Hello, I am Zhang Dechang. I pay my respects to the warlord. Zhang Dechang dared not even take a deep breath. The challenger took the contract and said coldly, There is a person inside who is 10,000 times more noble than me. You take the contract in and have the Qin family sign it, don't ask about that person's identity, don't ask why, just do it. Okay, okay. Zhang Dechang's heart was pounding, when the warlord personally spoke, he didn't dare to say more. He quickly knocked on the door and entered. Is President Qin at home? After entering the living room, Qin Ziming quickly stood up, shocked, Zhang, President Zhang? Why are you here? He Nianjin was also surprised, President Zhang, what wind blew you over, please sit down. President Qin, President He, I am here to deliver the contract. I was mistaken before, I came here to apologize in person. Zhang Dechang tremblingly placed the contract on the table and stole a glance at Qin Chen. He was shocked. Was this person, who was more handsome than him, the noble person mentioned by the warlord? President Zhang, are you serious? Can we re-sign the contract? Qin Ziming and his wife asked excitedly. Of course, that's no problem. Zhang Dechang said, although the contract with the Wu family has been terminated, I am willing to sign a new contract with the Qin family separately. Let's sign a 10-year contract at once. The Qins were overjoyed and immediately signed a 10-year contract, which would bring the company profits of at least tens of millions. The company was on the verge of bankruptcy due to heavy debts. Zhang Dechang's appearance immediately resolved all the company's crises. Suddenly, the couple regarded Zhang Dechang as their savior. Qin Meng, what are you standing there for? Hurry up and pour water for General Zhang. He Nianjin scolded. You have no sense at all. You just stand there like a fool when guests arrive. Just as Qin Meng was about to go, Xin Shen held her shoulder and said lightly, I'll do it. Xin Shen picked up the water pitcher and poured a glass of water. Zhang Dechang stood up nervously, his face full of fear. I dare not, I dare not. He didn't dare to drink it. He wouldn't even dare to take the cup if it cost him his life. You daredevil! The guard at the door saw the young master pouring water himself and was filled with murderous intent, wishing to tear Zhang Dechang to pieces immediately. If this bastard dared to take the young master's cup, he would surely have no place to be buried. General Zhang, don't be polite. He is my daughter's boyfriend, not a big shot. He Nianjin said with a smile, don't be fooled by his handsome appearance and imposing manner. He's actually a poor boy from the countryside. Zhang Dechang smiled bitterly, thinking to himself that she must be blind. If General Zhang personally speaks, can his identity be fake? Drink it. Xin Shen handed the cup over again. Zhang Dechang's hands trembled, and he couldn't help but want to kneel down. He wouldn't dare to accept it even if he was beaten. Seeing this, Xin Shen didn't make things difficult for him and simply put the cup down. Only then did Zhang Dechang dare to reach out and take it. After taking a sip, he felt that the water was extraordinary. It filled him with energy, like a shot of adrenaline. The guard was both angry and amused. This guy was really lucky to drink the water poured by the young master himself. General Zhang, I heard you have a son in his twenties who just graduated from overseas. He Nianjin smiled and said, My daughter, Qin Meng, how do you think of her? 
Should we let the two children meet? No, 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 Ojung Deshang immediately jumped up, thinking that she was trying to kill him. She had dug a big pit and wanted him to jump into it. I have urgent matters to attend to. Let's contact each other by phone if there's anything. Zhang Deshang immediately ran out, and the Qins went out to see him off. After reaching the door, Zhang Deshang finally felt the oppressive atmosphere disappear. Standing next to that young man made him feel terrified all the time, as if he were standing next to the king of hell. He pretended to leave by car, but... After circling around, he found Zhang. General Zhang, I have done what you asked me to do. Hmm, you did well. Zhang nodded slightly. Zhang Deshang's face showed a hint of flattery, and he asked cautiously, Can I ask, who is that young master? Shut up. Zhang's eyes immediately turned cold. The young master's identity is not something a lowly ant like you can inquire about. If you want to die, ask again. Hearing this, Zhang Deshang was so scared that he almost wet his pants. He didn't dare to ask a second time. In his heart, he can only guess that the young master's identity might be directly connected to the provincial government. He didn't dare to think any further. The Qins returned home with smiles on their faces. Lao Qin, we have made a connection with General Zhang. We won't have to worry about food and drink in the future. Yes. Qin Ziming smiled from ear to ear. With an annual profit of several million, they would no longer have to live in fear. When the two returned to the living room, He Nianjin crossed her legs and cast a coquettish glance at Xin Shen. I won't hold you accountable for taking 3,000 yuan from home today. I'll keep it in mind. Xin Meng wanted to explain, but Xin Shen pulled her arm, indicating not to. He has already realized that Xin Meng has no status at home, and even if the truth is revealed, no one will believe it. Dad, I want to work at Pan Meng Capital, Xin Xiaotian said. Qin Ziming was surprised and said, You're talking about Panmeng Capital, the new company in Dongzhou with a registered capital of 5 billion. Yes, I want to work at this company. Dad, can you use your connections to help? Qin Ziming turned to his wife and asked, Do you know anyone who can arrange a job for our son? He Nianjin shook her head, she didn't know anyone that influential. Suddenly, she looked at Qin Meng. Xin Meng, your brother is about to start an internship and needs to find a job to get his diploma in the future. You know so many people, you must be able to help, right? Xin Meng was stunned and said, I don't know anyone from Pan Meng Capital, I. It's settled then, He Nianjin said with a smile. If you can find someone, I'll agree to you being with this demolition household. Xin Meng smiled bitterly, it was simply impossible. Two of them walked to the door. Xin Meng rubbed her forehead and said, I'm sorry for letting you see the joke of my family. My parents are not bad, but... But they favor boys over girls, Xin Shun chuckled. I've noticed it a long time ago. Xin Meng nodded helplessly. Her parents spoiled her brother and gave him whatever he wanted. She had always worn hand-me-downs and paid for her own tuition by doing odd jobs. But she never complained about her parents because they raised her. She had no right to criticize them. Soon, Xin Meng adjusted her attitude and said with a smile, Let me treat you to a meal, you can choose the place. I'll go look for a job after a good meal, after all, I still owe you several thousand yuan. Wanda, third floor. Xin Meng treated Xin Chen to crayfish. Ying Zhan watched from a distance, looking embarrassed. What kind of person was he, used to eating delicacies since childhood? Yet here he was eating this junk food. He didn't know if he should stop him. Later, Ying Zhan went to the kitchen and personally supervised the workers to clean the crayfish. All the tableware was brand new, brought by him. Xin Xin put on gloves and stared at the crayfish, muttering to himself, I can't believe I'm eating here. At that moment, Xin Meng peeled a crayfish and put it in his bowl, smiling, Eat more, I usually can't bear to eat this. I'm going to bleed this time. Xin Shen twitched his mouth, picked up the crayfish, and took a careful bite. He usually ate imported food by air, with a meal costing millions and usually consisting of a hundred dishes. This was his first time eating crayfish. It was a bit salty, but the spicy sensation lingered in his throat. 
Not bad, Shin Chen ate another one. The two of them quickly finished a plate. Another plate, Shin Chen called out. Xin Meng twitched her mouth, it was another 200 yuan gone, she didn't know if her wallet would be enough. Ying Zhan, seeing Shin Chen asking for a second plate, felt a bit anxious. He quickly called the old butler. What? How dare you take the young master to eat this kind of junk food? If anything happens to the young master, your death a hundred times over wouldn't be enough to vent my anger. The old butler was furious and immediately rushed over by plane. The helicopter landed on the top of Wanda building. The old butler, accompanied by bodyguards, walked into the kitchen with a grim expression. Ying Zhan greeted him with fear, saying, Master Butler, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Neil, the old butler coldly ordered. Ying Zhan quickly knelt down, trembling all over. The old butler's gaze was icy as he said, the young master has only eaten the world's top delicacies since childhood. Each dish must be tested for poison, and he can't eat more than three bites of any dish. What kind of junk food have you made that you dare to let the young master eat? You're sick of living. The challenge was terrifying. He never expected the situation to be so serious. Crayfish was something everyone ate, so what could be the problem? I'm sorry, sir, I have personally supervised and washed all the crayfish clean. Shut up. The old steward was furious. You have made a big mistake and dare to argue. Today, all the duty personnel will die with you. At this moment, a new pot of crayfish was served, and the old steward immediately called the waiter. The waiter came over in a daze. The old steward stared at the pot of crayfish, frowning. This kind of rubbish is also edible by people. The challenger dared not breathe and cautiously said, Sir, you may not know, these are domestically raised crayfish, and they are very delicious when steamed with 13 spices. If paired with some beer, it's a delicacy. The young master has already eaten three plates. The old steward sneered. Since the young master was born, no matter what delicacies from around the world, he would not take more than a few bites. Even a few hundred yuan item, could it make someone eat so much? The old steward naturally did not believe it. He picked up a crayfish and took a small bite. This taste. The old steward frowned slightly, then spat it out, saying disdainfully, this taste is indeed unique. Have it sent to my room later, I will have someone research it. After speaking, he glanced sideways and his throat moved slightly. The challenger secretly breathed a sigh of relief. He had to be more careful in the future. He couldn't possibly escape every time. Shin Shen finished the last crayfish and still had a lingering taste. On his table, there were already piles of crayfish shells. You can really eat. Qin Meng was stunned. Three plates, seven or eight pounds of crayfish, all eaten by yourself. You've never eaten this before? No, I've never eaten it before, this is the first time. Qin Meng couldn't help but laugh and cry. So you really came from a poor background, it seems your family was very poor before. No wonder you spend money so extravagantly, you were poor for a lifetime, so you want to find a sense of existence by spending money. Shen Chen remained silent. Qin Meng suddenly found Shen Chen somewhat cute. It turned out that this noble and elegant person was not what everyone thought. After paying the bill, Qin Meng went to buy milk tea. The challenger came to his side and cautiously said, I'm sorry, young master, I didn't know you didn't eat before. I won't do it again in the future. Bring me another ten pounds and put it in my room. Shin Chan said calmly. Ha! Huh? The challenger was stunned. Young master, you can't eat anymore. The old steward came over and said, This kind of thing is rubbish and poisonous. Poisonous, then let it poison me. Shin Chan said lightly. If I had discovered such delicacies earlier, I would never have eaten a table full of delicacies. The old steward wanted to say something, but the words stuck in his throat. He knew that once the young master made a decision, there was no turning back. Later, the old steward said, I have registered an investment company in Dongzhou called Panmeng Capital, with a starting capital of 50 billion. In addition, I have acquired 30 local listed companies in the clothing, food, housing, and transportation sectors. 
I will personally oversee the young master's daily life. He deliberately glanced at the challenger, who awkwardly lowered his head. You can all leave, don't disturb our daily lives. Xin Chen walked towards Qin Meng. Qin Meng said, I just contacted a friend, and he said he knows people from Pan Meng capital. I want to give it a try. Xin Chen said, I am the boss of Pan Meng capital, you can just find me. Qin Meng rolled her eyes, naturally not believing his words. I know your family received a lot of money from the demolition, but you underestimate this company. You have no idea what a registered capital of 50 billion means. Xin Meng walked and used her knowledge to educate Xin Chen. Xin Chen felt helpless and found Xin Meng somewhat innocent and lovely. Not to mention a mere 50 billion company, even the top few of the Fortune 500, he could acquire with just a word. In less than half an hour, the two arrived at the entrance of Pan Meng Capital's building. Qin Meng called her friend. Soon, a tall, slim woman in professional attire walked out. Yuan Yuan, I really need your help this time, Qin Meng immediately went over. Yuan Yuan looked surprised. She had heard from elsewhere that Qin Meng had regained her appearance. At first, she didn't believe that a woman as ugly as Qin Meng could become beautiful even with plastic surgery. But at this moment, Yuan Yuan was shocked. After Qin Meng became more attractive, her temperament and appearance changed dramatically. She looked like a rare beauty that only comes once in a thousand years. Are you really Qin Meng? Yuan Yuan asked uncertainly. It's me, Qin Meng smiled and nodded, saying, Congratulations, Yuan Yuan. I heard you're going to be a manager in this great company? It's all because of my abilities, Yuan Yuan said, looking Qin Meng up and down and smiling, if you want your brother to work in the company, you need the approval of our HR manager. Our manager is 33 years old, unmarried, and a returnee graduate. As long as you, Qin Meng, are willing to accompany him for a night, it will be settled immediately. Shocked, Qin Meng said, what are you saying? You didn't say that just now. Yuan Yuan looked disdainful, we're all adults, can't you be less childish? This is a company worth hundreds of billions. Do you think I, a mere assistant, can arrange this? Either you accompany the manager for a night, or you leave. It's up to you. Qin Meng was almost in tears. She would never do such a thing for a stranger. Yuan Yuan looked disgusted, what are you pretending for? Being good-looking doesn't make you special. She turned and left. What's wrong? Xin Chen walked over. Xin Meng tearfully said, nothing, let's go back. My friend said there's no way. Xin Chen wiped her tears and said with a smile, I heard everything. That woman treated you like that, and you still protect her. Come, I'll take you in directly. He took Qin Meng's hand and walked into Pan Meng Capital's building. Xin Meng panicked, let's not force our way in. We'll be kicked out. Pan Meng Capital, top floor. In the luxurious office, the old butler was watching a combat video. In the video, there was Xin Chen, fighting dozens of top instructors alone. Observing from the side, the butler was deeply impressed. The young master was so powerful. Each of those instructors was a top expert in the world. But in the young master's hands, they couldn't last a few seconds before being knocked down. Defeating these dozen instructors, Xin Chen didn't even break a sweat. The young master's strength is terrifying. I wouldn't stand a chance even if there were a hundred of me, the butler said respectfully. The butler said calmly, the training the young master received since childhood is beyond the imagination of ordinary people. You, a mere warlord, will never understand. The young master should be here. Why hasn't he come upstairs yet? I'll go check. The butler turned and walked out. Xin Shen held Qin Meng's hand and walked into the hall. Yuan Yuan was chatting and laughing at the elevator entrance, preparing to go up with a male manager. You, stop, Xin Shen said. Yuan Yuan turned around, showing disdain on her face, Qin Meng, you should have changed your mind earlier. You didn't have to make me say such harsh words. She thought Qin Meng had agreed to her request. Xin Shen stepped forward, raised his hand, and slapped her across the face. 
This was the first time he had hit a woman with his own hands, but it definitely wouldn't be the last. How dare you hit me? Yeah yeah started shouting like a madwoman. It's your own fault if I hit you, Shen Shen said expressionlessly. Kneel down and apologize to Qin Meng. Otherwise, you won't even have the right to. Regret. What the hell are you going crazy for? Are you looking for death? The male manager immediately protected Ye Ye and angrily said, That little slut by your side, don't even think about working in this company for the rest of your life. He was the HR manager of Pan Meng. As long as he spoke, no one dared to call people to work. Ding dong. The elevator door opened. Ingjian came down from upstairs to meet Shen Chen. He thought that the young master should have come up by now. Just as he walked out, he saw manager Yang arguing with someone. Ingjian looked closely and was instantly terrified, breaking out in a cold sweat. He hurried over, but before he could speak, manager Yang suddenly called the security guard over, intending to attack Shen Chen. Ingjian immediately became furious and directly punched manager Yang hard. Manager Yang let out a miserable scream and flew several meters, hitting a stone pillar. Blood spurted from his mouth. You dare to defy your superiors. Ingjian's face was full of killing intent as he strode over and ruthlessly stomped on manager Yang's chest. He showed mercy and didn't kill him, because someone dying here would frighten his sister-in-law. The beaten manager Yang kept wailing in pain, why are you hitting me? What did I do wrong? Useless. Ingjian sneered, you don't even know who you've offended, and I can't be bothered to explain it to you. You're fired. Don't let me see you in Dongzhou again. Get lost. Manager Yang, who was already seriously injured, fell into despair again. Losing this job, where could he find another with an annual salary of a million? Ye Ye was so scared that she collapsed to the ground. Ying Zhan coldly glanced at her and slapped the wretched woman away. Afterwards, Ying Zhan raised his head and saw that Shen Shen had already entered the elevator. He breathed a sigh of relief and immediately contacted the people above with the walkie-talkie, telling them not to let anyone obstruct the young master. Inside the elevator, Qin Meng was still very nervous. She grabbed Shen Chen's arm and asked, Your bodyguard can just hit people at will, will there be any consequences? It's okay. If they get hit, it's their own fault. Shen Chen said calmly. Ying Zhan is the commander of the Dongzhou army. Those people would be begging for it if they were hit by him. Ding dong, the elevator door opened, and the deputy director of Pan Meng and a group of senior executives personally welcomed the two at the door. Qin Meng was instantly stunned. When had an ordinary person like her ever been welcomed by the top executives of a multi-billion dollar company? When she walked into the office, her head was still in a daze. The other party was even more confused and had already arranged a job for her. And if she came to work, she would be directly in charge of the department. It was very unbelievable, feeling like a dream. When she left the company, Qin Meng was still in a daze for a long time. After a while, she suddenly took a deep breath and said, You arranged all of this, didn't you? Do you know people at Pan Meng? You have a very good relationship with that general manager, don't you? I see him always trying to please you. Xin Shan smiled faintly. Not to mention that general manager, the entire company had to listen to him. It was likely that the old housekeeper hadn't revealed his true identity, otherwise those people would have been scared to their knees. Money makes the world go round, Qin Meng muttered. Your family got so much money from the demolition, of course you know some wealthy friends. She was envious, but not jealous. Because she firmly believed that she could also earn a lot of money in the future. Soon, Qin Meng took out her phone and called her mother. Hello, mom, I've arranged a job for my brother. Whom? It's true, I didn't lie to you. He Nianjin stood up from the mahjong table in shock and said, Are you kidding with mom? It's only been a short time and you've already found a job. Do you know the leader of Pan Meng? How did you manage it? Did you sleep with someone? Hearing this, Qin Meng was very angry, Mom, do you have to speak so harshly? I'm hanging up. She angrily hung up the phone. Xin Shen comforted her, if this home is not good, then leave and come to me. 
Where do you want to live? I will buy it for you. Xin Meng shook her head and said, Forget it, my mom is like this, after all, she is my relative. If I leave this home, where else can I go? Suddenly, a man and a woman were fighting on the street, and the woman ran over here. Save me, save me. Looking closely, the bloodied face was Yuan Yuan, and the one beating her was manager Yang. Bitch, it's because of you that I lost my job, I'll kill you. Manager Yang tore at her like a mad dog, while Yuan Yuan screamed in pain, I was wrong, don't hit me, don't kill me. Yuan Yuan knelt in front of Qin Meng, choking, Qin Meng, for the sake of our many years of friendship, spare me. Qin Meng felt a bit reluctant and said, Shen Shen, let's just forget it and let them continue working. Yuan Yuan helped me before, without her, I might have starved to death on the street. She couldn't bear to see her friend become like this because of herself. Shen Shen remained unmoved and said, some mistakes have no chance of repentance. This woman humiliated you, she doesn't deserve to live. Ying Zhan, get them out, don't let me see her again. Ying Zhan immediately took action and forcibly dragged manager Yang and Yuan Yuan away. Xin Meng's pretty face turned pale, she didn't expect her plea to be in vain. Shen Shen's voice was cold, I have spared you, not to the point of extermination. Before, anyone related to her by blood had to die. Qin Meng shuddered at these words. Cold. Too cold. Xin Chen's words and attitude were like a demon crawling out of an endless abyss. This kind of icy attitude made her feel a bit scared in her heart. Unable to adapt. Xin Meng knew that Xin Chen was doing it for her own good, but she was a little afraid of this indifference. Um. I have something to do. I'll go home first, you don't need to send me. Xin Meng quickly found an excuse to leave. Xin Chen was stunned. Xin Meng's sudden change in attitude surprised him. Ying Zhan came over and said in a low voice, Those dog like couple will never appear in Dongzhou again. Are they dead? Xin Chen asked. There's still a breath left. Xin Chen fell silent for a moment and said, Then let them live. Ying Zhan was stunned, he didn't expect the young master to suddenly change his mind. Xin Shen sighed and said, Xin Meng is afraid of me, I may have been too cold just now. Ying Zhan immediately said seriously, everything the young master does is right, it's the rest of the world that's wrong. Others don't understand the young master, it's their foolishness. To be honest, if I had the young master's background, I would be more arrogant and conceited than the young master. The young master is already a very good person. Xin Shen chuckled, if he were a good person, he wouldn't have scared away his woman. He immediately drove his Ferrari to catch up. Some things are better explained clearly, to avoid misunderstandings. Phew. Ying Zhan let out a sigh and also planned to follow. At this time, the old butler appeared, his eyes indifferent as he looked at Ying Zhan, making Ying Zhan shiver all over. That woman, didn't affect the young master, did she? No, she didn't. Ying Zhan immediately shook his head. He knew that if he said yes, Qin Meng's life might be in danger. Keep an eye on the young master's safety, report to me at any sign of trouble. The butler will never allow anyone to harm the young master, not even to change his mind. When Qin Meng returned home, she saw her parents playing cards as soon as she entered the house, and there was a stranger next to them. You're back. Hello, I'm Yi Haobua, the vice president of Shangshu Group. Qin Meng didn't know Yi Haobua, so she looked at her parents with a puzzled look. He Nianjin smiled and said, Qin Meng, Haobua came to see you on purpose. He likes you and wants to propose to you. Qin Meng widened her eyes. She didn't even know the other person, so why would a stranger propose to her? Yi Haobua coughed and said, actually, we've met before, at a beach party where I sang a song called Hotel California. Hearing this, Qin Meng gradually had some impression, thinking of the night when someone drank too much and sang. It seemed to be the person in front of her. Miss Qin, I know it's presumptuous to propose so suddenly, but I've been secretly in love with you for a long time. Yi Haobua took out several property deeds from his bag and said, I have more than 20 houses in the local area, all fully paid for. If we get married, I can transfer all of them to you. Miss Qin, please don't look at me like that. I'm perfectly sane. I really just want to marry you. Marry me, okay? 
Yi Haobo instantly knelt down and took out a ring. This world is crazy. Xin Meng's head was spinning, so she hurried back to her room. He Ninjin knocked on the door and shouted, What are you hiding for? Come out. Young Master Yi came all the way to see you, and this is how you treat him. It's okay, auntie. Miss Qin is just a little shy for the first time. For someone as outstanding as me, Miss Qin probably hasn't encountered it before. Yi Habwa left his address and said, I booked a private room at the Taizi Hotel, waiting for auntie's arrival. I'll take my car, the new BMW I bought. He left the car keys and left in a very ostentatious manner. Come out, he's already gone. He Nianjin said. Qin Meng opened the door. He Nianjin scolded, what are you hiding for? How can young master Yi not compare to that surname Shen? Look how sincere he is, bringing over a dozen property deeds and leaving a BMW for us to drive. Your boyfriend from the demolition area, has he seen so many houses? Just as Qin Meng was about to explain, he Nianjin immediately took out a few new clothes and urged, hurry up and change, go have dinner with young master Yi. Whether it works or not, you have to give him some face. Although Qin Meng was unwilling, she knew the consequences of not going. After changing clothes, the family of three walked to the door, where a BMW X1 was parked. Wow, it's a new car. He Nianjin saw the BMW and immediately took two selfies. Qin Ziming sat in the driver's seat inside, I never thought the first time I drove a luxury car, it would be someone else's. In the future, I can only rely on my son to buy me one. Xin Meng said timidly, let's drive over and return it to him. I also bought a car and can drive you around. With your old car, I don't even know if it can go on the highway. He Nianjin looked disdainful. Hold on tight, the old driver will take you for a ride. Qin Ziming grinned and stepped on the gas to leave the neighborhood. With a swoosh, a LaFerrari supercar passed them. Look at them driving a sports car, born at the finish line. He Nianjin looked envious. Qin Meng felt helpless, her mother was still so vain and materialistic. The supercar suddenly stopped. Xin Chen frowned slightly. He seemed to have seen Qin Meng in the passing BMW. He was sure he hadn't seen wrong and immediately turned around. At this time, it was rush hour, and his car was stuck in traffic. Xin Shen felt a bit impatient and urgently wanted to explain things to Qin Meng. In the Audi, Ying Zhan saw that Xin Shen's car was blocked, and he knew what to do next. Ying Zhan took out the emergency lights and placed them on the roof of the car, then shouted into a megaphone. At the same time, four or five bodyguards took a license plate from the car and immediately hung it on Xin Chen's car. Young master, this license plate will allow you to travel unimpeded in Dongzhou. I'll have someone clear a path for you. Ying Zhan immediately began to direct, making a mysterious phone call. Soon, personnel appeared on the road. An emergency lane appeared, and Xin Chen stepped on the gas, bursting out with a powerful thrust. V room. The Ferrari burst out like a wild beast, speeding through various intersections. All the vehicles on the roadside were intercepted to make way for Xin Chen's car. At a checkpoint, the duty personnel saw a sports car approaching. This car is driving so fast, there must be a problem. The man was about to stop the car when suddenly, his companion's face changed dramatically and quickly cleared the road. Are you crazy? That's a 751 license plate. If you stop it, you'll ruin your life. The companion's expression changed dramatically and quickly stood up straight, saluting the speeding car. Watching the sports car leave, the companion finally relaxed. The man swallowed hard and asked nervously, Bro, what's the deal with that car? What would happen if we intercepted it? The companion looked at him sympathetically and said, If you had stopped that car just now, everyone on duty today, including our boss, would have been in big trouble. The man trembled in fear. In front of the Taizi Hotel, when Xin Ziming parked the car, the hotel security was very polite and even personally directed the parking. Look, it feels different when you drive a luxury car. Before, when I came to park, they always asked me to park on the side. Xin Ziming suddenly felt a sense of pride. 
He Ninjin also nodded in agreement, saying that as soon as she had some money, she would buy herself a BMW. The family of three entered the hotel, and seven or eight service staff ran over, carrying bags and offering glasses. The service attitude was extremely enthusiastic. The couple felt that they were being valued and their vanity was greatly satisfied. Uncle and aunt, you're here. How do you feel about this hotel? Yi Haobua asked with a smile. Great, it's really great. He Nianjin smiled and said, I've been here once before with a friend, but I've never enjoyed being treated as a VIP like this. You must come here often, right? Not really, but I have a friend who gave me a gold card. Yi Haobua boasted, if you want to get a gold card at this hotel, you have to spend at least 2 million a year. The couple were suddenly shocked. Two million a year for meals, that's a lot of money. They didn't dare to think about it. Uncle and aunt, please sit down. I've already ordered the dishes. I also ordered some red wine and 82 Lafite. He Ninjin smiled even more happily, the more she looked at the other party, the more pleasing he became, and she wished he could become her son-in-law immediately. Qin Meng, what are you doing standing there when you're talking to Master Yi? Qin Ziming scolded. Uncle, it's okay. It's normal for Qin Meng to be shy in front of such an outstanding man. By the way, I only brought the property deed earlier, I forgot to bring the car keys. Yi Haobo took out seven or eight car keys and said, I have a car in every major city, and the cheapest one starts at 500,000. I have a set of houses in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, and in the future, I can take uncle and aunt to stay there. And the company is planning to further my education and send me to the overseas headquarters for a few years. I can get a green card in three years. Qin Ziming kept clapping his hands and could only say good in his mouth. Such an outstanding man, they naturally liked him very much. They absolutely had to seize the opportunity and not let him get away. Qin Meng, marry me, I promise to make you the happiest woman in the world. Yi Haobo said this, but he didn't really mean it. You slut, I'm tired of playing with you, I'm dumping you. Bah, looking so seductive, yet daring to pretend to be innocent. Yi Haobo's eyes wandered over Qin Meng's figure, his mind already imagining, with a smirk in his heart. Women with looks like Qin Meng, he had played with countless. As long as it was a woman he set his sights on, he could always get her. Soon, the meal was served. After a few drinks, Qin Ziming started to treat Yi Haobo like a brother. As they chatted, they talked about Pan Meng Capital. I know someone at Pan Meng, I know their CEO, Yi Haobo boasted. Qin Ziming exclaimed, now I understand, my son's job must be through your introduction. I knew Qin Meng got it so quickly, it was because of your help, Yi Haobo didn't know what else to say, but he immediately took credit for it. Yes, it was all me, I wanted to keep it low-key, but you found out, he said. Cheers. The two of them drank. Qin Meng became anxious and said, Dad, that's not what happened at all, this time it was Xin Shen who helped, he. Shut up, he Nianjin glared and said, what does that demolition guy know? If it wasn't for young master Ye's secret help, could you have helped Xiao Tian get the job? Do you really think you have some looks, and people have to listen to you? The more anxious Qin Meng became, the less she could explain. She could only cry in frustration. After the meal, Yi Haobo took out his gold card to pay, and the waiter said they could put it on the tab. Qin Ziming envied and believed even more in Yi Haobo's ability. Uncle, let me take you for a massage, I know a new place, Yi Haobo said, pulling Qin Ziming. Qin Meng and Hing Yinjin followed behind, and as they reached the door, they ran into Xin Shen. Xin Shen, why are you here? Qin Meng was surprised and delighted. I came to explain to you, Xin Shen said calmly. I might have scared you before, I hope you don't mind. Your friend is fine, I will let her go back to work, Xin Meng didn't blame Xin Shen, she was just scared at the time. Actually, I. Xin Meng was about to explain, but Yi Nianjin suddenly pulled her aside and glared at Xin Shen, kid, you can break up with my daughter, and leave my sight immediately. Let me tell you, I already have a new son-in-law candidate, although he's not as handsome as you, he's richer than you. He has many luxury cars, and dozens of houses, you can't compare to him in three lifetimes. Xin Shen remained calm and said, in this world, there should be no one richer than me. 
all the banks belonged to his family. A stomp of his foot could trigger a financial tsunami. It was ridiculous that this ignorant woman didn't understand any of this. Shin Shen, my mom is talking nonsense, don't mind her, Xin Meng said. I can't explain to you today, let's video chat later. Mom, let's go, Xin Meng pulled her away. Shin Shen's eyes were cold as he said, challenge accepted, I know you're here, come out. Young master. Ying Zhan silently came out and handed over Yi Haobo's personal information. When they were chatting, he had immediately gone to investigate who Ying Yinjin was talking about. Yi Haobo, the son of Shengshu Group, with assets of 10 billion? Xin Shen casually tore the document to shreds and said coldly, make the Yi family come to see me. Ying Zhan immediately stood up straight and began to make arrangements. Shengshu Group Headquarters Yi Jun walked out of the gym, took a shower, and returned to his office. On the table were various certificates of his achievements. Yi Jun casually picked up a book on the philosophy of success and began his daily reading. Bang! The door opened. Ye Juan was a little annoyed and said, I've said before, don't disturb me when I'm reading. After speaking, no one paid attention to him. Yejuan looked up and saw several men in camouflage standing in front of him. Who are you? Are you Yejuan? Yes, who are you? Come with us. With a black hood over his head, they forcibly took Yejuan away. In the nightclub, there were sounds of crying and howling. Yehebo held a microphone and sang laughing proudly at the Jianghu with Qin Ziming. Suddenly, a large number of jeeps appeared at the entrance of the nightclub. Hundreds of armed guards jumped out of the cars and surrounded the entrance. A stern-looking man kicked open the door of the private room. Yehebo was frightened and stammered, What are you doing? Are you Yehebo? Yes, I am. Good, take him away. Several men in camouflage tied up Yehebo and put him in the car. Xin Ziming was too scared to move and quickly called his wife. Nianjin, come quickly, something happened, young master Yi has been taken. He Nianjin rushed to the nightclub with Qin Meng in a hurry. As soon as they got home, they heard about the incident and rushed over. Lao Qin, what happened? Where is young master Yi? He Nianjin asked anxiously. He's been taken away. Qin Ziming smiled bitterly and recounted what had just happened. After hearing his words, He Nianjin was furious and shouted, Why haven't you called the police yet? If something happens to young Master Yi, where will we find such a wealthy son-in-law? I'll deal with you later. She quickly called the police. Xin Meng suspected that the incident had nothing to do with Xin Shen. After thinking about it, it shouldn't be the other parties doing, after all, they didn't even know Yehebo. Where are you taking me? Let me go. Yehebo was forcibly taken to a room by several people. After taking off the hood, Yehebo was so angry that his face turned red. Do you know who I am? If you don't let me go, I'll make you regret it. How boa. Suddenly, his father Yihun's urgent voice sounded. Yehebo looked up in a daze and said, Dad, what are you doing here? Mom, you too? Yehebo stammered. How could this happen? Were his parents also taken? At this moment, Ingjun walked into the room and said coldly, The whole Yi family is here, all of them are here. When my young master arrives, all of you kneel and don't move. Anyone who dares to move, I'll cut off their hands and feet. Yi Hun trembled and said, Who are you, and why are you taking my family? Ingjun sneered, We are people you can't afford to provoke, and things you shouldn't inquire about. Don't inquire randomly, knowing too much is not good for you. Suddenly, Shin Chen entered from outside the door, and Ying Zhan immediately stood respectfully to the side. Have you brought everyone? Shin Chen sat on the million-dollar sofa, casually crossed his legs, and looked at Yi Han and his son with cold and icy eyes. Who are you, and what do you want with my family? If you want money, I can give it to you. Yi Han stood in front of his wife and children, his eyes full of anger. Get out of the way. Ying Zhan kicked Yi Hun away and said coldly, This is none of your business. Shut up and don't block my young master's view. Xin Chen's icy gaze was fixed on Yi Hebo. 
This is the person who wants to marry Qin Meng? He's really overestimating himself. Shen Chun chuckled lightly and said, You may not know who I am or why I brought you here. Ye Hebo nodded instinctively. He really didn't know Shen Shen or why he had been taken. Shen Shen said calmly, The woman you plan to marry, Qin Meng, is the one I have my eye on. You can leave her, and the conditions are up to you. Yi Haobo's expression froze, so the woman he had his eye on already had someone else. Who do you think you are? Turns out you're my love rival. Yi Haobo suddenly gained confidence and said, You may look like something, but you're not as good as me. No matter what conditions I set, you would agree to them? Yi Haobo coldly smiled and said, I want 10 billion, plus 10 buildings in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, and a private jet. He deliberately mentioned these conditions to make the other party unable to fulfill them. However, Yi Haobo underestimated Shen Chen's strength and the Shen family. I will give you everything you mentioned. In addition, I will give you three publicly traded companies worth billions. As long as you disappear from my sight forever. Shen Chen said expressionlessly. Yi Haobo was stunned and said, Are you kidding? You can provide all of that? I'm not playing house with you. I'm talking about real assets and cash. Do I look like I'm joking? Shen Shen said. Yi Haobo sneered and said, You underestimate the power of my young master. The conditions you mentioned mean nothing to my young master. He can offer a hundred times more. Upon hearing this, Yi Haobo was both excited and awakened. Since this sucker was so rich, he should ask for more. I take it back. I want to add more conditions. Yi Haobo became even more excessive and brazenly said, I want a hundred billion in cash, twenty publicly traded companies, and I need a hundred sports cars. I want thirty villas. As long as you can fulfill it, I will immediately leave that little bitch and stop bothering her. After saying this, he looked smug, thinking that if he really got all these things, he would be the winner in life and could live carefree as the most awesome second generation rich. Had ha. Shin Shin suddenly laughed, stood up, walked to Yi Haobo, and kicked him away. I wanted to give you a way out, but you foolishly blocked it yourself. Shin Shen was domineering at this moment, his eyes cold as ice, with you gone, no one will bother her again. I don't need to negotiate with you anymore. Yi Haobo got up, his face changing dramatically, and said, I changed my mind. I want the first condition I mentioned. Give it to me and I will leave Dongzhou immediately. It's too late for regrets now. Shen Shen said, I'm not in the mood to play games with you. Let me send you on your way. As he finished speaking, Ying Zhan walked over with a knife, his eyes cold. Ah, mom, dad, help me. Yi Haobo screamed in horror. Stop. Yi Jun urgently shouted, If you dare to hurt my son, I swear I will use every means to make sure you don't have a good death and you will accompany my son in death. Ying Zhan stopped, his voice becoming indifferent, you threaten the young master, you deserve to die. Without waiting for Shen Shen to speak, he rushed over in a swift step, and the knife fell. With a scream, Yi Jun's head fell to the ground. Ah! Dad! Yi Haobo screamed in fear, and his mother fainted on. The spot. It's your turn, useless. Ying Zhan grabbed Ji Haobo's throat and said coldly, My young master is not someone like you can insult. I wanted to spare your life, but you brought this upon yourself. Spare me, spare me. Yi Haobo wet himself in fear. Ying Zhan glanced back at Xin Shen. Xin Shen said coldly, Being kind-hearted and soft-hearted will only lead to a miserable death. I gave you a chance, but you are useless. Understanding Shen Shen's meaning, Ying Zhan grinned and dragged the person out. Killing inside the house would only ruin the million-dollar carpet. A few minutes later, Ying Zhan returned with blood on his hands. He smiled and said, Young master, it's been taken care of. Shen Shen nodded slightly and asked, Do you think I am cruel? No, I have gotten used to it, Ying Zhan replied. I understand why young master does this, it's all for the best, he added. Shen Shen stretched lazily and said, Prepare the car, I'm going to find her. Ying Zhan respectfully replied, The convoy is ready to depart at any time. This time, I'll only ride in a Bentley, Shen Shen said with a smile. 
After some hesitation, Ying Zhan nodded in agreement. He arranged for more than 50 bodyguards to follow in an Audi. Then he personally drove the Bentley, taking Shen Chen to Qin Meng's house. The Qin Meng family had all returned. Qin Ziming and Hin Yinjin were still worried about Yi Haobua. It had been so long since he was taken away, and there was no news at all. They were afraid that something had happened to him. At this moment, Qin Ziming's phone rang, and it was a relative from their hometown. What, you say how I was coming here to play for a few days? Qin Ziming's face immediately lit up with a smile, that's great, I'll have Qin Meng go pick him up right away. After hanging up the phone, Qin Ziming immediately told his wife, how I was coming to Dongzhou in a while and will stay at our place for a few days. He Yinjin's face showed joy, is it son Hao Hao? He hasn't been to our house in several years. Qin Ziming smiled happily, Sun Hao Hao is studying at Peking University and is coming to Dongzhou to work at a foreign company. Hurry and have Qin Meng go pick him up. After speaking, He Yinjin walked to the living room and said, Your cousin Hao Hao is coming to Dongzhou, go pick him up. Qin Meng didn't really want to go, but she knew that her mother's words were final. So she had to go pick him up. Holding the keys, Qin Meng walked to the entrance of the community. Just as she was about to get into the car, a Bentley drove up. Xin Shen got out of the car, and Qin Meng's face lit up with joy, you came at just the right time. I'm going to the train station now, come with me. Okay. Xin Shen immediately got into her wooling minivan, and Ying Zhan rolled his eyes and quickly got into the car as well. I'm going to the train station to pick someone up, a distant cousin is coming, Qin Meng said with annoyance, he's going to stay at my house for a few days, it's so annoying. Xin Shen said, are you close with him? Just a so-so, Qin Meng replied. This cousin and I used to go to the same elementary school, and he often stood up for me and taught some naughty kids a lesson. After we went to different middle schools, we didn't really keep in touch. Xin Shen furrowed his brow slightly and said, you'd better stay away from this kind of person. Why? No reason, Xin Shen replied. Qin Meng laughed and said, you're not jealous, are you? I smell a sour taste. Xin Shen turned to look out the car window. He wasn't jealous at all, he just suddenly felt a little uncomfortable. Perhaps when you like someone, you care about everything about them, especially when they have known another man for so many years. They soon arrived at the train station, where there were quite a few people. Xin Shen took the initiative to stand in front, not letting anyone bump into Qin Meng. He was currently facing the security arrangements, dispersing the crowd in all directions, trying to make room for the two as much as possible. Bentley? Sun Hao Hao, carrying a bag, walked out of the exit and saw a Bentley waiting for him. He was still surprised in his heart. When did Uncle Qin do so well, even driving a Bentley? Hao Hao Ge. Suddenly, Qin Meng walked over to him, smiling and said, Hao Hao Ge, long time no see, you've lost a lot of weight. Qin Meng Mimi, you've become more beautiful too. Sun Hao Hao looked Qin Meng up and down, amazed in his heart. He had always heard that Qin Meng was ugly after her disfigurement. He was already prepared to meet this ugly woman. Who would have thought that Qin Meng was so beautiful, stunning, and exuded a classical temperament? Not bad, your family even drives a Bentley. Sun Hao Hao opened the car door and was about to get in. Hao Hao Ji. That's not my car. My car is over there. Qin Meng pointed to her own wooling mini. Sun Hao Hao felt embarrassed and wanted to crawl into a hole, quickly apologizing to the driver. After getting in the car, Sun Hao Hao squeezed into the back seat and secretly observed Shen Chen, amazed. Your boyfriend is damn handsome. Sun Hao Hao had never seen such a handsome man before, and handsome alone couldn't describe him. This person seemed to exude a noble air, like a black hole, constantly attracting people's souls. Even he felt his heart beating faster. Qin Meng smiled and said, Hao Hao Ji, are you here in Dongzhou to work this time? Shu, to be honest, I came here as a refugee. Sun Hao Hao said with a look of despair, my family arranged a blind date for me and forced me to get married next month, so I applied to transfer from my position and escape to Dongzhou. Cousin, you must keep it a secret for me and don't tell uncle and aunt. This handsome guy, don't tell anyone either, I want to attend your wedding first. Shin Shen smiled slightly, 
indicating that he would keep it a secret. Xin Meng said, Hao Hao Ji, don't talk nonsense, we haven't even made any plans. Sun Hao Hao glanced back and forth at the two, chuckled, and said, I can tell that this handsome guy must love you very much, you two will definitely make it. Handsome guy, I understand Auntie Yi, although she's vain and loves money, she's still not a bad person. As long as your family conditions are not bad, marrying my cousin will definitely not be a problem. Turn left up ahead, I need to report to the company first, and then I'll treat you two to a meal. After Qin Meng parked the car, Sun Hao Hao walked into the company with his bag. Qin Meng sent a voice message to her parents on her phone, informing them that the other party had arrived. Xin Shen said indifferently, your cousin looks good. Right, I think so too, nothing has changed at all. Xin Meng smiled lightly and said, Hao Hao Ji likes to protect young girls and is quite righteous. You can try to get to know him more and make friends with him. I'll try my best. Xin Shen nodded. Soon, Sun Hao Hao walked out of the company, grumbling. Damn it, that female supervisor actually arranged for me to do odd jobs at the front desk. Sun Hao Hao said in frustration, I was originally transferred here to be a deputy team leader, but they made me run errands and deliver takeout. It's infuriating. Oomph, when I become the manager, the first thing I'll do is fire that bastard. Xin Shen glanced at the name of the company, seemingly his own enterprise. The three of them arrived at the restaurant. When ordering, Sun Hao Hao still couldn't swallow the anger from earlier and kept talking. Xin Meng could only comfort him because she couldn't help. A multinational company like that could cause a huge earthquake in Dongzhou with just a stump. She didn't have the ability to work there yet. Handsome guy, where did you graduate from? I, just dabble in some investments and live a carefree life. Xin Shen said. You invest in stocks? Sun Hao Hao immediately became interested and said, I have a friend who also likes to trade stocks and is very good at it. I'll have him teach you when he's free. Xin Shen smiled lightly. In the financial battle back then, he single-handedly overturned the entire Wall Street, and even the god of stocks almost knelt down to beg for mercy. There was no one in this world who could teach him how to trade stocks. Cousin, have you started your internship at university? Sun Hao Hao said with a smile, do you want me to help you find a job? It will definitely be a high-paying office job. Sure, Xin Meng had planned to look for a job these days, but she didn't know any capable people in the workplace. Now that someone was offering help, she naturally agreed. Xin Shen didn't want Qin Meng to work hard, so he said, how about I arrange it for you? You can get paid without going to work. With just one sentence, Qin Meng could work anywhere, and even directly parachuting to become the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company was not a problem. Sun Hao laughed and said, bro, the people you find are all in sales, and earning commission is too hard. You don't want your cousin to get tanned outside, do you? Don't worry, I will definitely arrange it properly for your cousin, and a monthly salary of over 10,000 is not a problem. After dinner, the group returned to Qin Meng's house. Hao Hao, you finally came. Hello, uncle and aunt, it's been a few years since we last met. Sun Hao Hao immediately went to chat with the two. Qin Meng knew that her parents liked boys, so she could only take Sun Hao Hao's things into her room. Xin Shen stood at the door of her room, carefully looking around. Xin Meng blushed and quickly closed the door, saying, It's a bit messy, you can't look. I like it messy, Xin Shen said. When Xin Meng heard this, her ears turned hot, because it felt like a topic between lovers. Over half an hour later, Sun Hao finished chatting and came back, smiling and saying, I have nothing to do now, let's go, I'll take you to see some jobs. Bro, do you also not have a job? Should I arrange one for you too? Xin Shen was slightly stunned, he didn't need it, right? Don't be shy, you two working together can also cultivate your relationship. Sun Hao Hao insisted on taking Xin Shen with him. Ng Zhan sat in the Bentley, holding Sun Hao Hao's personal information. First, Sun Hao Hao had no criminal record and no bad habits, the only downside might be gambling. This person is temporarily safe, continue to observe. If there is any behavior that threatens the young master's safety, take him down directly. Ng Zhan said coldly. Several bodyguards behind him nodded and immediately blended into the crowd. 
below the Meifu Group building. Sun Haohao made a call to his friend, and his friend came down five minutes later. This is a cosmetics company, with sales of several billion a year, specializing in selling lipstick, and has cooperation with many big brands. Sun Haohao smiled, Cousin, you are so beautiful, it's most suitable for you to work here. Qin Meng nodded vigorously. She had naturally heard of Meifu International, a very large company in the eastern region, although it had not yet gone public, it was already very well known. A few minutes later, Sun Haohao's friend came down, a mature woman in her forties, in professional attire, with long hair and a charming demeanor. Haohao, you've been avoiding me for half a year, and as soon as we meet, you want to introduce someone to work. What do you take me for? Sun Haohao coughed and said, Sis, I was impulsive for a moment, I'll treat you to dinner another day. He pointed to Qin Meng and Shen Shen, these two are my good friends, can you arrange a position for them, anything will do, they are both reliable and capable. The woman kept staring at Qin Meng's face, envious, this beauty is really beautiful, fair and smooth skin, without any impurities, she's simply a rare beauty. She then looked at Shen Shen, showing a hint of surprise. What a handsome man! The appearance seems ordinary, but the temperament is elegant and noble, with a cold and stern face, giving off a distant and aloof vibe. The male protagonist in the comic seems to be just like that. Ning Jia, Ning Jia? Sun Hao Hao waved his hand. Ning Jia quickly came to her senses, her heart racing. She pretended to be calm and said, based on your face, I'll take these two. This beautiful lady will be my executive assistant for now. As for that handsome guy, he can only be a regular salesperson for now. I'll apply for a suitable position for him later. Thank you, Ning Jie. Sun Hao Hao exclaimed excitedly. Come with me to complete the entry procedures. Ning Jie swayed her hips as she went in, and Qin Meng was excited. She was actually going to work here. Xin Shen sighed and followed along, feeling helpless. Shortly after they entered, Ying Zhan arrived in a Bentley. Maifa International? Ying Zhan furrowed his brow slightly. At that moment, he received a call, I've just acquired this company. You need to go in and personally protect the young master's safety. Ying Zhan said bitterly, Steward, why is the young master working in a place like this? The steward said calmly, This is the young master's game, understand? When the young master wants to, play, we have to play along, no need for so many questions. After making the promise, Ying Zhan led his two brothers inside. Is anyone here? I'm here to apply for a security position. Donjo's top warrior came here to work as a security guard. This news shocked many people. After more than an hour, they completed the entry procedures. Ning Jia was the company's sales director, and Qin Meng became her executive assistant. Xin Chen became a regular salesperson. He was taken to the first sales department by the HR department. Everyone, put down your work and welcome our new colleague. All the sales staff immediately looked up. Wow! He's so handsome. Too handsome. So beautiful. The female sales staff exclaimed one by one, even the cleaning lady was so excited that she almost fainted. Xin Shen remained indifferent, his handsomeness, who didn't know about it. Why make such a fuss? Hello everyone, I'm Xin Shen, and I'll be your colleague from now on. Please take care of me in the future. Xin Shen said indifferently, then turned and left. Such a cold and handsome guy. I dare not go within three meters of him. So aloof, what's so great about being handsome? Boss, you need to humble him. The boss's eyes had turned into hearts, admiringly saying, being handsome, one can do whatever they want. I really want him to be my boyfriend. Hmm, hum. She made a humming sound. Xin Shen left the sales department and went to the director's office. It was Qin Meng's first day as the director's assistant, and she didn't know much about the work, so she needed to learn from scratch. Xin Shen looked at her busy and serious appearance and couldn't help but smile. Why do you have to work so hard? I can help you arrange things. I don't want your arrangements. I still want to rely on my own efforts to build my career. Xin Meng said firmly, I believe in my abilities and I will definitely make a lot of money in the future, 
to prove to my parents that I'm not inferior to their son. At that moment, Xin Shen saw an unprecedented sense of confidence in her eyes. Definitely wouldn't dare to be the first one to get on the elevator. He would be too scared to walk in front of the young master. Xin Shen shrugged helplessly. He wanted to keep a low profile, but his strength didn't allow it. In the meeting room, the newcomer Zhang Yuan held a shareholders meeting. Many senior executives, as well as major and minor shareholders, were present. Xin Meng, as the assistant director, was responsible for taking notes on the side. Zhang Yuan scanned the room, and all he saw were respectful smiles. With a stern face, he said, young man, find a seat. Instantly, everyone's gaze turned to Xin Shen. Xin Shen brought over a chair and sat down directly. Who is this person? How dare he sit in front of so many senior management? We supervisors can only stand, and you, a salesperson, have the audacity to sit here? Our general manager Zhang is just being polite, and you dare to really sit here. Who brought this person in? Several executives angrily spoke. It was me, Ming Jia raised her hand and said, he's new to the company and doesn't know the rules. Get up immediately. She glared at Xin Chen. Xin Chen raised his eyebrows. This woman was getting annoying, daring to make the young master stand up. It's okay, let him sit, let's continue the meeting. Zhang Yuan smiled and spoke, smoothing things over for Xin Chen. Although the other executives didn't say anything more, they had already taken note of this disrespectful young man. The meeting ended, and everyone dispersed. As Zhang Yuan was leaving, he said, Young man, come to my office. Upon hearing this, Ning Jia was the first to stand up and said, I'm sorry, Zhang, he's new and doesn't know anything. If there's any punishment, punish me instead. Zhang Yuan smiled and said nothing, then left. Xin Xin stood up and said, Maybe he just wants to invite me for tea, it's not as serious as you think. Ning Jia laughed and said, You're really bold to say that. If the chairman personally asks you to come over, it's definitely to blame you for what happened before. I'll go with you. I brought you in, so I can't let you take the blame alone. Xin Shen initially thought that Ning Jia was a strong-willed person who would shirk responsibility at critical moments. After all, they had only known each other for a few hours. He didn't expect her to be so willing to take responsibility. She was a good leader. In a few days, she would be promoted to vice chairman. Chairman's office. Zhang Yuan had prepared tea and was waiting for Xin Chen. He was very nervous at this moment. Although he had experienced many storms over the past 20 years, every time he faced someone with a prominent background, his heart would involuntarily beat faster. Ding dong. The secretary knocked on the door and said, Director of Sales, that person is waiting outside. Zhang Yuan only wanted to see Xin Chen, so he waved his hand and said, Let the director wait outside. The secretary left. Director Ning, please wait a moment. He can go in first. Ning Jia let out a sigh and patted Xin Chen on the shoulder, saying, Handsome, don't say anything reckless when you go in, or I'll be in trouble too. Okay. Xin Shen pushed open the door and went in. Master Shen, you're here? Zhang Yuan came over with a flattering smile and said, Master Shen, if there's anything uncomfortable, please tell me, I will definitely satisfy your needs. Xin Shen sat calmly on the sofa and said, Did the steward send you? Yes. Zhang Yuan said cautiously, The steward instructed me to take good care of you. If Master Shen has any requests, please tell me. Hmm. It seems you don't know my true identity. Xin Shen said. Zhang Yuan cautiously said, I dare to guess, Master Xin must be the son of a big shot in the province, right? Xin Shen smiled faintly. He was just from the province? Perhaps those people weren't even worthy to shine his shoes. Seeing Xin Shen's silence, Zhang Yuan became even more certain in his heart that the other party was definitely a young master from the province. This kind of young master was the most difficult to serve, and he had to be extremely careful. Xin Xin said lightly, my woman, Qin Meng, is working here, and I'm just accompanying her. If you think the timing is right, promote her to sales director, and then quickly become a company shareholder. Zhang Yuan nodded repeatedly, feeling envious. 
he had worked hard to achieve his current position. But Master Shen, with his good background, could change someone's future with just a few words. He regretted not having a daughter to introduce to Master Shen. Outside the door, Ning Jia was anxiously waiting. She started to worry why Shen Shen hadn't come out yet. What if he said something wrong and angered the chairman? Her career would be ruined. After tens of minutes, Shen Shen finally came out. Ning Jia hurriedly asked, How did it go? Did you say anything wrong to the chairman? We just had some tea in the office and didn't say much, Shen Shen said with a smile as he walked away. Ning Jia was stunned, thinking it couldn't be true. Who had the authority to have the chairman serve tea? Just based on being a salesperson? Ning Director, please come in, Zhang Yuan said. Ning Jia took a deep breath and walked in, standing respectfully in front of him. Zhang Yuan, with a stern expression, said, You are also a veteran at Meifu International, and your strength is impressive. You have contributed to nearly 70% of the company's performance. Thank you, Chairman. It's what I should do, Ning Jia replied. Zhang Yuan continued, There is a new order, a collaboration with L'Oreal. If you can secure it, I will make you a partner. Hearing this, Ning Jia's eyes turned red with excitement. Please rest assured, Chairman Zhang. I will definitely work hard, she said. Xin Meng was still cleaning Ning Jia's office. Xin Xin came in with some pastries and said, I know you like strawberry ice cream, so I bought two. It's work hours, Xin Meng said. Why did you come to my office during work hours? If the director finds out, it won't be good. Xin Shen smiled, she's in her office. She probably won't be back for a while. Ning Jia walked in with a serious expression, holding documents. Kid, who gave you the courage to come to my office and eat snacks during work hours? I'll deduct your pay for today. Xin Meng rolled her eyes, knowing she had been caught red-handed and wasted a day's work. Xin Shen didn't care about the deduction, he just wanted to see Qin Meng a little longer. Working was just an experience of life. After Ning Jia sat down, she said. Seriously, Qin Meng, the chairman has assigned me a new task. If I can complete it, I can smoothly become a company partner, and you won't just be a small sales director. Ning Jia frowned. This task was not easy, and it might take a long time to negotiate successfully. Suddenly, a strong perfume scent filled the room as the second sales director arrived. She was a mature and sexy woman in her thirties, heavily made up and wearing a very short skirt. As soon as she entered, she exuded strong hostility and provocatively said, Ning Director, do you, as one person, still want to become a partner? You'd better not compete with me. When I become a partner, I'll make you my assistant. Peach Director, how do you know I will lose to you? To reach my current position, I rely on my abilities, not on flaunting myself or sleeping with a few big bosses. Ning Jie spoke without mercy. The woman's eyebrows furrowed in anger and she said, Stop talking nonsense. You have no evidence if I sue you for defamation. Peach Director, everyone knows about the methods you use. I am determined to become a partner, and if you want to compete with me, show your true abilities. Let's wait and see. The peach director left with a cold laugh. After the person left, Ning sighed. In her heart, she was indeed a bit unsure about confronting the other party. It wasn't that she was worried about her own strength being inferior to the other party, but rather that Taozi was capable of using any means. The other party's identity as the second sales director was achieved by sleeping her way up, and her real ability was probably not even as good as a receptionist. Xin Meng poured a glass of water and said, Director, you can do it for sure. Ning nodded, believing in herself. Justice will surely prevail over evil. After work in the evening, Xin Chen and Xin Meng walked out together. Sun Hao Hao came over to greet them, smiling and asking, How was your first day at work? Not bad, right? The environment is good, thank you for finding us such a good job, Xin Meng said. Let me treat you to a meal, you can choose the place, Sun Hao Hao said. This time. Sun Hao Hao said awkwardly, her boyfriend drives a more expensive Mercedes AMG, and I was looked down upon directly. 
Sheen Meng said impatiently, it was just a rented car, you don't have the confidence to compete with her boyfriend. You don't understand, her boyfriend's car is also rented. Sun Hao had already found out that Fan Fan's boyfriend was just a local property developer with a few houses. Sheen Meng said, I really don't understand how you men think, always trying to show off by renting a car. Sun Hao smiled bitterly, he just wanted to leave a good impression on the woman. Nowadays, if you don't drive a good car, even beggars look down on you. Brother, thank you for lending me the car, please take it back soon, renting it for a day must be expensive. Sun Hao thanked him, I'll treat you to this meal, I'll treat you to another one next time. Shen Shen smiled and said, are you really okay with this? I'm not okay. Sun Hao said, but I have no choice, their car is better than mine. Not necessarily. Shin Shin said, if you want to compete, you have to crush them directly. I won't allow my friend to lose to anyone. I'll lend you a Ferrari. As soon as he heard this, Sun Hao jumped up in shock and said, wow, brother, you can still rent a Ferrari, it must cost tens of thousands for a day. It's not that expensive. Shin Shen said calmly, I know a friend in the car rental business, just need to pay for the gas. He made a phone call. V room, call anyone else. Brother Tiger walked over menacingly, and Sun Hao Hao was intimidated by his presence, his legs starting to go weak. Brother Tiger glanced at Sun Hao Hao, then at Shin Shen. Brother Tiger, it's this jerk who stole my girlfriend. You must teach him a lesson, Li Dapeng said viciously, determined to regain his pride in front of the woman and not let the other off easily. Suddenly, Brother Tiger slapped him and pushed him to the ground, kicking and breaking his leg. Ah, Brother Tiger, why are you hitting me? Li Dupeng cried out in pain. I'm hitting you. Brother Tiger's eyes were cold as he said, You dare provoke even Master Shen, your whole family is asking for trouble. He slapped Li Dupeng a few times, leaving him bruised and bloody, then threw him into the trunk of the car, saying to Shen Shen, I'll take this trash away so it won't bother you here. He immediately drove off. Sun Hao Hao was dumbfounded, his head buzzing, not knowing what had happened. Qin Meng looked at Shen Shen in confusion, wondering if he was the one referred to as Master Shen. Shen Shen smiled, Hao Hao, you win. This woman is yours. Sun Hao Hao snapped out of it and grinned. Yes, he won. This woman was his prize, and he could take her away. Brother, thanks for your help. Let's have a big celebration another day. Sun Hao Hao eagerly got into the car and quickly took Lu Fan Fan to another hotel. Qin Meng frowned slightly and asked, Is that Brother Tiger your man? He seems to know you. Maybe, I don't know him, Shen Shen shrugged. It's strange, wherever we go, you seem to know someone, Qin Meng muttered. Shen Shen was about to speak when several Rolls Royces stopped by the roadside. He said, You go back to work first, I'll find you later. Qin Meng turned and left. Shin Shen walked over, and the old butler got out of the car, smiling, Young master, the game is over, it's time to deal with official business. What business? Shin Shen asked. The butler said, The envoys from the eight nations want to meet with you regarding the free alliance. Shin Shen said expressionlessly, Are these trash here to meet their doom? Inside his mansion, Shin Shen walked into the living room, and dozens of people immediately stood up. The envoys of the eight nations each wielded significant influence in the world, representing the most developed countries. Shin Shen exuded a strong presence as he naturally sat on the sofa, unbuttoning his suit and calmly facing the envoys. One of the blonde envoys began speaking in Portuguese, chattering away. Shin Shen remained silent throughout, listening to the eight envoys take turns speaking for over two hours. He had almost fallen asleep, not understanding a word they said. The butler bent down and whispered, Young master, these bastards are saying you're a devil executioner who has killed many people. They want you to compensate them with a trillion dollars and apologize to the world. If you don't comply, they will mobilize 50,000 elite soldiers to attack our borders. Shin Shin coldly smiled at these monkeys who dared to come and threaten him. Dare to threaten the gods? Shin Shin Shin's cold gaze fixed on the envoys of the eight nations, saying, Steward, Notify the people in the three regions of North China, South China, and East China to prepare nuclear weapons. Today, I will turn these eight nations into ashes and erase them from the map forever. 
The old steward smiled slightly, looking more like the young master he knew. For the past few days, the young master had been revolving around a woman, leading him to believe that the young master had changed. The next moment, the old steward's expression turned stern as he had someone bring a military computer. Young master, the satellite is ready, and the encryption key has been generated. 18 five-star shoulders are ready to return, while North China, South China, and East China are all on high alert. The old steward produced a key and said coldly, three keys are all prepared and can launch nuclear weapons at any time. This world exists because of the young master. If the young master wants to destroy the earth, as the most loyal servant of the Shin family, he will only obey the command unconditionally. What are you doing? A special envoy suddenly couldn't sit still. He had been speaking Bengali, but now he was speaking Chinese more fluently than the locals. This special envoy nervously said, let's talk things out. We can sit down and discuss. Please don't act rashly. The other envoys were also scared out of their wits. They had come with great momentum, intending to demand answers. But no one had expected Shinsensen to act so unexpectedly. Without any warning, he was ready to use nuclear weapons against them. Who wouldn't be afraid? At this moment, the envoys were eager to leave, not even daring to take the money. Shinsensen's eyes were cold as he said, weren't you just threatening to cause trouble at my border? If you want to play with me, then I'll play with you. He then pressed the first button and inserted the first key. Hundreds of kilometers away, a launch silo slowly opened, and a nuclear warhead several hundred meters high was ready to ascend. No, don't. Thump. The faces of the envoys changed dramatically, and they immediately knelt on the ground, desperately pleading, don't act rashly, please don't act rashly. We admit our mistake. Retreat, make them retreat quickly. Outside the border, tens of thousands of ambushers quickly retreated 300 miles. Shinsensen said expressionlessly, you bunch of scoundrels, barging into my home and wanting to bully the weak? What do you think my Shin family is? Do you think I, Shinsensen, am a three-year-old child? Shinsensen spoke with anger, and with a snap, he inserted the second key. Inside the launch silo, alarms went off, and countless frontline personnel immediately put on protective gear and took cover in underground air raid shelters several thousand meters deep. Young master, where is the target? The old steward operated the military computer and asked coldly. Shinsensen sneered, lock onto these eight crappy little countries. Today, I will completely wipe them out. Ah! Several envoys screamed in terror, and some had already wet themselves, soaking the carpet. We were wrong, we won't dare again. We will compensate for your losses, we will give you all the treasures in the national treasury. The blonde envoy kept rubbing his hands and kowtowing on the ground, desperately pleading. Shinsensen chuckled and said, Weren't you just arrogant? If it weren't for someone manipulating you, would you dare to come and demand answers in a place as small as yours? Back then, the Free Alliance attacked me and destroyed my little island. I sent people to flatten every inch of their land and kill everyone who hindered me. You fools who don't know any better, how dare you provoke me? The old steward said coldly, young master, the Global Anti-Nuclear Contact Center just inquired whether we made a mistake and if we should cancel. Cancel, cancel it quickly. Several envoys pleaded with mournful voices, realizing that with this launch, their families, their land, and their country would all be finished. Tens of millions of people would be reduced to ashes and wiped from the earth. If they had known that this deity was so ruthless, they would never have dared to provoke trouble. It was all their fault for easily believing in the benefits promised by others. Shin Shen crossed his hands and smiled wickedly, do you think I will cancel it just because of your words? The blonde envoy trembled all over and said, we are willing to compensate for all losses. We will hand over the national treasury to you. I want your national treasury and the right to use it for the next 10 years. Also, your bank must obtain my approval for currency issuance. Your country's legislation cannot be modified without my consent. Shen Shen sternly said, the first day of January in your country will be my memorial day, can you agree to this? The blonde envoy immediately collapsed to the ground, his face pale. The others also smiled bitterly. If they agreed, it would mean handing over their country. 
But if they didn't agree, their family and friends would disappear from the earth forever in a few minutes. As a wedding house. Cousin, what are you saying? Qin Meng's expression froze. I'm not joking. Sun Hao Hao said seriously, I'm only in my 20s now, and I don't know how to spend over 20 million. I just bought a Mercedes. The rest of the money, I want to buy a house for you too. I know aunt and uncle look down on me for not having a house, I want you two to be together as soon as possible. With a house, aunt and uncle won't oppose you two anymore, right? Cousin, you can't. Sheen Meng's eyes turned red, this is your own money, how can we accept your house, we don't want it. Cousin, why are you so polite to me? Sun Hao Hao said indifferently, with a house, you can get married first, and then slowly make money in the future. If you two become rich in the future, you can compensate me with money. It's best to have a few billion, enough to crush me to death. Ha ha. Sun Hao Hao couldn't help but laugh. No, we don't want your house. Xin Meng was moved, but she really couldn't accept the other party's house. She shook her head vigorously to refuse. Suddenly, Xin Xin laughed, took the key, and said, Hao Hao, I didn't expect you to be so loyal. We've only known each other for a few days, and you're willing to buy a house for someone else. That's right. Sun Hao Hao said somewhat disdainfully, I actually quite dislike those snobbish people. Aunt said a lot of bad things about you that day, which made me angry. Now that you also have a house worth millions, take cousin back with you. I think aunt still has something to say. Well, I think that's a good idea. Shin Chen agreed. Xin Meng was a little unwilling and said, Shin Chen, you shouldn't do this. This is my cousin's money. We can't. It's okay, cousin. You can stay here for now. With the current increase in property value, I'll consider it an investment. When you buy a house in the future, you can sell this one and give me back the money, Sun Hao said with a smile. Qin Meng let out a sigh. It made sense. Buying a house wouldn't be a loss. She and Xin Chen worked hard to earn money, hoping to buy a house as soon as possible and then return the house to its owner. Let's go home first and talk to Auntie. I need to use the restroom. Where is it? Let me take you there, Xin Meng said, leading Sun Hao Hao away. After they left, Xin Shen muttered to himself. Ying Zhan walked up to him and said with a smile, Master, this Sun Hao Hao is quite interesting, actually willing to give away a house worth tens of millions. Ying Zhan, what do you think a friend is? Xin Chen asked. Ying Zhan replied, A friend is someone who helps you when you're in trouble, someone you can drink and cry with when you're wronged. I probably don't have such a person by my side. Xin Chen sighed. His background meant that not just anyone could be his friend. Ying Jun smiled and said, Master, you are noble and don't need friends. However, there are some things that even status and position cannot give you, especially a friend with whom you can share your heart. If there are standards for friends, Sun Hao Hao would be the top tier kind. You've only known each other for a few days, and he dares to give away a house worth tens of millions. Having such a friend is enough for a lifetime. Xin Chen nodded slightly, feeling a newfound respect for Sun Hao Hao. Although tens of millions meant nothing to him, the fact that Sun Hao Hao was willing to spend all his money for him and Qin Meng showed courage that not everyone possessed. Perhaps Sun Hao Hao will become my first friend, Xin Chen said lightly. As a token of appreciation, I'll give him shares in a few listed companies. Master, absolutely not, Ying Zhan said in a serious tone. Sun Hao Hao comes from an ordinary background, just a child from an average family. His vision and strength cannot handle a large amount of wealth. And if you reveal your identity directly, you will forever lose this friend. Xin Chan looked puzzled. Ying Zhan explained, Master, your existence is so extraordinary that even I feel like we are separated by the distance of a galaxy. And Sun Hao Hao and I are almost as far apart as Mars. The identity of the Eastern War Marshal, if revealed, would be enough to scare the richest person and make countless dignitaries bow before me. Sometimes, the disparity in status is too great for a chance to be together. Sun Hao Hao doesn't know your identity. He can talk and laugh with you as if you were just an ordinary friend. But once he knows that you are a godlike figure in this world, do you think Sun Hao Hao will still treat you as an ordinary person? 
Ying Zhan smiled and said, I have a small suggestion. Master, hide your identity and act as an ordinary person. This way, you can make more friends. Fine, Xin Shan reluctantly agreed with a nod. It turned out that making a friend was so troublesome, and he couldn't even reveal his own identity. Sun Hao Hao came out of the restroom and walked back with Qin Meng. Cousin, how did you meet my brother Shen? It was because of an accident, Qin Meng briefly explained how she had saved Shen Shen. After listening, Sun Hao Hao looked envious. A beauty saves a handsome guy, and then the handsome guy comes to offer himself to protect you for life. It sounds like a novel. I envy your love story so much. Qin Meng pouted, we have nothing to do with each other. Don't talk nonsense, cousin. Sun Hao Hao is indeed very envious. For so many years, he has not encountered a woman who can make his heart flutter. Women like Lu Fan Fan only like the vanity brought by money and fame. Both sides only have mutual needs, and after the fun, they go their separate ways. The two of them returned and got into the car with Xin Chen. Brother Shin, don't reveal the truth. Just say that you bought this house. Okay. Xin Chen nodded in agreement. Since he was going to be friends with Sun Hao Hao, he could only endure and not reveal his identity. The three of them returned home. Walking into the living room, Qin Ziming was reading the newspaper. Qin Meng was very nervous, her palms were sweaty, and she didn't know how to broach the subject. Uncle, my cousin has something to tell you. Sun Hao Hao spoke first, then immediately went upstairs and called Ying Yinjin to come down. Ying Yinjin was applying a face mask, crossing her legs, and said indifferently, if you have something to say, say it quickly. I'm busy. Xin Meng was still nervous and didn't know how to broach the subject. Xin Shen smiled and took the initiative to say, I bought a house and want to marry Qin Meng. He directly threw the keys on the table. After hearing this, He Yinjin had no reaction and coldly said, You want to marry my daughter with a suburban old house? Xin Ziming also thought the same, with a stern face, If you want to marry my daughter, you must have a large flat in the city center, a fully paid house of over 10 million. He knew that Shen Shen was a demolition household, but at most, he had a few million in cash and couldn't afford a house in the city center. Shen Shen said, this house should be similar to what you said, within the second ring road in the city center, 300 square meters. What? He Yinjin immediately tore off the face mask and said, this is impossible. How could you afford such an expensive house? Did your family get demolished again? Sort of. Xin Shen smiled, do you want to go and see? Let's go, I want to see how long you can keep up the act. He Yinjin and Xin Ziming immediately went upstairs to change clothes. Then the whole family went to see the house. In the car, Sun Hao smiled and said, when they see the house later, uncle and aunt will definitely be dumbfounded. I want to see what their reaction will be. Xin Meng felt embarrassed, her parents were so materialistic, they learned it from their grandparents. Half an hour later, they arrived at the Daijinjiwen community. This is a high-end community within the second ring road, master come to a place like this? Ying Zhan muttered, it seemed that Sun Hao had led the young master astray. He shook his head and followed them in. Two VIPs. The tall woman greeted them with a smile, and suddenly, the two female greeters screamed. Sun Hao immediately covered his ears, not knowing what the two were shouting about. So handsome. A female greeter fainted on the spot after seeing Shen Chen's appearance. Another person shivered all over, with a vacant look in their eyes, as if their soul had ascended to heaven. Sorry, it's my fault for being so handsome, Shen Chen said lightly. Sun Hao rolled his eyes and said, Bro, if I had even one thousandth of your handsomeness, I'd have girls flocking to me all the time. He went to get a sign and brought over a man to attend to them. Just as the two entered, Ying Zhan quickly walked in and said coldly, where's the boss? Let him come out and see me. The young master was here for a bath, and all unrelated personnel naturally had to be cleared out. Furthermore, Ying Zhan wanted to buy this place. The steward had given him a card before, without specifying the exact amount of money inside. But the steward had only said one thing, the money in this card is more than enough to buy several eastern provinces. 
One can imagine how large a sum of money was in this card. At this point, Sun Hao and Xin Chen were already soaking in the bathhouse. Xin Chen was somewhat awkward and unnatural. It was his first time bathing with so many people. Sun Hao laughed, bro, don't be nervous. Is this your first time coming to a place like this to bathe? Don't worry, this place won't eat people. We'll find a couple of beautiful girls for a massage later. I know, there are several top-notch ones here, with incredibly hot figures. Xinxin said, is this what friendship between men is like? Sun Hao laughed, there are many ways for men to enhance their friendship. But foot massages are definitely the fastest. With a splash, Sun Hao got up and walked towards the private room. As soon as they entered the room, a beautiful service woman came in with a tablet, allowing them to choose a masseuse. Xin Shen didn't choose, so Sun Hao chose one for him. Bro, put on a mask. Sun Hao said, cover up your good looks, or else I'm afraid the masseuse will go crazy over you. Hello, esteemed guest, I am masseuse number 47. Two tall and slender beauties walked in, with oval faces, fair and tender skin, and definitely above an eight in looks. Sun Hao skillfully lay down, starting with a foot massage. Bro, how is it? Pretty good. Sun Hao hinted to Xin Chen with his eyes. Xin Chen shrugged helplessly. At this moment, the masseuse poured two glasses of water, and Sun Hao picked one up casually, only to find that the water was hot. The glass of water fell and shattered on the ground. Sun Hao didn't care about the broken glass, and casually said, just put it on the bill for the glass. One glass costs 30,000. How much? Sun Hao thought he had misheard and repeated, you said this glass of water costs 30,000? Yes, the masseuse said, these glasses are a pair, imported by air from Europe. 30,000 is just the cost price. Are you kidding me? A broken glass at most costs 10 bucks. You're charging me 30,000, isn't that extortion? Sun Hao stood up angrily and said, bro, let's go, we're not getting the massage. What a rubbish place. If you want to leave, you have to pay for the glass first. A male manager walked in and sneered, 30,000 for one glass, cash or card? Sun Hao angrily said, do you think I'm a country bumpkin? I'll give you 50 at most, 30,000 is absolutely impossible. The manager laughed heartily, all our goods have a list. Making you pay 30,000 is no problem at all. I'll ask one last time, are you taking cash or card? Screw you. Sun Hao also had a fiery temper, he hadn't been in a fight since he was a kid. Now he was clearly being taken advantage of, how could he not be angry? In an instant, Sun Hao punched the manager in the face. You dare to hit me, you bastard? The manager was furious and blew a whistle, and suddenly more than 20 strong security guards rushed in. Seeing so many security guards, Sun Hao was a little intimidated and said, don't mess around, I'll call the police, believe it or not. You call, the manager said angrily. Don't you even bother to find out where our boss is in Dongzhou? You two ignorant things are asking for trouble. Beat him to death, and if he dies, let his family come and collect the body. Hearing this, Sun Hao's body went cold and he thought to himself, it's over. Suddenly, Sun Hao picked up a stool and threw it, then took advantage of the chaos among the security guards and ran out the door. Brother, what are you waiting for, run? Sun Hao turned around and saw Xin Xin standing still, and he became anxious. Xin Xin smiled faintly, why should he run? For the first time in his life, he was being extorted, and he found it interesting. I'll compensate you for the 30,000 for the cup, Xin Xin said. 30,000 is not enough. The manager was furious. You hit me, at least another 200,000. Without 230,000, you won't leave this place. Sun Hao said anxiously, Brother, don't talk to them, they are a group of thugs deliberately extorting us. If we don't run now, it will be too late. Xin Shen smiled, he had no intention of running. Once, facing tens of thousands of enemy troops, he never frowned. A few small ruffians couldn't scare him. Xin Shen shouted, Where is the challenge? The few security guards blocking the door were knocked out. Then, a burly voice stepped in, Young master, the challenge is here. 
The sudden appearance of the challenge immediately turned the situation around. Shen Shen said calmly, Are your men nearby? Yes, the challenge nodded. Shen Shen smiled and said, Then what are you waiting for, bring them over. The challenge immediately made a phone call. His men immediately drove a jeep and rushed to the entrance of the bath center. They kicked open the car door, and hundreds of soldiers in camouflage uniforms jumped out of the car with iron shovels. They surrounded the entire bath center. A tall and straight captain quickly walked to the challenge and stood upright. The challenge said coldly, from now on, no one can leave without my order. Yes. The captain received the order and called outside with a walkie-talkie. They were to guard the place and not let anyone leave. The manager was all ready. Stunned. Who were these people, to be able to call in the soldiers? But the manager quickly became calm. He sneered, so what if they were soldiers? The owner of this bath center was a prominent figure in Dongzhou. Not to mention in Dongzhou, even in the whole province, he had significant influence. The manager quickly called the big boss. At this moment, in a villa. The big boss of the bath center, Chang Yi, was playing cards with someone. His phone rang, and he put it on speaker. Chang Yi, there's trouble here, someone wants to smash the store. Who dares to cause trouble in my place? It's a group of soldiers, these idiots definitely don't know this is Chang Yi's territory. Hearing this, Chang Yi put down the cards and said, stabilize them first, I'll be back soon. Then, Chang Yi looked at his card partner and said, Oldly, some ignorant people are causing trouble in my place, as a leader in Dongzhou, you can't ignore it. Oldly laughed and said, Chang Yi, if you want my help, just say so. I'll go with you. After that, Oldly put on his uniform. There was a star on his shoulder. The two of them drove in a Mercedes and rushed over. The Mercedes arrived at the entrance of the bath center. It was already sealed off with numerous soldiers in camouflage standing guard, looking indifferent. No one was allowed to approach. After a glance, Lowley sneered coldly, look at their clothes, they all seem to be new recruits. I wonder which one of your subordinates is so blind as to dare to cause trouble in my territory. Lowley chuckled. Want a smoke? Xiangya handed over a cigarette, smiling and saying, brother, you're so young, and you've become a Lord John in Dongzhou. We can only look up to you. Who was that person just now, your friend? Looks very arrogant, actually dared to order Lord Zhang. Crack. With a crisp sound, Zhang Ye's wrist broke. Ah. My hand, my wrist is broken. Zhang Ye knelt on the ground, screaming in pain. Lord Zhang said coldly and mercilessly, What are you, dare to speak ill of my young master behind his back? Do you really think this matter will be settled like this? Extorting the young master is not something that can be resolved with just a few apologies. Smash it, smash it to pieces. Tear down this crappy bathhouse. Lord John shouted, and immediately, hundreds of people inside and outside the house started to act. They wielded hammers, axes, shovels, and even brought in excavators. They began to rumble and smash. Xiang Ye screamed in horror, don't tear it down, don't tear it down, this is my shop. Li Gu, Li Gu, you quickly make him stop, don't tear it down. Li Jingyi's forehead was covered in cold sweat. He was already in trouble himself, how could he have time to take care of others? He kicked Xiang Ye away and said coldly, stay away from me, don't fucking drag me down. Lord John, I'll call more people to come, let's tear it down together. In order to make up for his mistake, Li Jingyi had to actively choose to align himself with Lord Zhang. Only then could he make amends. When Xiang Ye heard this, he collapsed directly on the ground, his face turning pale. Rumble. The bathhouse, a decades-old establishment in Dongzhou, instantly became a ruin. Shocked the entire Dongzhou. Xin Shan returned to Di Jing Garden. As soon as he entered the house, he saw a group of people playing Pai Gao. Xin Ziming had just returned from drinking, not only did he not go to bed, but he also called a group of friends to play. Xin Meng was on the side, serving tea, pouring water, and cutting fruit. As for Hing Yinjin, she was in another room playing mahjong with her girlfriends. 
Shin Meng saw Shin Chen return and said with a grievance, Mom and Dad are really something, they have to mess up our new house. Throwing cigarette butts everywhere, it's heartbreaking. After all, it was someone else's gift to them, and they hadn't even moved in for a day, and it was already a mess. It was really frustrating. Shin Shen smiled and said, How about this, I'll buy a set next door, and let your parents live in this one. Shin Meng shook her head, indicating that it was fine. She knew that making money was not easy for anyone, and the houses here were so expensive. There was no need to spend all their money on buying a house. At that moment, Shin Ziming called Shin Shen over to play a few rounds. Shin Shen didn't understand how to play Pai Gao, as he had never encountered it before. Shin Meng complained, Dad, don't corrupt Shin Shen. Go on, if a man doesn't play Pai Gao, can he still be called a man? What do you know as a woman? Quick, place your bets. Let my future son-in-law be the banker. Shin Ziming was in high spirits and insisted on keeping Shin Shen there to play with him. Just as Qin Meng was about to say something, her phone rang, and she went to the kitchen to answer it. After the call, she called out to Shin Shen, Shin Shen, Ninging has had too much to drink and asked me to pick her up. Let's go. Okay. Shin Shen immediately handed the dice to Qin Ziming and said, I'm going out with Qin Meng to pick someone up. You guys go ahead and play. Qin Meng quickly pulled him out. Phew. Qin Meng stood at the door and let out a long breath, saying, Dad is really something, insisting on playing with you. What if he corrupts you? Once in the car, Qin Meng turned on the navigation and followed the route. After about half an hour, they arrived at the entrance of a bar. Ninging was squatting on the side of the road, vomiting, and a few male companions were taking advantage of the opportunity to pat her back and get handsy. Ninging, you have a good alcohol tolerance. Let's go inside for a drink. I don't want to drink anymore. My boyfriend is coming to pick me up. When Ningying saw Shin Shen, she stood up and leaned on him, saying, Sorry, everyone, I'm going home with my boyfriend. I'll drink with you another day. Several older men looked Shin Shen up and down, muttered something, and left grumbling. After they went inside, Ningying quickly pushed Shin Shen away and said to Qin Meng, I'm sorry, Qin Meng, I just had to get rid of them so I had your boyfriend pretend to be my boyfriend. It's okay. Qin Meng didn't mind, and she said, Ninging, why did you drink so much? Who were those people? They are executives from L'Oreal. Ninging said, I invited them out for a drink in order to secure their business. These old men just want to take advantage of me and won't discuss the contract. Ninging, you've been through a lot. Qin Meng quickly helped her into the car and took her home. The car was filled with the smell of alcohol, so Shin Shin opened the window, and the cold wind helped Ninging sober up a bit. She lit a cigarette and said, Shin Meng, when are you two planning to get married? Don't end up like me, single in your forties, and it's all over. She had only had one boyfriend before, but he cheated on her, and she never found another man. Some wounds are destined to never be forgotten. Shin Meng said softly, I want to work hard for another two years before getting married. I'm not in a rush. She wanted to earn money and give herself and her future children a happy family. Before getting married, she at least needed to have her own house. Soon, they brought Ninging back home, and the room was very large, at least 200 square meters. The decoration was also very high-end. But such a large room lacked warmth. The kitchen was covered in dust. Xin Meng took Ninging to the bedroom, and Xin Shen sat in the living room. There was a bank's overdue payment notice on the table, with a total debt of over 150,000, and it was already two months overdue. Xin Meng went to boil some hot water, grabbed a towel, and started taking care of Ninging. Xin Shen lay on the sofa, preparing to rest. Ding dong, someone knocked on the door. Xin Shen was curious who would come at this late hour. He went to open the door, and several men in suits were standing there. Is Miss Ninging here? We're from Don Zhou Bank. Debt collectors? Shin Shen said calmly, coming to collect debts in the middle of the night, is your bank short of money? So what? You owe the bank money, and you're still so brazen about not paying it back? The man said coldly, tomorrow is the deadline. If you don't have the money, we will take back the house. 
Leaving a notice, several people turned and left. Xin Shen took the notice into the bedroom and said, the bank is urging for payment. If we don't pay tomorrow, they will take the house. Ning Jia immediately sat up, although she had a splitting headache at the moment, she was particularly clear-headed. She directly tore up the notice and said coldly, take it if you want, I am already powerless. Ning Jia, what's going on? You have a high monthly income, how could you be in debt? Qin Meng asked in confusion. Ning Jia lit a cigarette and calmly said, my mother is sick and needs a large sum of money. I mortgaged the house and maxed out my credit cards. Everyone encounters various hardships in their lives. Kind people think that by doing good deeds, they can receive blessings from heaven. But unfortunately, no hardship will spare them. Ning Jia worked hard in Dongzhou, and with ten times the effort of others, she finally became the sales director. She also bought a house in Dongzhou. But her mother's serious illness instantly turned her more than 20 years of hard work into nothing. Ning Jia never mentioned this at the company. But tonight, she spoke these words in front of Qin Meng. Sorry for making you all laugh. Ning Jia quickly composed herself, self-mockingly smiled, as she couldn't take anything from the house anyway. Let the bank take it all away. Xin Meng's eyes were moist, as a woman herself, she knew how difficult Ning Jia had it. It's such a pity for such a good house to be taken away. Ning Jia, let's go to the bank together tomorrow and negotiate a repayment deadline with them. Xin Meng said. It's useless, I've already tried. Dongzhou Bank is very overbearing. Ning Jia shook her head, not wanting to bother with that. But Qin Meng still wanted to give it a try. Seeing her so upset, Ning Jia reluctantly agreed. I'll be the driver. Xin Chen smiled. Early the next morning, the three of them arrived at Dongzhou Bank. Dongzhou Bank's assets amount to around 120 billion renminbi, which is not small. Ning Jia found the branch manager, explained their purpose, and the branch manager took them to the lounge. They began a wait that lasted for more than half an hour. Forty minutes passed, and still no one came to attend to them. Ning Jia was losing patience, and said with a bitter smile, we've waited in vain, they won't come out to see us. The house is definitely not going to be saved. I'll go ask what's going on. Xin Meng left the lounge and found the branch manager who had received them earlier. Hello, we've been waiting for so long, when can we see your leader? The branch manager sneered and said, see who? Our bank president is out playing golf today, he doesn't have time to see you. Come back next week. Xin Meng urgently said, today, Ning Jia's house is going to be taken away. Can you call your bank president back? The branch manager laughed heartily, what's your status, do you have the qualification to order our bank president? Just as Qin Meng was about to continue to argue, the branch manager turned and left. Back in the lounge, Qin Meng said with a wry smile, Ning Jia, the bank president is not here at all, we've waited in vain. I knew it. Ning Jia's eyes were full of disappointment, her last bit of hope was completely shattered. Ning Jia, why don't we wait here, and wait for the bank president to come back? As long as we can see someone, we can definitely negotiate properly. Xin Meng's idea was good, but reality is often cruel. The branch manager pushed the door open and said coldly, What are you all still sitting here for, get out. Is this a place where you can stay? Just invited in, and now being scolded to leave, Xin Meng was furious. But they knew that as humble citizens, they couldn't afford to provoke the bank. Even if they were angry, they had to swallow it. As they left the bank, Xin Meng muttered, This is outrageous. These people only know how to kick someone when they're down, but never lend a helping hand. Shin Chun chuckled and said, that's just how society is. The richer the bank, the more willing they are to lend to you. When you're broke and need a loan, sorry, they don't do charity. Shin Meng rolled her eyes and said, why are you defending the bank? Shin Shen wasn't defending the bank, because he knew that's how society operates. He controlled seven or eight banks himself and each of his clients had a certain status. But if someone's assets suddenly changed, they would be removed as a client. That was one of the rules. If the bank lent money to everyone, it would have gone bankrupt long ago. 
Suddenly, Qin Meng thought of a friend and exclaimed, My classmates' parents seem to be high-ranking officials. Let's go ask them for help, maybe we can turn the situation around. With a renewed sense of determination, they left in the car. Xin Xin smiled, knowing that although Qin Meng was enthusiastic, she wouldn't be able to solve the problem without his help. Later, Xin Shan returned to the bank. The branch manager had just seen off a customer when he turned around and saw the same person had returned. His face darkened, and he spoke harshly, What are you doing back here? Didn't you hear that the bank president isn't here? Do you know who I am? Xin Chen asked. Why should I know you? Who do you think you are? Oh, you'll remember my name soon enough. And my name will be etched into your soul for eternity. So that you'll wake up from my nightmares every day and night. The branch manager sneered and scorned, Where did this idiot come from, a mental hospital? Security, security. Two security guards approached, wielding rubber batons and fierce expressions, ready to throw Shin Chun out. At that moment, an Audi parked outside the gate, and a cold-faced figure walked into the lobby. You're so bold. The figure slapped the branch manager and angrily said, Do you know who's standing in front of you? Get down on your knees. The security guards were intimidated and immediately knelt down. The branch manager, holding his face, shouted, You dare to assault me, you'll pay for this. He picked up the intercom and called all the security guards. Seven or eight security guards rushed in and surrounded Shin Chen and the figure. Young master, please have a seat and rest, the figure said, bringing a chair for Shin Chen to sit on. Then, with a cold gaze fixed on the branch manager, the figure said, You don't know your place, daring to act. Arrogantly in front of me. Then, with a stump, the floor cracked. In the next moment, a dozen trucks appeared outside, and soldiers in camouflage uniforms, wielding shovels, jumped out. They charged in, lined up neatly, saluted the figure, and looked at him with awe. This display left everyone dumbfounded. The branch manager trembled in fear. What were these soldiers doing here, and why were they appearing in this place? Smash! The figure didn't waste any words and coldly uttered a command. Bang! The group started smashing things, and the branch manager was petrified. Stop smashing, stop smashing, the branch manager panicked and tried to stop them, but instead, he was kicked to the ground, his head bleeding. Shin Shen suddenly stood up, looking down at the lobby manager from a high vantage point, his eyes cold as he said, from now on, for the next 50 years, you must remember my face. And my name, it will forever be your nightmare. Listen carefully, my name is... Shen Chen. The lobby manager lost all strength in an instant, collapsing to the ground, terrified. He finally realized that he had offended someone he shouldn't have. Soon, the entire bank was in shambles, with all the counters, desks, and even the blast-proof glass shattered. Just when the lobby manager thought it was over, the nightmare had only just begun. A fire broke out, burning the lounge fiercely. The lobby manager was terrified, wondering what these people were up to. This was outrageous. At that moment, the bank's president from Dongzhou finally arrived. What are you doing? The president roared in anger. Seeing the arrival of his savior, the lobby manager hurried over and said, President Zhang, quickly call for help. These bastards are too arrogant. Not only did they smash our place, but they also want to set it on fire. They must be caught and sent to prison. The lobby manager glanced at Shin Shen, seeing no change in his expression, and knew what to do. Then, he stepped forward, his expression cold as he said, You are the president of Dongzhou? Yes, who are you? My identity is not for you to know. Shin Shen said calmly, From now on, you are no longer the president. Get out immediately. President Zhang laughed heartily, Who the hell do you think you are? Whether I am the president or not is not for you to decide. He may not be able to decide, but I can. Shin Shin said calmly, On your way here, I have already fully acquired your Dongzhou Bank. From this moment on, I am the largest shareholder of Dongzhou Bank. Nonsense. President Zhang naturally did not believe it and angrily said, You think you can deceive me with some trickery, bullshit. Shin Shen was furious. 
Anyone who dared to insult him would at least have their entire family exterminated. Suddenly, more than 20 Mercedes-Benz cars appeared outside. Three or four dozen people got out of the cars in a panic. President Zhang took a closer look and was instantly dumbfounded, Li Dong's, Manager Wang, President Zhang. President? All these people who came were the top executives and major shareholders of Dongzhou Bank. How did they suddenly all come here? President Zhang quickly straightened his clothes and hurried over to greet them. However, he was forcefully pushed aside by these people. Then, under President Zhang's incredibly shocked gaze, all these top executives knelt in front of Shen Chen. Young Master Shen, we deserve to die. We arrived a few minutes late. It's all our fault for not managing properly and letting you be treated unfairly. President Zhang slapped himself and said tremblingly, Please, young Master Shen, let me die. I am willing to die to appease your anger. I am the same, I beg young Master Shen to kill me. I am willing to die at your hands. President Zhang was dumbfounded. He thought he was seeing things. These people were all top-notch big shots who could command the winds and rain. Now, they were kneeling in front of a young man in his twenties. And they were begging for death? My God! President Zhang's body began to convulse, his mind was not enough to comprehend. What kind of existence had he offended? A bunch of useless people, you don't even have the qualification to die at the hands of the young master. Shin Shen said coldly, all of you, commit seppuku in front of the young master. Your families can live. He was not joking, because the consequence of offending the young master was the extermination of nine generations. Young master, spare our families. We are willing to die to atone for our sins. A president took out a knife and was about to stab himself. Shen Shen said lightly, if you want to die, don't die here. If blood splashes on me, I'll blow up your ancestors' graves as well. Ying Zhan, I leave this to you. You handle it. Shin Chen got up and left. Ying Zhan pondered for a moment. When the young master left, his expression was indifferent, and his steps were light and brisk. He definitely didn't want to stay here for even a second, wanting these blind fools to die. But as soon as the young master left, there seemed to be a hint of a smile on his face. Could it be that the young master was testing his judgment? Ying Zhan clenched his fists, sure enough, the young master was testing how he should act. He should be able to understand the young master's intentions. Immediately, Ying Zhan picked up a long knife and said coldly, Young master is merciful, not wanting to take your lives, but each of you must leave an arm as compensation. This was his guess, and it should be the young master's true thoughts. In fact, Shen Chen had no thoughts at all. He just found this kind of thing too boring and left it to Ying Zhan to handle. It didn't matter what the other side did, even if they let those people go. Xin Meng brought Ning Jie to visit her classmate's home. This classmate's family was in finance. Her parents were tycoons in the finance industry and could definitely have a say in the Eastern Bank. Are you Qin Meng? Jean Man Man looked surprised as she looked at the woman who appeared in her home. She never expected that the beautiful woman in front of her would be the once ugliest Qin Meng in college. She doubted her own eyes. Qin Meng nodded and smiled, Man Man, it's me. It's been a long time since we've seen each other, right? When they were freshmen, the two of them were good friends, often eating and drinking together and even sharing a dormitory. But after Qin Meng's disfigurement, Jean Man Man deliberately distanced herself from her, and when they met later, she pretended not to know her. Jean Man Man was shocked to see that this woman was indeed Qin. Meng. What do you want from me? Jean Man Man asked. Jean Meng rubbed her hands and said somewhat embarrassedly, Well, I'm currently working at Meifu International, and my leader, Ning Jia, has encountered some problems. Isn't your family powerful in the finance industry? I want you to introduce me to the president of the Eastern Bank. My parents can certainly have a say, but why should I help you? What benefit do I get? Jean Man Man's smile was somewhat playful. Xin Meng smiled bitterly, we were good friends in college, we used to have a good time together, so it's only right for you to help me out. My parents can talk to the president, isn't that enough? D. 
Do you think personal relationships are so easily resolved? Jean Man Man snorted, I can't help you with your troubles. Jean Mang looked disappointed. Sorry to bother you. She turned and left. Wait. Although I can't help you, I know someone who definitely can. Jean Man Man said with a smile, the person I know is a top-notch young master in the East, and he is above everyone here. I'll take you to see him. If you can persuade him, it's not a problem to meet a bank president, let alone by that bank. Xin Meng's eyes gradually showed a hopeful look, Man Man, thank you so much. I knew you would help me. Century Hotel. Outside the Diamond Suite. Jean Man Man stood at the door and said, I'll go in and say hello to the young master first. You two wait outside. She knocked on the door and then went in. Qin Meng's heart was beating fast, and Ning Jia was even more nervous, can this person really help us? If Man Man says so, then it should be no problem. Qin Meng nodded slightly. After Jean Man Man entered the private room, a charming smile immediately appeared on her face as she quietly approached a man from behind. Covering the man's eyes, she giggled, guess who I am? The man's mouth curled into a mischievous smile, and he suddenly stood up, turning around and pushing Jean Man Man onto the sofa. Xiao Lang, I knew you were coming. Master misses you, hurry up. Master, don't be so anxious. I have something to tell you. Jean Man Man nestled in the man's arms, but his hands were not honest, she coquettishly said, blushing. Master. Tang Xiao, I brought you two top-notch beauties. One is in her twenties, still a young chick. The other is in her forties, with an explosive figure. You will definitely like these two. Tang Xiao immediately became interested, pinching her and saying with a smirk, you little troublemaker, if one is not enough, you call two sisters together. Tell me, do you want to buy a bag again? No. Jean Man Man hooked her hands around his neck, affectionately saying, I just want to please you, willingly serving the master. Tang Xiao excitedly slapped her twice, saying, Then what are you waiting for? Call them in, I can't wait any longer. Jean Man Man rolled her eyes and then walked to the door. Xin Meng, both of you come in, Tang Xiao has agreed to help you. Thank you. Xin Meng was pleasantly surprised, and Ning Jie also smiled. After the two entered the room, the environment inside made Qin Meng blush. Because the room's decorations and some props were all. Qin Meng immediately lowered her head and dared not look. Ning Jie, having seen the world, remained calm and walked in directly. Tang Xiao, let me introduce, this is my good classmate, Qin Meng. The other is her company's boss, Ning Jie. Top-notch, absolutely top-notch. Tang Xiao was drooling, one was as beautiful as a fairy, the other mature and flavorful, like a ripe peach. If he could have both at the same time, he would have no regrets in this life. He was trembling with excitement. Tang Xiao, my sisters have a small matter to ask for your help. Jean Man Man whispered, and Tang Xiao laughed heartily after hearing it, this is a small matter, I can handle it with just one phone call. He took out his phone and called a friend. Hello, it's me. Tang Yijie, can you help me contact Dongzhou Bank? Yes, that's right. After hanging up, Tang Yijie proudly said, I've made the arrangements, your matter should be settled by now. So fast? Ning Jie was a bit incredulous. Are you doubting my abilities? Tang Yijie's face darkened. Suddenly, Ning Jie's phone rang. Hello, Miss Ning, we are from Dongzhou Bank. Ning Jie gradually showed joy on her face, and after hanging up the phone, she excitedly said, Tang Xiao, thank you so much, the bank just informed me that they have waived my punishment and will not take back the house. Tang Yijie thought to himself, how could it be so fast? But the next moment, he burst into laughter, nonsense, in Dongzhou, I am the king, there is nothing I can't handle in Dongzhou. Man man, get dressed, I suddenly want to take the two beautiful ladies to see the horse race. Two beautiful ladies, there's a horse race later, let's go together for tea and some fun. Tang Yijie walked into another room, and Jean Man Man followed, asking, Tang Xiao, why do you suddenly want to go to the horse race? You don't understand anything. Tang Yijie disdainfully said, I owe a favor after making that call, I have to repay it. These two women are top-notch, I want to give them to a certain big shot, 
you understand, right? After that big shot is done playing, I can play with the leftovers. Jean Man Man giggled, Tang Xiao, you are really clever, no one else would have thought of that. She laughed so much that she trembled. Tang Yijia was aroused and immediately pressed Jean Man Man against the wall. Soon, there were some noises coming from the room. Ning Jia showed a look of embarrassment, made up an excuse, and took Qin Meng outside to wait. Ning Jia, Tang Xiao is really a good person. He helped you with the house. You finally saved your house. Qin Meng said joyfully. I also want to thank you. Ning Jia said, you helped me in life, and I will support you in work. Half an hour later, Tang Yijia walked out with Jean Man Man, and Jean Man Man's face was still flushed. Her legs were trembling. They arrived at the underground garage, where a Rolls Royce was parked. Tang Yijia boasted, I have bought a hundred luxury cars, as well as helicopters and yachts. I will take two beautiful women surfing and enjoying the wind another day. Xin Meng said thank you, but Ning Jia remained silent. About 40 minutes later, the Rolls Royce entered the garage of the racecourse. As soon as they got out of the car, several rich second generation men came over and greeted Tang Yijia. Tang Xiao, you're doing well, surrounded by so many beautiful women. That's a given. I never have fewer than four women. When I'm done playing, let's get together. This statement made people very uncomfortable. Ning Jia frowned slightly. Jean Man Man was used to it and even flirted with these rich second generation men. Xin Meng sent the location to Shen Shen and didn't hear what they were saying. After receiving the location, Shen Shen felt a bit strange. What was Qin Meng doing at the racecourse? Do you have a horse team? I don't. Shen Shen said, but I know someone whose horse team is very powerful in Dongzhou. I'll have him contact you immediately. Shortly after hanging up, a stranger called. Hello, I am a friend of General Zhang Shui. You are Master Shen, right? Shen Shen responded, I will be at the racecourse in a while and may need your horse team. Master Shen, rest assured, I am at your service. I am waiting for you near the racecourse. Okay, I'll be there soon. Shen Shen took the car keys and drove his Pagani Huayra to the racecourse. Ying Shan followed in an Audi but couldn't catch up. Master, please slow down. Ying Shan smiled bitterly. In the end, he had to put on the siren and chase after him. A limited edition top sports car, the Pagani Huayra, appeared at the entrance of the racecourse. All the bodyguards were immediately shocked. Make way, quickly make way. Even the owner of the Mercedes Maybach was violently driven away by the security guards. Then seven or eight security guards directed the parking and respectfully placed this world-class sports car in the VIP's top position. They also raised the cordon and had dedicated bodyguards guarding it. As soon as Shin Chan got out of the car with a calm face, a man with a square face quickly ran over with a humble smile, Are you Master Shen? Hello, I just spoke with you. You can call me Xiaoma. Shin Chen calmly asked, Xiaoma, my girlfriend should be here. Arrange a position with the best view for me. Master Shen, please rest assured, I have arranged everything properly. I'll take you there. Xiaoma made a gesture of invitation, and Shen Shen calmly walked ahead. Mr. Ma, hello. Said. Then let's bet two rounds. Whoever loses will drink this bottle of Remy Martin. Tang Yijie smirked. Okay. Shen Shen readily agreed. Tang Yijie laughed inwardly, he was sure to win, this waste of a person was in for a drinking session. Soon, Tang Yijie bet on number 10, and Shen Shen casually chose number 8. After placing their bets, Jean Man Man nestled in Tang Yijie's arms and giggled, number 10 is the most powerful racehorse under Tang Xiao, it has won several championships before. Little handsome guy, you probably won't be able to escape from this bottle of Remy Martin. Hearing this, the first person to worry was Qin Meng, she shook Shen Shen's arm, her eyes full of concern. Ning Jie sighed, this kid was still too young, falling for Tang Yijie's scheme. Shen Shen always had a faint smile on his face and said, I have never lost at anything I do, I feel the same this time. I'll make you beg for mercy later. Tang Yijie laughed heartily. Bang! 
The starting gun went off, the barriers rose, and twelve fast horses galloped away. The riders sat on the horses, bent over, maintaining a fighting posture. One fast horse after another raced past hundreds of meters. Number 10 had been leading from the start, seemingly having the victory in hand. Tang Yijie's smile gradually became unrestrained, and Jean Manman was also convinced that Tang Xiao would win. But just after the halfway mark, a sudden change occurred. The previously lagging number 8 suddenly burst with powerful force, surpassing the other riders one by one. In the blink of an eye, it was neck and neck with number 10. But in less than two seconds, number 8 erupted like a volcano, instantly surpassing number 10 and leading by a large margin. In the end, number 8 smoothly crossed the finish line first. Achieving victory. Tang Yijie's expression suddenly froze. How was this possible? Tang Yijie was full of disbelief, he had actually lost. And he lost to someone who knew nothing. In front of so many beautiful women. Tang Xiao, that guy actually won against you by luck. Jean Nanman's mouth was slightly agape, very shocked. Tang Yijie's face was extremely gloomy, his resentful gaze fixed on Shen Chen, already thinking of killing him. Tang Xiao, you lost, drink this bottle. Shen Chen said lightly. Tang Yijie smiled wryly, I'll accept my defeat, of course I have to drink it all. He picked up the bottle and gulped it down. Although he almost vomited after drinking the whole bottle, Tang Yijie forced himself to hold it in. Amazing, Tang Xiao is amazing. Jean Manman clapped her hands and deliberately praised him, being able to drink a whole bottle of strong liquor in one go, Tang Xiao is definitely the god of wine. Ming Jie just chuckled lightly, this guy was just showing off. She had been drinking for so many years, she could tell at a glance whether someone could handle their alcohol. Tang Yijie got up and went to the restroom, where he vomited loudly. While vomiting, he cursed Chen Chen with a sweet voice. Afterwards, Tang Yijie returned to the box as if nothing had happened. The second round of the competition was about to begin. Tang Yijie sneered, he still had his last trump card, he had to win once and regain his lost face. Brother, do you want to bet again? Tang Yijie smiled and said, this time, we each bet one million. And whoever loses will have to lie on the ground and bark like a dog, and then run around the racecourse three times. Okay. Xin Chen smiled slightly and nodded in agreement. Xin Meng was shocked and quickly pulled his sleeve, saying, Don't play so big, it's embarrassing to bark like a dog if you lose. When have I ever lost? Xin Chen's smile was full of confidence, he had never experienced defeat in his life. He really wanted to taste what failure felt like. You're playing so big, it won't end well later. Ning Jie said calmly. She did not stop him, because deep down, she still wanted to see this kind of bet once. At this time, the waiter came in and respectfully said, Mr. Tang, your horse is ready, please inspect it. Let's go. Tang Yijie showed a proud look and said, this is my ace in the hole. I raised it from a young age and it has won me countless championships. Qin Meng looked surprised and said, Shen Shen, he actually has his own horse, so are we destined to lose? Not necessarily. Xin Chen remained confident and indifferent. The group arrived at the preparation area, where there was a pure white horse, tall and elegant. Standing in front of people, it deliberately raised its head, showing a proud demeanor. Is this horse the legendary Lu? Ning Jia exclaimed. I didn't expect this beauty to be knowledgeable. Tang Yijie said proudly, this is indeed a descendant of Lu. Its first ancestor was the Mount of Lu Bei, the founder of the Shu Kingdom. This horse's bloodline is very pure, and thousands of years of breeding have made it faster than its ancestors. Its speed has broken many world records. I can even say that there is no horse faster than it in the world. Wow! Jean Manman looked at Tang Yijie with admiration. She had known Tang Yijie for many years, but this was the first time she had seen the Lu horse. Xin Meng's eyes were blank. Although she didn't understand horses, this one in front of her felt different. It was clearly a strong one. Ning Jie glanced at Xin Chen and thought that he must be nervous facing such a formidable opponent. However, she was very disappointed. Xin Chen's face remained unchanged, with that calm and composed look, as if everything was under control. 
she was shocked in her heart. Did this guy still have the strength to compete with Tang Yijie? Suddenly, Shen Shen spoke, since Mr. Tang likes horse racing so much, he must be very capable himself. How about this, the two of us have a horse riding competition, what do you think? Okay, I'll fulfill your wish. Tang Yijie agreed without hesitation. With Lu in his hands, he was guaranteed to win no matter what. I'll go prepare first. Shen Shen turned and left. Qin Meng followed and asked, Shen Shen, can you win? Should we just admit defeat? Shen Shen smiled, I have never admitted defeat in my life. Do you think I would lose to someone like him? As soon as he finished speaking, a small horse came over respectfully, leading another horse. Master Shen, this is a rare blood-sweating horse in the world. The horse in his hand was strong and slender, with bright eyes. It was proud and difficult to tame, usually requiring eight or nine people to control it. But at this moment, the blood-sweating horse walked up to Shen Chen and actively extended its head for him to stroke. The small horse was amazed, it's incredible. This blood-sweating horse has been unruly since birth, and even the world's best trainers have not been able to tame it. I have spent millions, but I have not been able to make it submit to me, it would rather die than submit. But now, it actually recognizes Master Shin as its master. Master Shin, truly a remarkable person of the present age. As the words fell, the blood-sweating horse suddenly raised its front hooves and let out a loud neigh. It instantly broke free from the reins and leaped over the railing. Quick, chase it, don't let it escape. The small horse shouted. Immediately, twenty or thirty people went to chase the horse. The blood-sweating horse ran around the lawn, swift as the wind, like a red lightning bolt, playing tricks on the dozens of people. Just as people were about to use electric prods to bring it down, Shen Shen suddenly whistled. As the whistle sounded, the blood-sweating horse abruptly stopped and quickly charged towards Shen Shen. Master Shen, be careful! Quick, protect Master Shen! Little Ma shouted in horror. As the horse rushed over, Shen Shen raised his hand. In an instant, the sweating blood horse abruptly stopped right beside him. It even lowered its head, allowing Shen Shen to stroke it. Shen Shen patted the horse's head, then leaped onto its back. Let's go! The sweating blood horse snorted, and with a shake of its body, it shot out like an arrow. Its body, red as charcoal, galloped freely on the grass, startling the numerous racehorses in the stable. After a few warm-up laps, the sweating blood horse was covered in sweat, red like a blazing fire. Shen Shen sat upright on its back, exuding a domineering aura. In a trance, it seemed like an invincible war god, scrutinizing his subjects. Little Ma trembled and couldn't help but kneel under this oppressive aura. Tang Xiao, we will definitely win this time, right? Jean Man Man nestled in his arms, her eyes unfocused. Tang Yijia patted her twice and sneered, what can that waste used to win against me? Mine is a purebred, the only one in the world. I could sit on it casually and still leave him far behind. Ha ha. Jean Man Man laughed, if he loses, he has to bark like a dog and run three laps around the racetrack. Tang Yijie laughed heartily, if he loses, he deserves it. What is he? He's not even worthy to compete with me. But I'm not heartless. If he refuses to bark like a dog, then he'll have to give me the woman for a few days. Tang Yijie's eyes were filled with greed. He coveted Qin Meng and that stubborn sister, swearing to obtain both women. Jean Man Man hooked her arms around Tang Yijie's neck and coquettishly said, Tang Xiao, do you need me to prepare medicine for you? I'm worried you won't be able to perform. You're talking nonsense. Tang Yijie immediately pressed her onto the sofa, grinning, how dare you say I can't perform? I'll make you call me daddy right away. Unmentionable sounds came from the room. The race was about to start in an hour, and Shen Shen had already established a good rapport with the sweating blood horse. His victory should be without any surprises. Shen Shen opened a bottle of Dragon's Eye Vodka, worth $8 million. A little drink would enhance his writing experience. He poured a glass for Qin Meng, who took a sip and found it not to her liking. I feel like sweet wine from the supermarket tastes better. Qin Meng seemed a bit disdainful. 
Little Ma, standing nearby, trembled in fear. Sweet wine? Little Ma felt bitter, this was the most expensive wine in the world, worth several million dollars per bottle. Just this bottle alone could buy a house in Beijing, Shanghai, or Guangzhou. Countless wealthy businessmen around the world would never have the chance to buy it. He felt that he had not lived in vain to be able to drink such wine in his lifetime. If you don't like it, then we'll get some sweet wine. Shinshen said, Little Ma, go get some good sweet wine and throw away this bottle. Little Ma's heart trembled. He had just taken a sip of wine worth tens of millions and now it was going to be thrown away? He really didn't understand the world of the top young masters. As he left the box, Little Ma immediately ordered his subordinates to prepare sweet wine. Suddenly, a voice called out to him. General Ma, what a coincidence, you're here too. General Ma turned around and frowned slightly, it's General LV, what are you doing here? General Ma, you owe me money that you can't repay. This racetrack is now mine. General LV smiled insincerely, I'm here to take over the racetrack today. General Ma, you won't object, will you? General Ma's face instantly darkened. He had been set up before, played cards with someone, and lost 10 billion. At that time, he was in a daze and used this racetrack as collateral. He took a deep breath and said, I'm willing to admit defeat. I'll give you the racetrack, but not now. There is a distinguished guest waiting for me to serve inside. After this guest leaves, we will proceed with the formalities. Mr. LV glanced at the private room and smiled, it looks like another big shot from the province has come to play. Okay, I'll wait for you. He turned and left. After walking away, Mr. LV spoke, go, investigate the identity of the people in the private room. I want to see who is in there. His subordinate left and returned ten minutes later, handing over the information. Shin Chan, an ordinary student at Dongzhou University, with an unknown background, likely a demolition household? After reading this information, Mr. LV sneered. A mere demolition household had managed to scare Ma Wei into that state. Ridiculous. Mr. LV then walked directly to the private room and pushed the door open. Shin Shen thought it was Xiao Ma returning and looked up to see a stranger. You're in the wrong room, get out. Shin Shen said bluntly. It's you who should get out. Mr. LV said coldly, I've taken a liking to this place, so you better leave immediately. At that moment, Ma Wei returned with sweet wine and was shocked, LV. Meng, what are you doing? Get out. LV Meng sneered, Ma Wei, you're really useless, serving a demolition household, considering you were once one of the top ten wealthy businessmen in Dongzhou. Now you fall into such a state. Ma Wei was furious, don't cause trouble for me. You have no idea who he is. Until you've caused serious consequences, get out immediately. LV Meng laughed, this racecourse will soon be mine. What can you do if I don't leave? If you don't leave, then you'll die. Shin Shen's voice was calm. Shin Meng was in the restroom and didn't want to be scared by these trash when they returned. What did you say, you want me to die? LV Meng was stunned. I accept the challenge. Shin Shen called out. No one responded. Idiot, who else do you want to call? It's just us here. LV Meng sneered. Shin Shen shook his head, since there's no one to accept the challenge, I'll do it myself. He stepped forward, and just as LV Meng was about to speak, there was a bang as Shin Shen kicked and shattered his bladder. Then, Shin Shen delivered a punch to his chest, with several crisp sounds of broken ribs. Finally, Shin Shen used his elbow to strike LV Meng's lungs, the bones piercing through, and he spat out a mouthful of blood. LV Meng's body made a large dent in the ground, and he spat out blood. He wouldn't live for another five minutes. Xiao Ma, get him out. Shin Chen said calmly. Ma Wei shuddered, his throat rolling. This young master Shin was too ruthless to have beaten LV Meng into this state. He had caused a huge trouble. Quick, someone take Mr. LV to the hospital. Ma Wei hurriedly instructed the security to take the still living LV Meng away. After everyone left, Xin Meng returned from the restroom. Ha, huh, Shin Shen, what's that on your hands, it's red. 
It's nothing, just red wine. Shen Chen smiled. Xin Meng didn't think much of it and said, The race is about to start, let's go and get ready. Let's go. City Hospital. LV Meng was brought in by an ambulance and died immediately. There was no chance for resuscitation. With LV Meng's death, Ma Wei's heart was in turmoil. He shakily dialed the number of Ying Zhan. Zhan. General Zhan, the young master you asked me to protect, he killed someone. Killed someone? Are you sure it's only one? Ying Zhan asked. Yes, the dead person is LV Meng, one of the top 10 wealthy businessmen in Dongzhou. Ying Zhan didn't catch the rest of the conversation clearly and muttered to himself, the young master is so kind today, only killed one person. General Zhan, what did you say? Ma Wei was suddenly frightened. Challenged lightly said, I will rush over to handle it later, continue to send people to protect that young master. When challenged was ready to rush to the racecourse. At this moment, the racecourse was already extremely lively. Xin Chen and Tang Yijie, the one-on-one -on -one competition, is about to begin. The audience seats were full of people, all eagerly looking on. Gate number one opened, amidst the cheers of the crowd, Tang Yijie rode his horse, head held high, proudly arrived at the starting position. Young Master Tang, Young Master Tang. A group of enthusiastic fans began to cheer. There were also dozens of girls screaming wildly. Hired fans, so fake, Qin Meng whispered. Ning Jie smiled, he also felt like arranged actors, acting too fake. Then gate number two opened. A fiery red steed appeared, Xin Chen's expression was calm, appearing unhurried. The whole scene fell silent instantly. Tang Yijie glanced sideways, sneering in his heart. The audience's eyes were sharp, they welcomed him so warmly as soon as he appeared. Obviously, they liked him more. Tang Yijie smiled and waved to his friends and the audience, ready to take a couple of photos. To keep as a memento of his championship. But soon, Tang Yijie was severely slapped in the face. Swish. The people in the audience seats all stood up in unison, as if it had been prearranged. Handsome. So cool. I have never seen such a noble young master. This person is extraordinary, wow, I want to be his sworn brother. Look at that horse. Several referees couldn't help but stand up, their old faces in shock, it's unbelievable, that horse seems to be bleeding. You're talking nonsense, that's not blood, that's sweat. It's a true sweat blood horse. Countless people were shocked. The next moment, the explosive cheers from the entire audience instantly drowned out everything. The visible sound waves spread out in circles. Although there were only a few thousand people at the scene, it felt like a concert with a hundred thousand people. The momentum completely overwhelmed Tang Yijie, pressing him down and rubbing hard. Tang Yijie's face was extremely ugly, these useless people, they were clearly the actors he hired. Now they had actually betrayed him. He glared fiercely at Jean Man Man, after the race, you'll see. Jean Man Man trembled. At this time, several referees were all in position, waiting for the signal. Shen Shen's face was very calm, he had never had a defeat in his life, and this time was no different. Of course, if he really lost, he wouldn't be angry. Instead, he would thank Tang Yijie. Thank the other party for letting him taste the taste of failure. Come on, you must win. Xin Meng's eyes were filled with anticipation and nervousness. Ning Jie lit a cigarette and said lightly, I hope he can win. If he loses, he'll have to learn to bark like a dog. Snap. The starting gun suddenly went off, and in an instant, Tang Yijie's horse Lu rushed out like the wind. After running out for tens of meters, Xin Chen's sweatblood horse was still leisurely walking in place. Let you run the first 300 meters. Xin Chen smiled confidently. Ah, why isn't Xin Chen running, what is he doing? Qin Meng suddenly became anxious. Ning Jie frowned, what is this kid up to, don't be careless. Ah, huh? I've already won. Tang Yijie was overjoyed, he had already left that waste far behind, he almost had no chance of losing. Swish. Suddenly, a gust of wind swept by. Tang Yijie tidied up his messy hair, Feeling puzzled, was it just a gust of wind? Why was it red? 
Young Master Tang, hurry up, he's overtaking you. Jean Man Man shouted loudly. What? Tang Yijie heard this and turned his head abruptly, only to see a red storm had already run ahead of him. That shadow was none other than the sweat-blooded horse ridden by Shen Chen. Ah! Tang Yijie exclaimed, how was this possible? He was clearly in the lead just now, how could he suddenly be left behind? Go! Go! Tang Yijie desperately tried to catch up, but although his horse was known as the fastest in the wind, compared to the unique sweat-blooded horse, it could only rank second. Shen Chen's horse had already reached the second lap and overtaken Tang Yijie from behind. Tang Yijie panicked and shouted on the horse's back. Suddenly, Tang Yijie raised his whip to attack Shen Chen. Be careful! Qin Meng exclaimed. Shen Chen had long known that this despicable person would not behave, so he leaned forward to dodge the whip. Then, he slightly pulled the reins to slow down the horse, waiting for Tang Yijie to overtake. After Tang Yijie overtook, he was still pleased, thinking he had a chance to turn the tables. But the next moment, he felt a sharp pain in his back. With a crack, Shen Chen's whip fiercely struck Tang Yijie's back. After the first strike, he continued to swing the second whip, hitting the horse. The horse, under attack, actually sped up. Tang Yijie was scared and sweating profusely, desperately pulling the reins to slow down, but the horse ran forward uncontrollably. Crack! After Shen Chen struck for the third time, the horse neighed and leaped over the barrier, crashing into the spectator stands with a loud bang. The wooden boards of the stands exploded, and the horse's huge body collapsed with a rumble. Tang Yijie screamed as he was thrown off the horse. With several bangs, his body hit the referee's table and the decorations behind him. The sound of countless sparks from the light wires filled the air, and Tang Yijie was electrocuted, spitting out blood. After a while, Tang Yijie struggled to get up. He was covered in soot, his clothes torn, and his hair looked like it had been struck by lightning, his face blackened. He looked like a clown on stage. The audience below couldn't help but burst into laughter. Shin Chen did not continue to run the remaining half lap, because he had already won. Riding the sweat-blooded horse, Shin Chen came over and looked down at Tang Yijie. He didn't say a word, just gave an indifferent glance and then turned away. Tang Yijie was furious, clenching his fists tightly, just you wait and see. Oh, by the way, Shin Chen, who was about to leave, turned back and said indifferently, we made a bet, I almost forgot. The loser has to bark like a dog and then walk three laps on the track. Wasn't that what you said? Tang Yijie's face instantly turned pale, are you going to be ruthless? I advise you to leave room for yourself, otherwise. Otherwise what? Shin Shen said indifferently, are you going to threaten me, or kill me? Tang Yijie was about to burst into a rage, but the words stuck in his throat. Kid, I'll remember you, just you wait. Naturally, Tang Yijie refused to bark like a dog and left in a fit of anger and shame. You will bark like a dog, I believe you can do it, Shin Shen said calmly. Shin Shen, we won, Xin Meng ran over excitedly. As expected, Shin Shen smiled, not mentioning his riding skills that won him the championship. Just with this sweat-blooded horse, he could secure a victory. It was just a pity that he didn't get to taste the feeling of failure this time. He really wanted someone to defeat him, to let him experience what it felt like to fail. Master Shen, congratulations, Shama quickly brought the trophy over to congratulate him, and the referees also came over with flowers. Shin Shen didn't like this kind of grand praise and awards, so he turned and left. The trophy, the trophy wasn't taken. Xin Meng took the trophy for Shin Shen and hurriedly chased after him. After returning to the box, Shin Shen opened a bottle of Evian and drank half of it in one gulp. Xin Meng followed with the trophy, panting and said, Why don't you want the trophy? I don't need this to prove myself, Shin Shen calmly replied. I've won trophies since I was young, enough to fill several villas. I'm tired of this thing. Oomph, if you don't want it, then I'll keep it for you. Xin Meng happily accepted the trophy and placed it in her room to look at when she had time. At this time, Ying Zhan walked in, about to speak, but then closed his mouth. Coincidentally, Xin Meng had to leave for something. Ying Zhan spoke, young master, the one at the hospital has passed away without being rescued. Oh, you mean LV Meng, 
Shinshin said calmly. Originally, he didn't even have a chance to leave this place, but I softened my heart a bit. Ying Zhan smiled and said, it's the same. That guy didn't even wear an oxygen mask and went straight to see the king of hell. After Ma Wei called me, I rushed over immediately. Young master, I'll protect you and help you leave later. I'm afraid there might be retaliation. Shen Shen smiled, he wasn't afraid of retaliation at all. If someone wanted to kill him, they could just come. He promised that as long as it didn't harm his loved ones, he wouldn't impulsively use nuclear weapons. Young master, Ma Wei lost this racecourse, it might be taken away. In order to have you come here for exercise in the future, I decided privately to buy this racecourse. Ying Zhan cautiously said, afraid of being blamed for spending money recklessly. Xin Xin didn't blame him at all, he said, let's renovate it, and I'll bring Qin Meng here to relax when there's nothing to do. Thank you for your support, young master, Ying Zhan said with a smile. Suddenly, Xin Chen's phone rang. He looked at the number and was surprised, big sister, you actually thought of calling me. Hello, big sister, have you returned to the country? Just returned, haven't landed yet. Come to the airport to pick me up, I want to see you. Shinshen smiled, big sister, I'm not at home, I'm in Dongzhou. Why did you go to Dongzhou, to find a girlfriend? Shin Shuning smiled and said, I want to meet your girlfriend, ask her to come to the airport. Big sister, forget it, your aura is too strong, I'm afraid you'll scare her. I'll go pick you up myself. You have the plane change its route, and I'll come over immediately. Shin Shen left the racecourse, and Ying Zhan was about to prepare to drive, but he stopped. I'm going to pick up my big sister, I'll drive myself. Shin Shen got into a Mercedes and stepped on the gas to leave. Follow the young master. Ying Zhan got into an Audi and followed closely. On the way to the airport, Shin Shen called Qin Meng in advance and asked her to wait. Young master, should we block the road? It's a bit congested today. Ying Zhan asked on the phone. No need, my big sister still needs some time. Let me feel the hustle and bustle of the world for a while. Shin Shen had been tired of roadblocks and no fly days. He wanted to have more contact with ordinary people and try to be more down to earth. At the traffic light ahead, Shin Shen slowly stopped. He smiled, perhaps this was the first time he had waited for a traffic light, it felt very strange. Suddenly, a black motorcycle rider appeared and stopped beside him. The rider glanced over and reached into his pocket. Shin Shen frowned, sensing something was wrong. The next moment, the rider suddenly pulled out a gun and fired several shots at the driver's seat. After firing the shots, the rider immediately fled. Young master! Ying Zhan exclaimed and rushed over from the car. Are you okay, young master? I'm fine. Shin Shen's face was calm, the glasses bulletproof the bullets didn't penetrate. Although he was not injured, Ying Zhan was scared out of his wits. At that moment, the butler called. Ying Zhan, what are you doing? Has the young master been in an accident? The butler's reprimand made Ying Zhan break out in a cold sweat, and he trembled as he said, I'm sorry, sir. There was a sudden attack earlier, but fortunately the young master is unharmed. The butler was furious, kneel down and await your death. Dare to let a hair on the young master's head fall, and I will destroy your entire family. I'm sorry. Ying Zhan hurriedly apologized, knowing he should not have made such a mistake. This has nothing to do with you, you don't need to blame yourself, Shin Shin smiled. It's been a long time since I've experienced the feeling of being assassinated. That assassin actually dares to oppose the heavens. Ying Zhan clenched his fists tightly and gritted his teeth, young master, please rest assured. I will definitely find the mastermind behind the scenes and tear them to pieces. 10,000 meters in the sky, on a private plane. Shin Shunning skillfully operated the computer, and with a few keystrokes, billions of dollars worth of stocks were instantly sold off. One second later, dozens of top global companies were left heavily in debt. This time, three banks have been ruined again. It's so boring. These people can't play with me at all. Shin Shunning stretched lazily, her proud figure on full display. Suddenly, her phone rang. 
Miss, I have something to report. The butler spoke politely, a few minutes ago, the young master was assassinated in the eastern province. What did you say? Shin Shunning's eyes flashed with cold light, how are you managing my brother, old butler? Are you an old bone who doesn't want to enjoy your later years? The butler smiled bitterly, I'm sorry, Mississippi. It's my fault for being careless, but fortunately, the young master was not injured. I have already sent someone to capture that eastern province warlord and will hand him over to the miss for punishment. Shin Shunning said coldly, I don't care who he is, or what background they have. If they dare to harm my brother, they are against the Shin family. Against the gods of the entire earth. Hanging up the phone, Shin Shunning immediately sat down and took control of the computer again. She directly accessed three military satellites and began to search for all the information in the eastern province. Her fingers flew across the keyboard, her eyes growing colder and colder. Snap! The last key was pressed, and all the information about the assassin was displayed. Shin Shunning's tone was chilling, change course, fly directly to the southeastern war zone, notify the 1201 special forces, enter level 3 combat readiness, and all of them will follow my orders. Dare to harm my brother, and I will crush you to pieces, making you regret coming into this world. The runway was cleared, and countless fighter jets made way. Then, a private plane landed in a military stronghold. Shin Shunning disembarked from the plane under the escort of bodyguards. A group of high-ranking officials with stars on their shoulders hurried over. Miss Shin, welcome to guide us. An elderly man with three stars took the initiative to shake hands. Shin Shunning's eyes were icy, Lao Chen, do you know that my brother was assassinated in the eastern province? What? Lao Chen's face changed dramatically, and he trembled, Miss, what are you saying? When did the young master get assassinated? Just now. Shin Shunning said coldly, an ignorant person dared to harm my brother, and I have not yet informed the Shin family. Hearing this, Lao Chen broke out in a cold sweat and trembled, Miss, please keep it a secret for now and don't tell the old master of the Shin family. I will do my best to catch the culprit and give an explanation to Miss Shin and the Shin family. Lao Chen's back instantly turned cold, and his scalp tingled. If the Shin family found out about this, not only would they have to take off their clothes, but they would also be thrown into the dungeon and directly sentenced to death. I am very angry right now and have no time to listen to any of your explanations. Shin Shunning said coldly, notify the operations team to prepare DF-21, DF-31, see God number 6, and number 11 anti-aircraft missiles. I want to personally send them to see the King of Hell. Old Chen stood straight and saluted in response. Immediately, all personnel in the training area were urgently recalled, and hundreds of tanks and armored vehicles were mobilized. Three cruise fighter jets took off and entered level 1 patrol status. Beyond Earth, three previously stationary satellites simultaneously activated at this moment. In a certain country, find out what's going on, how did the eastern country suddenly activate the standby war satellites? On a certain island, quick. Something big is happening, notify the members of parliament. The mainland is going to attack us. In a certain developed country, oh my god, is the mainland going to overturn us? Quickly notify the Pentagon. Zoom. Two drones entered patrol status. Shin Shu Ning rode in a special warfare vehicle commanded by a three-star old Chen. With over 30,000 frontline troops, they advanced all the way. Such a huge commotion alarmed countless people. Inside a private estate, seven or eight people sat, each of them either wealthy or noble. On the ground, there was a stretcher with a body on it, the body not yet completely cold. This body naturally belonged to the just-deceased L.V. Mang. I can't believe it, old L.V. actually died like this. Zhang Wei actually dared to kill old L.V., is he crazy? Speaking was a 300-pound man, adorned with gold jewelry, exuding a strong nouveau riche aura. I heard that the one who killed old L.V. is a young man in his 20s. That young man is Zhang Wei's nephew, even if Shang. Wei dies, he must protect him. No, I heard that the one who acted was a certain young master from the province. You're all wrong. A tall, thin man smoking a cigar with a soft and slightly hoarse voice said, the one who killed old LV is a young man. 
That young man is from another province and has a company with a hundred billion scale in the local area. As soon as the words fell, the rest of the people immediately showed anger. A mere hundred billion, daring to be so lawless. LV Meng is one of the top ten wealthy merchants in the eastern province, on par with us. A waste from out of town dares to challenge our authority, he must die. The 300 pound man sneered, then we'll vote to decide who will avenge old LV. Someone must be held responsible for old LV's death, both Zhang Wei and that young man must die. Cut off Zhang Wei's head and put it in a pickling jar, take it out and kick it a few times when there's nothing to do. That young man, cut him into five pieces and feed him to the sharks for ten days. His woman and family, all sold to Africa as maids. I agree with Mr. Shang's words. A man with tattoos on his arm said calmly, Zhang Wei and his son will die tonight, that waste from out of town, anyone related to him by blood will not be spared. The rest of the people in the room also nodded in satisfaction. This is the ability of the top ten wealthy merchants in the eastern province. They can command the winds and rain in the eastern province, and no one dares to provoke them. Bang! The door suddenly burst open. Are you discussing how to kill my brother? You old men really don't know your own limits. A mere mortal dares to oppose a god. He he. Who's outside? The people inside the room turned around in shock. Xin Shu Ning didn't know when he had entered. The bodyguards stationed outside the door were all lying on the ground at this point. Unnoticed, he had entered. The 300-pound fat man slammed the table and angrily shouted, Who are you? Do you know where this is? Bang! A bullet flew in from outside and hit the fat man's stomach directly. Although there was a lot of fat on his stomach, the fat man still felt intense pain. He couldn't help but scream in agony. Speak to my young lady, be polite. A man with two stars on his shoulder, his voice booming, shouted, General? Several people in the room shrank in fear. The man speaking was extraordinary, dressed in military uniform, obviously a big shot in the local military. Such a big shot, yet he was so polite to a woman. Who was this woman? Who sent someone to assassinate my brother? Shin Shuning's voice was cold. We don't know who you are, maybe there's a misunderstanding. Bang! A bullet hit the man's knee. The man instantly knelt on the ground, clutching his knee in agony and screaming. I'll ask again, who sent someone to assassinate my brother? Shin Shuning asked calmly. Her presence and momentum overshadowed everything, shocking the people in the room who had never seen such a powerful woman before. Bang! A bullet hit one of the men in the head, and the body fell stiff. One dead, the terrified atmosphere spread like darkness, chilling from head to toe. We really don't know what you're talking about. A tall, thin man stood up, trembling as he said, Are you sure you're not mistaken? Shin Shuning smiled faintly and said, My brother, Shin Shen, in his twenties, handsome and playful. The tall, thin man's pupils shrank. You mean the one from out of town? Yes, it's him. Shin Shuning said calmly, My brother likes to play, but he never does anything wrong. Even if your people die at the hands of my brother, it's their own fault. He deserves to die. But? Shin Shuning's eyes turned as cold as ice, and she said in a cold voice, but you shouldn't have even thought of assassinating my brother. She clenched her fists tightly, a surge of killing intent released from her body, and she stood up instantly like an erupting volcano. You trash, do you know who my brother is? Do you know how much my Shin family loves him? Do you know how much my grandfather treasures him? My Shin family wouldn't even let Shin Shen suffer the slightest grievance, and you trash dare to harm him? You dare to oppose my Shin family? Shin Shu's anger erupted, sweeping through the entire living room. After she finished shouting, her face turned red and she panted heavily. But soon, Shin Shu Ning became calm and composed again, sitting down and crossing her legs casually. I'm sorry, I've never lost my temper like this before, and I apologize for the spectacle. Shin Shu Ning elegantly took out a lipstick from her bag and applied it calmly. Several wealthy merchants were dumbfounded completely unaware of the terrifying torture they were about to face. Snap! A person walked in from outside and saluted, report, everyone has been brought here, please give instructions. 
Bring them in. Shen Shuning's face remained calm. A group of old people and children were brought in. Wife, son. Mom. A group of wealthy merchants exclaimed in shock as their wives, children, and family members were all brought here. You wicked woman, what are you going to do? Let go of my wife and children. I'll fight you. Shin Shuning smiled cutely, but in the eyes of others, she was a demon from hell. You want to harm my brother, so I'll harm your families. As soon as she finished speaking, several bodyguards stepped forward. They raised their iron rods and struck with force. Crack! Regardless of whether they were old or young, these bodyguards were just obedient machines, and each attack was deadly. Watching their loved ones fall in a pool of blood, the wealthy merchants roared in agony. Some tried to rush forward, but were firmly held down by the bodyguards, who kicked them in the face with their shoes. Some knelt and begged for mercy, but the bodyguards grabbed their hair and smashed their heads against the floor. Shin Shuning remained calm as she said, you should be grateful that it's me who came today. If it were my father, the old master, or even other siblings, you wouldn't have died so easily. Bang! With the final blow, a woman fell to the ground. You wicked woman, I'll kill you. A wealthy businessman suddenly broke free and rushed forward, but before he could get close, he was struck down with the butt of a gun. I will kill you, kill you. The wealthy businessman roared viciously, shouting, I, Li Zhuangxiang, swear to the heavens that in this lifetime, I will use all means to avenge my wife and children. Oh, you may not have that chance. Shen Shu Ning had just finished speaking when several secretary-like individuals walked in, respectfully saying, Miss, all the assets of these people have now been transferred to the Shen family. Impossible. Several wealthy businessmen were horrified. Their assets were spread across the country and couldn't possibly be acquired by someone else. Suddenly, their phones all rang. They were calls from shareholders or friends. Bankruptcy messages were sent to their phones one after another. At this moment, they were no longer the top 10 wealthy businessmen in Dongzhou, but rather debt-ridden individuals in the billions. Finally, these wealthy businessmen collapsed one by one. They had witnessed what true power was. Ten multi-billion dollar asset companies all went bankrupt in less than an hour. What kind of existence, what kind of means was this? It's a pity, you don't even have your last card to play. Shin Shuning stretched lazily, her curves proud, and she said indifferently, I'm feeling better now, it's time to touch up my makeup. I won't play with you anymore, goodbye. She turned and left. Many wealthy businessmen breathed a sigh of relief. We are fortunate to be alive, but one day we will avenge our wives and children. Several people looked resentful. Shen Shu Ning got into the car. Erase everything here. She said calmly. Miss, there are still many people nearby. They are all damned. Don't just kill dozens, even if the whole earth is blown up, they deserve it. Shen Shu Ning said. Her subordinates dared not say anything more. They opened the satellite computer and entered the password. Swish. Dozens of kilometers away, a rocket soared into the sky. After the convoy left the area, the rocket arrived over the villa. Several wealthy businessmen, thinking they had narrowly escaped death, hurriedly hugged their wives and children, preparing to go back. What a big firework. Just as they were about to leave, they heard a violent sound and looked up. Everyone's faces stiffened. Boom! The fire rose, and the earth shook. A mushroom cloud rose into the sky. The shockwave from the explosion could be felt hundreds of kilometers away. After the earth trembled for a few seconds, it quickly subsided. Everyone thought it was an earthquake. Shin Shen drove to the airport, and as soon as he got out of the car, he felt the ground shaking. He turned back in confusion, feeling a sense of deja vu from the tremor. Several Audi cars stopped behind him, and the occupants asked, Young master, was that an earthquake just now? Not sure. Shin Shen shook his head. Before the occupants could speak, suddenly twenty or thirty jeeps appeared. Then the old butler got off the coaster, followed by several bodyguards. Kneel down. The old butler shouted angrily. The occupants' faces changed, and they immediately knelt down. 
The old butler slapped him angrily and said, You were so bold, you actually put the young master in danger just now, should you not die? The occupants immediately knelt down and said tremblingly, I'm sorry, steward, I have disappointed you, I deserve to die. The old butler coldly said, Then what are you waiting for, should I hand you the knife? As soon as he finished speaking, the occupants closed their eyes tightly, took out a dagger, and went to cut their own neck. As a warlord, he not only needed to defend his family and country but also to be obedient. The master must have no hesitation in wanting him dead. Snap. Shen Shen grabbed his wrist and said lightly, What are you doing? I didn't ask you to die, how dare you die? The dagger dropped to the ground with a snap, and Ying Zhan's face turned pale as he said, Young master, I'm sorry, I almost got you assassinated. I failed to protect the master, I don't deserve to be the Eastern War Marshal. I can only redeem myself by death. Shut up. Shen Shen said calmly, I came to pick up my sister today, I don't want a corpse on the ground. Before I let you die, you better stay alive for me, that's an order. Ying Zhan trembled all over, his eyes moistened, filled with guilt. Thank you for sparing my life, young master, and giving me a chance to atone. Ying Zhan clenched his fists and said angrily, Please rest assured, I will find the mastermind behind the scenes and let the young master take action personally. The old butler's voice sounded old, Young master, why keep a useless person? I'll immediately call for the 18-day marshal from the southeast and the southern border of Nanjiang. None of them are a thousand times better than this useless person. Shen Shen said, I have my reasons for keeping him, you should listen to me, butler. When my sister arrives, don't mention this matter. He knew his sister's temper, if she found out, Ying Zhan would definitely not survive. Oh, sister is coming out. Shen Shen walked over with a smile and waved vigorously, Sister, have you been well living abroad? It's been okay, these days when you're not around, no one has been keeping me company. Those idiots on Wall Street, I've been playing them around, it's really boring. Shen Shu Ning said with a smile. Suddenly, she looked at Ying Zhan, her voice turning cold, is this the trash that's supposed to protect you? Ah, uh, he is the Eastern War Marshal, Ying Zhan. After Shen Shen finished speaking, Shen Shu Ning suddenly stepped forward and slapped Ying Zhan across the face. You let my brother be assassinated, and you still deserve to be a war marshal. Butler, why is this person still alive, let him commit suicide to atone? Shen Shu Ning shouted. Ying Zhan lowered his head in shame for a moment, feeling that being alive was a disgrace. The dignified Eastern War Marshal actually made such a mistake. His face was burning hot. Sister, let it go. Shin Shin said with a smile, I'm fine after all, and Ying Zhan is not bad, so I'll give him a chance. Since my brother said so, let him live in disgrace. Shin Shu Ning's eyes were full of coldness, if it weren't for my brother's kindness, you would already be a dead man. Thank you, young master, for sparing my life, Mississippi. Ying Zhan smiled bitterly. Shin Shu Ning didn't want to pay attention to this person, she pulled Shin Shen onto the car. After getting in the car, Shen Shen asked, Sister, who told you about the assassination attempt on me? Who else could it be? Shen Shu Ning said irritably, The old butler has been taking care of you since you were young, and everything you do has to be reported to the Shen family. When you had an accident, the old butler told me immediately. Fortunately, I kept this matter under wraps and didn't inform the family. Otherwise, this city would probably have been flattened by now. Shen Shen breathed a sigh of relief, thankfully he didn't tell his family. Hundreds of people had finally survived. Soon, the convoy returned home. Shen Shu Ning walked into the living room, frowning slightly, Brother, what are you doing? How can you live in such a small place? How did the old butler take care of you? It's really infuriating. This huge estate covering dozens of acres, a top-notch mansion in the eastern region, seemed tiny in Shen Shu Ning's eyes. After all, the Shin family's residence was as big as a palace, compared to home, this place was indeed incredibly small. Big sister, I'll just make do for a while. No, you can't just make do. My little brother, absolutely cannot just make do. Shin Shu Ning made a phone call and said, go, and call James for me, let him build a hundred acre estate for my little brother. Lise, come to me today, I want to build a new hangar. Old butler. Miss. What are your orders? 
Shin Shuning said, Notify the Zhou Mansion in Dongzhou to give up the best area within the second ring road for my little brother. I want to build a winery and create the most comfortable leisure area. Yes. The old butler left. Shin Chen smiled bitterly. He didn't want to make such a big fuss originally. But his big sister doted on him too much. Even if he refused, she would definitely do it. Just consider it as an investment in Dong Zhou. This series of operations could at least involve several hundred billion. Several tens of minutes later, the old butler arrived at the Zhou Mansion. At this time, the Zhou Mansion was holding an expanded meeting, with Governor Chen Sanping sitting in the middle, reading a report to all the leaders of Dong Zhou. With a bang, the door was kicked open. Everyone in the meeting room subconsciously looked up, their eyes full of astonishment, as they watched the old butler walk in. The old butler stood with his hands behind his back, his eyes indifferent. You are the governor, Chen Sanping? Chen Sanping did not recognize the old butler, but he immediately recognized the several bigwigs from the province standing behind him. I, I am. Chen Sanping immediately stood up. A bespectacled man walked over and whispered to Chen Sanping. What? Although he didn't hear clearly, Chen Sanping was so scared that he collapsed to the ground, trembling uncontrollably. The old butler said indifferently, My young master is visiting Dongzhou and needs an area to build a residence. I think the location of your Zhou mansion is good. Demolish it and give it to my young master. His tone was not like a negotiation, but an order. If it were someone else, Chen Sanping would definitely curse and throw them out. But facing the imposing old man in front of him, he dared not show any temper. Did you all hear that? Pack up and move out overnight. Chen Sanping shouted. Immediately, everyone in the meeting room started to act. Outside the Zhou mansion, hundreds of trucks drove in, and thousands of moving company personnel started to work. It took several hours to empty the Zhou mansion. Then the bulldozers came in, and the top designers in the country were already studying the blueprints. The Zhou mansion was demolished overnight, making it a hot topic in the local news. It caused a sensation throughout Dongzhou. What, this can't be true? Our Zhou mansion, why did it move for no reason? I don't know, I heard there's a big investment to build a new office building. Ha, your information is too outdated. I have an uncle working in the mansion, and I heard that a mysterious old man led people into the meeting room. The governor was scared to death on the spot. It is said, it is said that a mysterious top young master is going to build a private amusement park. Oh my god. The crowd was in shock. Shin Shen chatted with his big sister for over an hour. When the clock pointed to around 5 o'clock, Xin Meng sent a voice message asking when he would return to the racecourse. She was still waiting to pick him up. Xin Shen immediately replied to her message. Big sister, I'm going to pick up Qin Meng, you. Of course, I'll come with you. I'll go change my clothes. Xin Shuning changed into a casual long dress and softened her makeup a bit, saying with a smile, I'm afraid of scaring your little girlfriend, so I changed into a simple outfit. Well, it's simple enough. A bag for 50 million, glasses for 8 million. 3 billion for the ring. Shin Shen said with a smile. Little brother, this is the cheapest outfit I have. You can't let your big sister wear street stall goods, can you? That's not necessary. Just don't use your powerful aura to scare my woman. Shin Shen's words were just a joke, Shin Shuning snorted, you've changed, for a woman, you're starting to say that big sister isn't good. I even gave you over a dozen oil fields before, and you still do this to me. Shin Shen laughed and walked out. The two of them drove to the racetrack. Qin Meng was waiting here alone, just now, Ning Jia had something to do, so she went back to the company first. She stood at the door, playing a game on her phone with her head down. Suddenly, a Rolls Royce stopped. A woman got out of the car and asked with a smile, Are you Qin Meng? Ha! Huh? Qin Meng was stunned for a moment, then nodded subconsciously. I'll give you five million, leave Xin Shen. Xin Shuning's words made Qin Meng feel a bit nonsensical. But she quickly got angry and said, What's wrong with you, I don't even know you. What about a billion? 
Xin Shu Ning said with a smile. Xin Meng shook her head vigorously and said angrily, You're so inexplicable. She turned to leave. Xin Meng. At this time, Xin Shen got out of the car and said, Big sister, I told you not to joke around, you're making me lose face. Xin Shu Ning chuckled, I wanted to see if my future sister-in-law is easily bought with money. She reached out proactively and said, Hello, I'm Xin Shu Ning, Xin Shen's big sister. I'm sorry for the offense just now. Hello, I'm Qin Meng. Qin Meng suddenly became nervous, realizing that this elegant and beautiful woman was Xin Shen's big sister. Let's go, get in the car. Xin Shu Ning pulled Qin Meng into the car, and Qin Meng was extremely nervous, glaring at Xin Shen. If she had known that big sister was coming, she would have touched up her makeup. Xin Shen said gently, don't be nervous, my big sister is very approachable, just chat casually. She's only five years older than me. You're talking nonsense, I'm only two years older than you. Xin Shu Ning pinched Xin Shen's arm. How could she admit to being that old? Qin Meng secretly breathed a sigh of relief, feeling that this big sister should be easy to get along with. However, Qin Meng didn't know that just a few hours ago, Xin Shu Ning had used missiles to flatten dozens of villas, killing over a hundred people. In less than half an hour, the group arrived at the Atlantis Hotel. This hotel had long been under Xin Chen's name. This little place, only this hotel is somewhat decent. Xin Shu Ning took off her coat and comfortably leaned back on the sofa, her eyes constantly sizing up Qin Meng. Qin Meng blushed under her gaze, feeling embarrassed as she lowered her head. You look good, have a good figure, and are of decent height. If you can pass my test, it won't be a problem with my parents. When are you two getting married? Xin Meng didn't expect the topic to come up so quickly, and nervously said, I've only recently met Xin Shen, and I'm still interning, so there's no rush to get married. Xin Shu Ning smiled, you're Xin Shen's first official girlfriend, you're not an ordinary girl. If my parents knew, they would be shocked. Ahem, big sister, don't bring this up, let's talk about something else. Xin Shen made an excuse to change the topic, not wanting to talk about his own private matters. Xin Shu Ning took off the watch from her wrist and said, it was a bit rushed for our first meeting, so I didn't bring a gift for you. I just put this on, the strap is still stiff, I'll give it to you. No, I can't accept it. Xin Meng quickly waved her hand. Xin Shu Ning said, when I give a gift, no one dares to refuse. With a casual and domineering statement, Qin Meng could only reluctantly accept it. It's a beautiful watch. Qin Meng's eyes were full of shock, she had never seen such a sophisticated and complex watch face. Xin Shen glanced over and said, Big sister, you're really generous, I remember you barged into the British royal family to forcibly take this watch. Almost sent the queen to the ICU. What nonsense, that was a gift from her. Xin Shu Ning pursed her lips and said, this was originally customized for me. Those old stubborn people still want to play dumb. Can my temper endure it? This watch is worth several houses in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. I'm going to the restroom. Xin Meng hurried to the toilet, then took out her phone and took a picture of the watch, and searched for the same model on a certain e-commerce platform. Seeing that it was only selling for a few thousand yuan, Xin Meng secretly breathed a sigh of relief. She was afraid that the watch would be very expensive, then she would have to return it. The convoy stopped at the hotel entrance, and the old butler got out of the car with Ying Zhan. Ying Zhan said, Master Steward, I have found the mastermind behind the scenes, but they are all dead. I went to the scene, it was already a ruin, and those people were nowhere to be found. There were remnants of missiles at the scene. Nonsense! The old butler snorted coldly and said, after the incident, I informed the young lady for the first time. It was the young lady who personally led the special team from the southeast district to eliminate those trash. And used the DF-11 to bomb the place. Ying Zhan shuddered all over. He was shocked. They actually used the DF-11, which was the country's strategic weapon, and would never be used easily unless there was a conflict between countries. And the Shen family just casually launched one? He broke out in a cold sweat instantly. The strength of the Shen family was a million times stronger than he had imagined. The two entered the hotel. 
The old butler stood respectfully beside Xin Shu Ning, and Ying Zhan knelt directly. Young lady, the state government has been demolished, and more than 20,000 workers have been arranged to start work at the same time. It will be built in less than a week. Xin Shu Ning nodded slightly and said, A week is too slow. I'll give you three days. If my brother can't move in within three days, everyone responsible for this project can be shot. What are you doing here? Xin Shu Ning looked at Ying Zhan coldly, she really didn't like this guy. Someone who couldn't even protect the master didn't deserve to live in this world. Ying Zhan trembled and said in a trembling voice, Young lady, I have found the real culprit, but they have already died at the hands of the young lady. I was too late. By the time you found out, the person had already run away. Xin Shu Ning snorted. Xin Shen said in surprise, Sister, you have already taken action in advance, when did this happen? Naturally, it was before I got off the plane. Xin Shu Ning picked up the red wine and said lightly, You know my hacking skills. I used our family's satellite positioning to find it. She used the satellite for emergency preparation, which could only be used in the most urgent moments. In Xin Shu Ning's eyes, her brother's assassination was as serious as the explosion of the earth, even more serious than a war. So she didn't care about that much, and at that time, she directly took away the right to use the satellite from the overall commander. Sister, you are really fast. I was thinking of taking action myself. Wait for you to take action? Xin Shu Ning said unkindly, I can't cover up this matter. If your big brother finds out, it won't be as simple as using the satellite. And on the parents' side, if they find out. All right, all right, I know you are well-intentioned, sister. Xin Xin quickly waved his hand and said with a smile, this matter has passed, anyway, those people are already dead and gone. Ying Zhan, get up, just don't make this kind of mistake next time. Ying Zhan quickly got up, feeling excited and ashamed in his heart. The old butler took Ying Zhan to wait outside the door. Xin Meng came out of the restroom, already wearing the watch. Xin Shu Ning looked her up and down and said, My brother's taste is really good. You are the first person in this world who can threaten my looks. Thanks to you being my future daughter-in-law from the Xin family. If it were someone else, humph, I would definitely ruin her face. Xin Meng blushed shyly and said thank you. After dinner, Xin Shen knew that Xin Meng still had things to do, so he took the initiative to say, Big sister, you've been on a plane all day and must be tired. I'll take Qin Meng home. Xin Shu Ning's eyes were full of resentment, are you my real brother? Why can't you take her home and then come back to take me? Go away, I'm not taking you, this old woman. You're asking for a beating. Xin Shu Ning raised her hand, but hesitated to hit, just gently pushed. Xin Shen smiled and led Qin Meng away by the hand. After leaving the house, Qin Meng felt the oppressive feeling disappear. Sitting with Xin Shu Ning, the aura released by the other person made her breathless. Xin Shen, what does your big sister do? Her aura is even stronger than yours. Xin Shen smiled, his big sister is the world's hidden richest person, and she manages half of the Xin family's business. Naturally, she is incredibly powerful. Your big sister, did she also do demolition and relocation? Xin Meng asked. Yes, she did. Xin Shen said with a hint of a smile, my family's ancestral home in the capital has several old houses. After they were demolished, my big sister received a lot of money and then went abroad to do business. He could only explain it this way, otherwise telling the truth would scare Qin Meng. The car stopped at the entrance of the community. When they got out of the car, Qin Meng saw a group of people blocking the entrance and arguing. Mom, what are you doing? Xin Meng walked over and asked. He Nianjin said angrily, the city wants to plan for demolition and relocation, but they conveniently bypassed our building. All the nearby communities are being demolished, but not ours. The more she spoke, the angrier she became, and she immediately turned and went back home. Xin Meng followed her into the house, where the ashtray on the table was already full, and Xin Ziming had smoked a pack of cigarettes. The room was filled with the smell of smoke. Xin Meng opened the window and said, Dad, we weren't chosen for demolition and relocation, let's just forget about it. Forget about it? What a joke. 
He Nianjin said angrily, Do you know how much money we could get from demolition and relocation? Why did they bypass our house? We have to find someone and demand an explanation. Lao Qin, isn't your old classmate working in the city? You should ask him. Xin Ziming extinguished the last cigarette and said, I don't know if this old classmate has retired. He made the call. Hello, it's me, Lao Qin. Xin Ziming smiled and exchanged pleasantries before saying, I want to ask you about the demolition and relocation in our community. What? You can't do anything about it? Xin Ziming's face turned ugly as he put down the phone. Lao Qin, what did your classmate say? He Nianjin asked anxiously. Xin Ziming smiled bitterly, my old classmate said he can't do anything about it. This was decided in a meeting at the city level and the documents have already been issued, there's no way to change it. Sigh. Hearing this, He Nianjin sat directly on the ground, lamenting, why is it that their family's houses are all being demolished and they're getting millions, while our family is so unlucky? Xin Meng went over to comfort them, saying, Mom and Dad, don't be sad. If you don't want to live here, I'll buy you a house when I make enough money. It'll take you hundreds of years to make enough money. Your house is fine. He Nianjin wanted to move to Di Yuan, where the living environment was good and there were many people to play mahjong with. She had long wanted to leave this rundown community. Mom and Dad, in that case, why don't you come and live with me? Just as Qin Meng finished speaking, He Nianjin immediately stood up and went back inside to pack. Lao Qin, come in and help me pack my clothes, what are you standing there for? Qin Ziming went in, puzzled, what are you doing? Our daughter just wants us to come and live with her. What's there to consider? Our daughter wants us to go. Lao Qin, you stay here in this rundown place, I'm going to Di Yuan. He Nianjin's friends had all moved to a new environment and into new houses. Every time she went out, she felt embarrassed to greet those friends. This time, I finally had the opportunity to move away, and it's impossible for me to come back and live here again. Xin Meng looked bitter, she had just wanted to be polite, but she didn't expect her mother to really move. Xin Shen, I'm sorry, I didn't discuss it with you. It's okay. Xin Shen didn't care much, he took out his phone and made a call to the side. Ying Zhan, my mother-in-law's house is going to be demolished. Go find someone from the planning department and get them to sign. Okay. Ying Zhan immediately responded, Young master, rest assured, I will handle it beautifully. After hanging up the phone, Ying Zhan raised his head, Steward, the young master has a job arrangement, I'll go first. The old steward said lightly, The young master has given you a chance to live, so cherish it. If there's another time, even if the young master pleads, it won't work. Ying Zhan nodded heavily and left. Half an hour later, Ying Zhan arrived at the planning department with dozens of people. Who is the leader here? Ying Zhan walked into the room and asked in a cold voice. At first, the people in the room were startled, but soon, a dignified man stood up and scolded, What are you doing? Get out! Behind Ying Zhan, a soldier walked out and slapped the man's face. Looking for death. The person standing in front of you is the Eastern War Marshal, why aren't you kneeling down? The dignified man's face changed dramatically, trembling as he said, War. War Marshal? I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you as the War Marshal. The man, including the people in the room, were too scared to move. Ying Zhan asked coldly, Are you the biggest person here? Yes. The man nodded hurriedly. Ying Zhan patted the man's shoulder and said, The entire Wenxin community is to be demolished. Can you do it? I, can I ask why? Do you have the qualifications to ask me questions? Ying Zhan's voice was cold, you just need to execute the orders. If you can't do it, your head will roll. The man gasped and shivered, War Marshal, please rest assured, I will definitely complete the task. Being able to work for the War Marshal makes me happier than winning a championship. No, you're not working for me. You are working for someone you will never come into contact with. Ying Zhan said lightly, within a day, I want you to send out the documents. If I don't see the documents, I will personally come to take your head. Invisible killing intent was released, scaring the man to tremble. 
Leaving the planning department, Ying Zhang got into the car and headed back. On the way, he suddenly wanted to go see the Zhou mansion that was to be demolished. The convoy turned and arrived at the already ruined Zhou mansion. Yesterday, it was a magnificent office building. One of the landmarks of the Eastern War. But now, it had collapsed, with rubble lying on the ground, and workers were clearing the debris. Big Brother Ring, why was such a good place suddenly demolished? A subordinate asked casually. This is for the eldest sister, to build a private estate for the young master. Ying Zhan was extremely envious, the eldest sister really doted on the young master, with such a relative, this lifetime would be enough. Twenty minutes later, Ying Zhan returned to the estate. Steward, I have already ordered the planning department to issue a new demolition order. Hmm. The old steward nodded slightly, in the future, when the young master orders you to do something, you must do your best and do it perfectly. I will speak some good words for you to the eldest sister. Ying Zhan immediately knelt down and said excitedly, Thank you, steward, for giving me this opportunity. I, Ying Zhan, swear with my life to protect the young master for a lifetime. The old steward stood with his hands behind his back and said, Not long ago, several border war marshals wanted to come and protect the young master, but I refused them. Those people heard that it was you protecting him, and each one was very dissatisfied, wanting to come and challenge you. Ying Zhan's body trembled, nervously swallowing saliva, and said, Among the 88 warlords, I am the least qualified and the weakest in strength. Thanks to the young master's appreciation in giving me a bowl of rice to eat, I am willing to face any danger for the Shen family. I only ask that after death, I can be buried a hundred miles away from the Shen family's tomb. Even if I become a ghost, I will continue to protect the Shen family. Are you worthy? The old butler's eyes were full of indifference as he said, only when you become a war god will you be qualified to be buried a hundred miles away from the Shen family's mausoleum. You are still far from that now. Ying Zhan's face flushed and said, I will definitely work hard to become a war god, just to protect the Shen family forever in this life. If you want to become a war god, then work hard. After a cold snort, the old butler casually threw the file on the ground. This person is called Tang Yijie, who previously lost a bet with the young master at the racecourse. Ying Zhan's eyes released a murderous intent and said, then I will go and kill him immediately. No, the old butler shook his head and said, his bet has not been fulfilled yet. I only need you to find him and then inform the young master. The young master will decide what to do next. Ying Zhan did not ask any more questions, he picked up the file and left. Inside the imperial garden. He Nianjin packed up all her personal belongings and moved them here. She also chose the largest bedroom. After moving in, the first thing Yin Yinjin did was to post a WeChat moment, inviting her friends to come over for a meal to celebrate her new home. Xin Ziming sat in the living room smoking, not particularly happy. Because their house was not planned for demolition, he felt a bit depressed. Xin Meng placed a glass of water on the table and said, Dad, don't think about that. It's okay if our house is not included in the demolition plan. We have a company, and our daughter has a new house. As long as we have enough money to spend, it's fine. Enough? What's enough? Xin Ziming snorted and said, Is marriage free? Is raising a child free? Does your brother not spend money on his girlfriend? Without several million, we can't survive. He Nianjin walked out of the room and said, Your dad is right. Nowadays, everything requires money. Without money, even heroes will starve. I just remembered that I met a very wealthy lady at a party before. I made an appointment with this wealthy lady for dinner. Let's dress up and go tonight. Xin Meng rolled her eyes, thinking her mom was obsessed with money. Can I not go? No, you are going out with Xin Chen tonight. He Nianjin said with a stern face, this wealthy lady used to be the richest woman in the eastern province, and now she is the richest woman in the entire province. She has connections with billionaires. Just a few introductions from her can last a lifetime. As she spoke, she looked at Shin Shen and pursed her lips, Shin Shen is not working seriously. He definitely won't fit in at the company where you work. Let her introduce a job to Shin Shen, with an annual salary of at least several hundred thousand. 
Xin Meng smiled bitterly, thinking her mom was always coming up with new ideas. At six o'clock in the evening, the family arrived at the Atlantis Hotel. He Nianjin went to the front desk and said, We have reserved room number seven. After checking the information, the waiter led them to the room with a smile. Wife, you are willing to spend money. You even chose the most high-end place in the city for dinner. Xin Ziming said. He Nianjin snorted, of course, it's obvious. The wealthy lady has high standards. Going to a lower class place would be demeaning. After a few people entered the private room, He Nianjin sent a voice message to the wealthy lady. Xin Shen opened the fridge, took out a drink, and started drinking. Qin Meng hit him and said, don't take things randomly. Isn't this drink expensive? Xin Shen smiled and said, I'm drinking my own stuff. Why would I need money? Annoying. Qin Meng thought Xin Shen was joking again. This is not an ordinary small hotel, it is the largest six-star Atlantis hotel in the entire East Continent. Even the richest person in the East Continent can't afford it. You, a small demolition household, probably can't even afford the decoration of this room. Soon, Mrs. Kuo arrived, wearing all branded clothes and carrying a Hermes bag worth millions. Mrs. Yang, it's been a long time, you look really beautiful. He Nianjin greeted with a flattering smile, and Qin Ziming also waved with a smile. Mrs. Yang was very proud and didn't even look at the couple directly. After sitting down, Mrs. Yang put down her bag and said lightly, if it weren't for our previous acquaintance, I wouldn't have come here today. Tell me, what do you want from me? He Nianjin raised a glass of champagne, toasted first, and then carefully said, Mrs. Yang, I'm really sorry, but I have a troublesome matter that I want you to help with. Then, she explained the demolition of their house. After listening, Mrs. Yang looked disdainful, with no concealment of contempt in her eyes. I thought it was a big deal, turns out it's just a small matter. If I had known, you could have just told my secretary, was it necessary for me to come in person? He Nianjin accompanied with a smiling face, said, for Mrs. Yang, it's just a small effort, but for our family, it's a matter of life and death. Forget it, I'll make a call and take care of it for you. Mrs. Yang took out her phone, deliberately flashing it in front of He Nianjin and her husband because it was studded with diamonds. Hello, is this Director Wang? Mrs. Yang said, I want to ask about the demolition of the happiness community. What, it's already planned to be demolished, and the documents have been issued? All right, I understand. Mrs. Yang put down her phone without changing her expression and said, I've already talked to Director Wang, he has agreed to the demolition and the procedures have been sent out. Really? So fast. He Nianjin was shocked, her heart pounding. Xin Ziming was also shocked, is this the influence of the rich, just a phone call can make the planning department change their mind. If, if he also had this kind of power, how great would that be? Mom, look at the social media. Qin Meng quickly said. He Nianjin quickly opened the social media, and the next second, she couldn't close her mouth. It's going to be demolished, it's really going to be demolished. He Nianjin excitedly danced, with this demolition, her family would have money. Quick, toast Mrs. Yang, she is our family's god of wealth. He Nianjin excitedly picked up the red wine. Ahem. At this time, Xin Xin spoke, aunt, let me say a few words, maybe I'm the one who arranged the demolition. He sent someone to the planning department and has already arranged it. This credit should be his. Shut up. He Nianjin immediately reprimanded, do you even know what your status is, do you have the right to speak here? Who is this person? Mrs. Yang was a little displeased. Mrs. Yang, please don't blame him, this is my daughter's boyfriend, he has no ability, he just likes to brag. Please don't blame him. He he, he's quite handsome. Mrs. Yang looked at Chen Chen, it was the first time she had seen such a handsome man. Where do you work? Are you interested in coming to work at my company? Shen Shen, did you hear that? Mrs. Yang wants to arrange a job for you, don't you thank her? He Nianjin scolded. Shen Shen smiled slightly and said, You arrange a job for me, are you not afraid that I will acquire your company? Nonsense. Qin Ziming immediately showed an angry expression and said, How can you say such nonsense in front of General Yang, 
Get out. It's okay, I'm not angry. Mrs. Yang chuckled and said, young people like to boast nowadays, it's normal, my son is the same. Let's eat. She picked up the red wine, ready to take a sip. Suddenly, the waiter came in looking nervous. I, I am sorry. Our private room is full. Could you move to the main hall and give this private room to our new guests? What are you saying, young lady? This is the private room we reserved. Why should we be kicked out? He Nyinjin stood up angrily. The waiter quickly apologized, blushing and stammering, not knowing how to explain. I let her in. A indifferent voice came from outside the door, and a middle-aged man with elegance and charm walked in. Seeing this person, Mrs. Yang's expression immediately changed, saying, Shia, what are you doing here? Shia smiled coldly and said, I'm here to bring my girlfriend to dinner and to see my ex-wife. Any problem? There was also a woman with a great figure standing beside him, dressed provocatively in a very short skirt, with a face like an internet celebrity. Please leave, this is our private room, Sheen Ziming said sternly. Shia burst into laughter, it's ridiculous that someone who isn't even a member dares to make a distinguished gold card member leave. Hee <laughs> hee, the internet celebrity coquettishly laughed, honey, these country bumpkins are so silly, they probably don't even know what a gold card member means, do they? You guys are quite something, my husband's gold card membership can only be obtained by someone who spends a million a year. And, assets must exceed one billion, and you need the invitation of ten senior members to qualify for a gold card. We have our eyes on this private room, so please get out, okay? Mrs. Young was extremely angry, clenching her fists tightly. She really wanted to punch them, but she couldn't do that. Let's go. Mrs. Young didn't want to be humiliated here and was about to leave. Wait. Shin Shen, who had been silent, suddenly spoke up, even for dining, there should be a first-come, first-served basis. If you had a better attitude, we wouldn't mind moving to the main hall. But now, I don't want to change seats in the middle of the meal, it's annoying. Shia's face immediately darkened, kid, do you know who you're talking to? He Minjin's expression also changed, this person couldn't even provoke Mrs. Yang, it would be as easy as crushing an ant to deal with them. You brat, shut up, you have no right to speak here. He Nianjin didn't want to provoke such a person, it's not a big deal to eat outside. Shin Shen, let's go, let's not argue with them. Xin Meng also wanted to leave. Shin Shen smiled, it's a good thing that big sister isn't here, otherwise you'd be in trouble. You're the first person on earth to drive me out of a meal. Where did this blind thing come from, daring to talk to my husband? The internet celebrity was directly angry, shouting, Get up and apologize to my husband, or I'll gouge out your dog eyes. Shia snorted, that's what he thought, he was a distinguished gold card member. A country bumpkin dared to defy him, he couldn't swallow this insult. Mrs. Yang didn't want to get involved in this matter, she was ready to leave with her bag, but Shia directly reached out to stop her, saying, if we don't resolve this today, no one can leave. Mrs. Yang stomped her foot in anger and turned back to shout, He Nianjin, make your son-in-law apologize, do you know who's behind Shia, even I have to give him face? As soon as she heard this, He Nianjin's face turned pale with fright. She turned around abruptly, glaring and shouting, Shin Shen, did you hear that, quickly apologize to this person, otherwise we'll all be implicated by you. The internet celebrity looked high and mighty, raising her chin, you have to kneel down and apologize to me, and call me mom a thousand times. Shin Shen, let's go. Xin Meng's eyes were red, almost crying. Shin Shen was still calm and confident, your arrogant confidence is nothing more than a gold card. Gold card, I don't have one. But I have another card. I don't know if it's enough. He took out a card made of pure gold, but with diamonds embedded around it. Where did you pick up this broken card to scare people? I've never seen it before. The little internet celebrity looked down on people and said, Kneel down to my husband quickly, or I'll kill you. Shut up, shut up. Xiao suddenly shouted, startling everyone. This card, this card. Xiao's eyes stared at the card on the table, his heart pounding. The Diamond Supreme card, it's really this legendary card. Xiao's face turned pale. This was the top private shareholder card of Atlantis, with no more than three in the world. 
Anyone who owns this card must have a net worth of at least 1 trillion, and it must be in pure cash. Even the richest man, Jack Ma, is not qualified to have this card. Thump. Xiao was so scared that he knelt on the ground, trembling all over, his eyes bloodshot. Honey, what's wrong with you? Is it a high blood pressure attack? The little internet celebrity was furious and shouted, You ignorant bumpkin, you're dead. How dare you give my husband high blood pressure? I'll make you die without a burial place. You shut up, you bitch. Suddenly, Xiao grabbed the little internet celebrity by the throat and roared, Do you know what this card is? It can bankrupt me overnight and make my family die a miserable death. Smack. He fiercely slapped the little internet celebrity's face, roaring with eyes wide open, You blind fool, you've killed me. I'll kill you. After a few punches, the little internet celebrity's plastic surgery face was distorted, covered in blood. After stomping on her a few times, the fake body parts on the little internet celebrity exploded, and she fainted on the spot. Sho was terrified, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Please forgive my impudence, sir. It's my fault, I'll call you dad. Dad. Dad, I know I was wrong. Smack. He kept slapping himself dozens of times, continuously apologizing. Mrs. Yang was stunned, her face full of shock. He Nianjin and Qin Ziming were also dumbfounded. Qin Meng's mouth was slightly open, her eyes full of shock. Xin Shen calmly drank his tea and said, Your attitude is acceptable, I forgive your disrespect towards me. Get out! Xiao was so scared that he peed himself, dragging the unconscious little internet celebrity away. Ah! Qin Meng choked on her own saliva, breaking the calm of the room. Mrs. Yang gasped, carefully walking to the front and said, Can I take a look at this card? Sure. Mrs. Yang picked up the card with both hands, feeling the texture and quality, surrounded by embedded diamonds. Just this card alone could be auctioned for billions. It's really the supreme card, I actually saw the real thing. Mrs. Yang understood what this card represented. It represented not only money, but also the unique and enormous influence it held globally. Thump. Everything went black. Mrs. Yang fainted from overwhelming happiness. He Ninjin had a dumbfounded expression and said, Old Qin, what's going on? How can a card have such a great charm? Qin Ziming shook his head, he didn't know what was going on either. How could such a distinguished guest like Mrs. Yang be scared by a card? He Ninjin immediately picked up the card and carefully examined it. This card doesn't look that special. It looks like something from an online store. Old Qin, take a look, is this card fake? Qin Ziming took the card and carefully studied it. He was slightly shocked, the diamonds on the card were so dazzling, it couldn't be fake. Mom, Dad, you don't really believe that this card is real, do you? Qin Meng giggled and said, this was something Shen Shen found online, it looks good, just for collection. Could it be that Shen Shen is a shareholder here? That makes sense. Hey, Nian Jin, take a breath. Now I'm even more sure that this card is fake. A fake card scared Mrs. Young and that person just now. You succeeded in fraud today. Nian Jin rolled her eyes. Shin Shen smiled and said, This card is real, do you believe it? I don't believe you, stop fooling my parents. Qin Meng casually threw the card into the trash can and said, Let's leave quickly or else we'll be in trouble if they figure it out. Yes, let's leave here quickly. Otherwise, if they come back, they'll definitely beat us to death. After Nian Jin knew the card was fake, she didn't want to stay for another second and quickly left the private room. Just as they left the hotel, Mrs. Yang woke up. Mrs. Yang, are you okay? We're already out. Nian Jin cautiously said, Please don't spread what just happened, Mrs. Yang. Mrs. Yang nodded vigorously, of course she wouldn't spread it. As a guest with the Supreme Card, she would never reveal her identity. Mrs. He, your son-in-law is amazing, he really keeps a low profile. He's actually a shareholder of Atlantis. You should just ask him for help directly, I'm not needed at all. Mrs. Yang said bitterly. Yin Jin wanted to say the card was fake, but then she had an idea. 
If she let the other party continue to misunderstand, wouldn't that mean she had made friends with Mrs. Yong? With this thought in mind, Nianjin smiled and said, My son-in-law is just too low-key, he doesn't want to reveal his identity. Only you, Mrs. Yang, know his identity, but you must not tell anyone. Don't worry, I won't say a word even if I'm beaten to death. Mrs. Yang excitedly held Mrs. He's hand and said, Mrs. He, let's exchange WeChat contacts, let's keep in touch often. I have a charity auction in a few days, Mrs. He, you must come and support us. Nianjin was naturally very willing, and the two exchanged WeChat contacts before seeing the guests off. After they left, Nianjin let out a long sigh and said, Lao Qin, we've made friends with Mrs. Yang this time, we'll have countless connections to use in the future. She looked at Xin Chen and said, in the future, when you see Mrs. Yang, just pretend to be the hotel's shareholder temporarily, but don't blow your cover. Okay, I'm real, no need to act. Xin Chen said. Good acting skills, you caught on so quickly. Nianjin patted his shoulder and said with a smile, act well, don't disappoint us. Lao Qin, let's go home. The two left. After they left, Qin Meng said, that's just how my mom is, don't mind her. It's just hard for you, you'll have to play the role of a rich second generation in front of others in the future. Xin Shen shrugged and said, I probably won't have to act, my temperament is already there. You're so vain. Qin Meng hit him twice and said, although you look good and have some money, you're still far from a real wealthy family. You don't understand me. Xin Shen muttered to himself. In the eyes of the world, a wealthy family was no different from a country bumpkin in his eyes. With just a word from him, even a billion dollar wealthy family could go bankrupt at any time. The couple, Nian Jun and her husband, returned home happily. I'll go cook, braised pork ribs. Nian Jin was in a very good mood. The neighborhood they lived in was about to be demolished, and they would receive a large sum of money. And she had made friends with Mrs. Young, a wealthy woman. Wouldn't the days ahead be even better? Gradually, she felt that the houses in the Imperial Garden were no longer appealing to her. Lao Qin, wouldn't it be great if we could move into Triumphal Arch? It's a level higher than Tangchenipin. I heard that the people living there are either chairman of listed companies or major shareholders of multinational corporations. That's the real wealthy area, looked at the newspaper, slapped it on the table, and said, it's good to have dreams, but don't daydream. Look, our mansion has been demolished. I heard that a wealthy young man wants to build his own estate. What? He Nianjin was shocked and immediately picked up the newspaper. This, this is amazing. He Nianjin exclaimed, Lao Qin, how much money do you think it takes to demolish the mansion and build a new one? Can money solve this? How much money do you have to make those leaders move? Xin Ziming sneered and said, let me tell you, this mysterious young master can cause an earthquake with just a sneeze. He can pluck the stars and dictate history. That's the kind of person he is. He Nianjin muttered to herself, wondering why her family didn't have such a person. If her daughter could find such a person, even if she could only live to be 50, it would be worth it. Suddenly, her phone rang. It was a video call from Mrs. Yang. He Nianjin happily went to her room to answer the call. A few minutes later, she hurried out, anxiously saying, Husband, Mrs. Yang said she has sent us an invitation to attend a charity auction. And she wants us to be heavyweight guests. I thought Mrs. Yang was joking, but it turns out she's serious. Xin Ziming raised an eyebrow and said, Then we'll be making fools of ourselves. The people there will definitely be super wealthy, and we won't measure up. But we have to go. He Nianjin grumbled, this is a great opportunity to expand our social circle. If we don't go, I'll never be able to enter the gates of triumph in my lifetime. I'll change clothes. She immediately went to the bedroom to find clothes. Oh, I don't have anything to wear except for some cheap stuff. He Nianjin became anxious and said, Lao Qin, take me to buy clothes. We can't go to the auction in cheap clothes. Qin Ziming looked outside and said, it's too late to find clothes now. Let's go tomorrow. No, we have to go tomorrow at noon. There's no time. Quick, call our daughter and ask her to figure something out. He Nianjin picked up her phone and called Qin Meng. 
Hello, where are you, daughter? You have to figure something out. Mom needs to buy some new clothes. See which mall is still open. Xin Meng was at a loss and said, Mom, why are you so demanding? It's late at night, where can I find clothes for you? I don't care, you have to find clothes for me. Hurry up and figure something out. The call ended. Xin Meng smiled bitterly and said, Xin Shan, don't go home yet. Go around nearby and see if any malls are still open. Xin Shen nodded slightly and turned left at the intersection, heading to the mall. At this time, most malls were already closed, and it was rare to find one that sold clothes. After turning a few commercial streets, they didn't see any open stores. Xin Meng felt helpless and said, It looks like I'll have to report this to mom. Wait. Xin Shen smiled and said, If you tell her directly, she'll definitely scold you. What can I do then? Xin Meng grumbled. Let me think of a solution. Xin Shen parked the car on the side of the road, took out his phone, and made a call. Ying Zhan, I'm at the entrance of Insidey. Insidey is under my control now, right? Within a minute, I want this mall to open. After finishing the call, Ying Zhan immediately slammed on the brakes and called the senior management of Insidey. I'm Ying Zhan. You're the general manager of Insidey on Zhongshan Road, right? I'm giving you one minute to open the mall. If you're even a second late, you'll be out of a job. The general manager of Insidey was so scared that he fell off the bed and trembled as he said, Right away, right away, we'll open the mall. He quickly sent a voice message to the work group, shouting, Quick, everyone who's off work, hurry back to work. Do not ask why, just get the hell out of here if you're even a second late. The general manager scrambled, not even having time to put on his pants, speeding at 200 miles per hour on the road. He arrived at the gathering place like a rocket. Managerly, what urgent matter is it that you're opening the door for someone in the middle of the night, the deputy manager asked. Shut up, is this something you should be asking, the general manager panted, there's an important VIP coming, everyone get to work, all for the service of this VIP. Turn on the lights, hurry. Hundreds of employees below quickly got busy. Click. The lights of the Yin Tai building turned on, and Xin Shen raised his head, smiling, coincidentally, it seems they've opened the door. Xin Meng got out of the car in amazement, they always close at 10 on the dot, why are they still open so late? Maybe business isn't doing well, so they want to work overtime, Xin Shen said. Let's go in and buy something. Xin Shen took Qin Meng's hand, and the two of them walked into Yin Tai. Welcome, dozens of smiling waiters greeted them. We're just browsing, Xin Xin said, not wanting a bunch of lackeys to follow them. He and Xin Meng went upstairs to the women's section. Just as the general manager was about to breathe a sigh of relief, the challenger appeared with a large group of bodyguards, and the general manager quickly caught his breath and ran over. Has the young master arrived? He has. The general manager, sweating profusely, said, We opened on time, not a minute late. That's good, the challenger snorted, tell all the employees to be on their toes. If my young master doesn't leave, no one can leave. Tonight's overtime pay, 10,000 for each person. Thank you. The general manager was overjoyed. With a few hours of overtime, he could earn a month's salary, and now no employee would complain about him. In the women's clothing section, all the salespeople only served her. She picked out a few pieces of clothing and even chose a set for her parents. The clothes here are so expensive, a set costs four or five thousand, Xin Meng lamented over her money, taking out her card to pay. No need to pay, this is my friend's store, just take it, Xin Xin said with a smile. That won't do, even if it's your friend's, we still have to pay, Xin Meng insisted, and Xin Xin was helpless, I said this is my store, do you believe me? You're just bragging, Xin Meng naturally didn't believe it and laughed. At this moment, the general manager walked over, smiling, this lady, today is our boss's birthday, and you are our last customer. So all expenses today are free. Xin Meng's face was full of surprise, did I win a big prize? How can there be such a good thing? Xin Shan, did you hear that, everything is free today? Let me pick a few more pieces of clothing for you. Xin Meng happily pulled Xin Shen to go shopping. Well done, 
The challenger came over, you have a good eye. From now on, you will be the overall manager of Dongzhou Ying Tai. The general manager was so excited that a surge of joy rushed to his head, and he panted heavily with a red face. He was extremely happy, and he knelt down to thank him directly. He had worked hard to become the general manager, for more than 10 years, and he was about to retire in half a year, thinking that he would never be promoted in his lifetime. Unexpectedly, tonight, he directly crossed several levels and became the overall manager. From a pheasant to a phoenix. His mood was more than just excitement. Thank you, thank you, sir, thank you. The general manager was excited and tearful. You don't need to thank me, thank my young master. This is my young master's gift to you. The challenger said calmly. Qin Meng happily picked up several sets of clothes in the clothing section. She knew that even though everything was free tonight, she wasn't greedy and didn't take a lot. One set for her parents, one for herself, and one for Shen Shen. These clothes added up to three or four thousand. But she had won a big prize tonight and saved a lot of money. Feeling like she had taken advantage, Qin Meng bounced out the door. Wait a moment, the general manager walked over with a jewelry box and said respectfully, Madam, this is a small gift prepared by our boss. Wow, there's a gift too, Qin Meng opened the box to reveal an exquisitely beautiful necklace. Women always like necklaces. Not bad, I'll put it on for you, Xin Shen personally put the necklace on Qin Meng. Qin Meng smiled and said, this necklace is really beautiful, with such a big diamond, it must be very expensive. The general manager quickly said, this is a souvenir, it's not valuable. Hearing this, Qin Meng felt relieved. Thank you to your boss, and I wish him a happy birthday. We're leaving, bye. Qin Meng left happily. Back in the car, Qin Meng called her mom, hey, mom, I'll be back in a while, I've picked out my clothes. Our daughter is coming back, and she bought clothes, He Yinjin said. Qin Ziming was getting a back massage, he opened one eye and said, it must be cheap stuff, how are we going to wear it out tomorrow? Dad, my sister wants to trick you out of money again, Qin Xiaotian said disdainfully. You'll see, when she comes back, she'll definitely say the clothes are expensive, you must not give her any money. Son, don't worry, mom won't give her a penny. Mom is saving money for you to get married. He Yinjin said with a smile. Mom, I'm back. Xin Meng came back with many bags, happily saying, I want a prize tonight, I didn't spend any money on the clothes. He Yinjin naturally didn't believe this, she sat still and said with a sidelong glance, where did you buy this cheap stuff, how are we going to wear it out to meet people tomorrow? Sis, you're trying to trick dad and mom with this cheap stuff, are you not ashamed? Xin Xiaotian said disdainfully. Nonsense, Xin Meng snorted and said, you guys take a good look, these are all big brands, all bought from the mall. Imitations, tens of dollars each, you can trick dad and mom, but not me. Qin Xiaotian opened the bags and casually picked up a belt from coach. Ha, huh, this texture, and there's a receipt. How does it look real? Qin Xiaotian suddenly widened his eyes, damn, sis, you've struck it rich, these all seem to be real. What are you saying, real? He Yinjin immediately got up and searched through the bags, picking up a dress, and exclaimed, this is the latest Chanel dress for this summer, several tens of thousands for one, I've never been willing to buy it. Dad, these leather shoes are real leather, over 8,000 for a pair, Qin Meng said. Qin Ziming was shocked, when did he ever wear such expensive shoes, his hands were trembling. He Yinjin gasped and said, where did you get these things, you don't have that much money on you. I had good luck with Xin Chen, Xin Meng briefly recounted the boss of Intai's birthday. After hearing what she said, Xin Xiaotian looked envious, it would be great if he were there too. He would definitely get a Rolex watch. He Yinjin started nagging, since it's all free, why don't you take more, are you stupid? Xin Meng said, it's almost enough, we've taken plenty, we shouldn't be too greedy as people. He Yinjin snorted and continued to insist on going back for more. I'm going out to take a call. Shen Shen's phone rang, and he walked out the door. Young master, I found Tang Ijie, do you want me to bring him to you? The respondent said. Shen Shen said, this Tang Ijie, is he participating in the auction tomorrow? The respondent glanced at the plan and said, it seems so, his Tang family is also invited. 
Then let's talk about it tomorrow, don't move him tonight. Okay, my people will withdraw immediately. The respondent put down his phone and made a few gestures in the dark. Several snipers quietly descended from the trees and rooftops. Riding in a car, leaving Tang Yijie's villa. Young Master Tang. In the room, Jean Man Man lay on Tang Yijie's chest, drawing circles with her fingers. I heard that many heavyweight guests will come to tomorrow's auction. I also want to broaden my horizons. Tang Yijie snorted coldly, saying, Is that the kind of place where someone like you, a small fry, can go? Even if it's my family, the invitation was bought at a great cost. At this point, Tang Yijie's arm suddenly hurt, and he quickly took a painkiller. Damn it! Tang Yijie knocked over the water glass, angrily saying, That guy surnamed Shin at the racetrack made me lose face. I won't let him off easily. After the auction tomorrow, I will make sure he has no place to bury himself. Jean Man Man immediately hooked his neck, affectionately saying, Young Master Tang, then treat me as that guy and beat me hard. You can discipline me however you like, I like it. Damn, you're shameless. Tang Yijie smirked and immediately got up, ready to take charge. Suddenly, the door was pushed open, and the bodyguard, expressionless, said, Young Master Tang, the head of the family has arrived. Dad, why are you here at this time, it's really a buzzkill. Wait for me. Tang Yijie put on a bathrobe and walked to the living room. Dad, why are you here? Tang Yiba said expressionlessly, I'm here to remind you that there are many things happening in the eastern province recently. Keep a low profile outside and don't provoke trouble. Also, I heard that a person with a powerful background has come to the eastern province, even the Zhou Mansion took the initiative to dismantle. You must not provoke this person, or I will personally kill you. Tang Yijie grinned and said, Dad, rest assured, a person of that level is not something we small fries can come into contact with. If I meet that person, I will definitely kneel down like a dog, and not cause you any trouble. That's good. Tang Yiba nodded slightly and stood up, saying, Dress well for the auction tomorrow, and don't bring that chick from the house to embarrass us. Dad, I understand in my heart. Only a fool would bring such unsavory goods. Tang Yijie smirked. Early the next morning, the couple Ying Yinjin and his wife got up early to dress, looking very clean and handsome. Lao Qin, this outfit is definitely fine. They are all big brands. He Yinjin smiled confidently in this outfit. Oh. Suddenly, He Yinjin slapped his thigh, anxiously saying, Oh no, we forgot something important. Qin Ziming asked, What's wrong? What's so urgent? He Yinjin said urgently, in Mrs. Yang's eyes, We are low-key wealthy people. We can't take a taxi there. That would definitely blow our cover. What should we do? Where can we borrow a luxury car now? V room. Shin Shen appeared in a Bentley Mulsan worth over 15 million. Here comes a luxury car. He Nianjin also recognized this as a very expensive Bentley. Her eyes lit up. Shin Shen got out of the car, just closed the door, and He Nianjin suddenly came over to reprimand him, be careful, if you scratch it, can you afford to compensate? What? Shin Chen was stunned. He had to compensate for his own old car? He Nianjin circled the car and took a selfie, then posted it on her social media. Getting ready to go, friends auction. After posting it, Mrs. Young immediately liked it. He Nianjin happily put her phone back in her pocket and said, Hurry up, we'll be late if we don't leave now. Everyone is waiting for us. You still have some insight, knowing to rent a car to come over. This will cost tens of thousands for the day, right? He Nianjin felt sorry for the tens of thousands of dollars. Shin Shen didn't say a word. He had plenty of these cars in his garage. Today, he just randomly picked one to go out. Shin Ziming patted the seat inside, luxury cars are really something else. If I could ride in one regularly in the future, it would be worth dying for. Dad, we'll be able to afford one in the future, Xin Meng said. With your meager salaries, you won't be able to afford one for hundreds of years, Xin Ziming said disdainfully. Xin Meng was speechless after being struck down. Soon, the group arrived at the entrance of the auction. 
Today, luxury cars were on display, including Mercedes, BMW, and Porsche. However, when the limited edition Bentley Mulsanne appeared, it attracted the attention of many people. When the E family got out of the car, they felt everyone's eyes on them, making them nervous. Madam He, you finally arrived, Mrs. Yang said warmly as she approached and enthusiastically introduced her to her friends. He Mianjin saw many wealthy businessmen from the upper class that she wouldn't normally come into contact with, and she was excited. Don't give yourself away. You have to act the part, Xin Meng whispered, in Mrs. Yang's eyes, you are a VIP customer, so just play along with mom. Xin Xin said lightly, don't worry, I'm more skilled at playing the role of a rich second generation than anyone else. As they spoke, a wealthy girl approached Xin Chen and greeted him. She spoke in French. Qin Meng could understand a little English, but she couldn't understand any French. At this moment, Mrs. Yang also noticed and found her niece actively engaging with the young man. Xin Chen lightly patted Qin Meng's back and, with a smile on his face, began to communicate with the other person in French. Qin Meng's eyes were full of astonishment. Xin Chen actually knows French? Mr. Shin, this is my little niece who just returned from studying abroad, Mrs. Young said warmly. A person who can speak French must have a high status. She was even more convinced of Shin Chan's identity. Your niece speaks French very well, and she has an English accent, Shin Chen said casually. Mrs. Yang said with a smile, Selena studied in Ireland and her teacher was a member of the royal family. Mrs. He, what are you talking about? He Ninjin nervously walked over worried that Shin Shen would reveal something, and quickly came to check. Mrs. Yang praised, Mrs. He, your son-in-law is amazing. He's chatting with my niece in French, and even I can't understand it. What, he knows French too? He Nianjin was stunned for a moment. Wasn't this demolition worker just a high school graduate? How does he know a foreign language? Mrs. He, you are really lucky to have such an outstanding son-in-law, Mrs. Yang said enviously. He Nianjin immediately straightened up and put on airs, smiling and saying, My son-in-law is amazing. He has won many awards abroad and has taken photos with many famous professors. These were all made up by her, just to elevate Shin Chan and save face. However, her words piqued Mrs. Yang's interest, and she said eagerly, Mr. Shin, do you know Professor John Jack? He is my daughter's teacher. The John you're talking about, is he the quantum professor at Stanford? Shin Chen asked. Yes, that's the one, John. Do you know him? Mrs. Young became excited. Shin Chen smiled lightly and said, My family invested in a research project before, and Professor John participated in it. I have Professor John's phone number now. Why don't you two chat? She picked up her phone. Let's not chat now, maybe next time. He Nianjin quickly took his phone away and glared at him, kid. You've overdone it. What if you give yourself away? She turned to Mrs. Yang and said with a smile, Let's talk about private matters another day. Today is a public occasion, with many people around, so let's keep a low profile. Yes, we should keep a low profile. Mrs. Yang smiled happily and quickly led He Nianjin to the front row. Qin Meng breathed a sigh of relief and said, You did a good job acting, making them believe you. Shen Chen shrugged. Everything he said was true, but no one believed him. After a while, He Nianjin walked back with a stern face and said, I asked you to play the role of a rich second generation, not to show off. Mrs. Yang just called, and you've blown your cover. It won't blow my cover. I can get through, Shin Chen replied. All right, I asked you to play a rich second generation, not to get carried away, He Nianjin impatiently waved her hand and said, Don't talk to anyone casually now, follow me. Xin Meng chuckled and couldn't help but say, My mom is really into acting, she loves this kind of vanity. Don't be mad. Xin Shen smiled and said nothing. Outside the hotel, a Porsche appeared. Tang Yijie walked into the hotel with a model in his arms. After taking a few steps, a hotel waiter hurried over and said, Young Master Tang, the person you mentioned just went in, he's inside. Good. Tang Yijie's eyes flashed with cold light. He had been humiliated at the racetrack last time, and today he would definitely reclaim his dignity. He quickly took the elevator upstairs, pushed open the door, and entered the lobby. 
As people came and went in the lobby, Tang Yijie's cold gaze swept over and instantly locked onto Shen Chen. Tang Yijie sneered and picked up a glass of wine, walking over. Suddenly, a figure blocked his way. Looking expressionlessly at Tang Yijie, the figure said, Mind your own business and don't get yourself into trouble. Who are you? Tang Yijie didn't recognize the figure and angrily said, Get out of the way. How dare you stop me? The figure coldly said, You've already stepped halfway into the grave. You're burying yourself. You're crazy, get lost. Tang Yijie forcefully pushed the figure aside. Today, he must reclaim his lost dignity. No one could stop him. Sniper, target locked. If he dares to make a move to harm the young master, shoot him in the head. The figure spoke into the earpiece. The sniper lurking outside the hotel slowly held his breath, aiming at Tang Yijie's head through the scope. Tang Yijie was unaware of how close he was to death. With a cruel smile on his face, he walked up behind Shen Chen with a wine glass in hand. Tang Yijie came up from behind. He smirked and raised the wine in his hand, suddenly splashing it towards Shen Chen's back. Shen Chen was chatting with someone when he suddenly felt a cold air behind him. Years of training instinctively made him dodge and flick his clothes. Snap! The red wine that was splashed out was blocked by Shen Chen's clothes and flew back towards Tang Yijie. With a splash, the red wine soaked Tang Yijie's face. Tang Yijie's face immediately darkened. Tang, young master Tang? Qin Meng saw this and quickly said, Young master Tang, why are you here? Are you okay? I'm fine. Tang Yijie suppressed his anger and stared coldly at Shen Chen. Why are you here? Who let you come? You don't have an invitation, yet you dare to trespass into a private club. Are you seeking death? Young Master Tang, we have an invitation, Qin Meng explained, but Tang Yijie didn't believe it. He coldly said, the distinguished guests who can come today are all prominent figures in Dongzhou. You country bumpkins definitely couldn't have gotten an invitation. Security, where's the security? Tang Yijie called for the security and angrily pointed at Shen Chen, how did you let beggars in? Kick them out. The security knew Tang Yijie but didn't know Shen Chen. The security said, without an invitation, you can't come in. Please leave. Shen Chen calmly said, who told you we don't have an invitation? You're blind. He took out the invitation and threw it at the security's face. After checking, the security found that the invitation was genuine. I'm sorry, truly sorry, the security hurriedly apologized. Tang Yijie was stunned. How was this possible? Where did these two country bumpkins get the invitation? Suddenly, Shin Shin pointed at Tang Yijie and said, I suspect this person doesn't have an invitation. Check him. You're talking nonsense. Tang Yijie angrily said, I walked in openly. How could I not have an invitation? I'll take it out now and show you. He reached into his pocket, searching up and down, but it was empty. Tang Yijie's expression changed. Where's the invitation? It was clearly in my pocket just now. The security guard, with a hostile look, said, Tang, you don't have an invitation, do you? I do, I definitely do. Tang Yijie panicked and frantically searched all his pockets, but indeed found nothing. Throw him out, the security guard shouted. Wait, I have an invitation. You can check the surveillance. I really have. Tang Yijie panicked directly. If he was driven away like this, he would be laughed at when he went back. Stop. Suddenly, Mrs. Yang appeared. Tang Yijie was overjoyed, Aunt Yang, please help me. I've lost my invitation. Let go, I know this person, Mrs. Young said. The security guard let go. Tang Yijie urgently said, Aunt Yang, I've been set up. You must help me. Who dares to set up my nephew? Mrs. Young questioned. It's him. Tang Yijie pointed at Shen Chen, resentfully saying, This outsider has bullied me time and time again. Aunt Yang, you must stand up for me. Mrs. Yang's expression darkened when she saw the direction he was pointing. Are you talking about Mr. Shen? 
Yes, it's this outsider, wait, Mr. Shen? Tang Yijie's eyes glazed over. From Ant Yang's expression and the mention of Mr. Shen, he realized that this situation was not what he had thought. His throat rolled, and Tang Yijie's scalp tingled. Ant Yang, do you know this guy? Smack! Mrs. Yang mercilessly slapped her nephew's face, suppressing her anger, apologized to Mr. Shen. Mr. Shen is a holder of the Supreme Card. If he's an outsider, then we're from the gutter. Tang Yijie trembled and almost knelt down. The auction is about to start. Let's find a seat, Xin Meng pulled Xin Chen's arm. Xin Chen smiled and ignored Tang Yijie. Finding a seat. Tang, you dropped your invitation, the waiter picked up the invitation and handed it over. Tang Yijie was furious and slapped the waiter twice. Useless, if you had brought it earlier, I wouldn't have embarrassed myself. Tang Yijie shouted. The waiter looked innocent. He had found it under the carpet and kindly brought it over, only to be beaten. It was really unfair. The auction began. Tang Yijie sat next to Aunt Yang and asked cautiously, Aunt Yang, who is that outsider, and how do you know him? He's not an outsider, Mrs. Yang glanced sideways, I'll tell you the truth. He is the holder of the Supreme Card at the Atlantis Hotel, one of only three in the world. What, what? Tang Yijie was immediately shocked. There were only three Supreme Cards, and this outsider had one? How was that possible? His first thought was disbelief. Aunt Yang, have you verified his identity? Are you sure the card is real? I think, it should be real, Mrs. Yang hesitated slightly. She felt that the diamonds on the card were real, worth billions. If it's not verified, then it must be fake, Tang Yijie felt like he had caught a handle, excitedly saying, Aunt, think about it. There are only three of these cards in the world. We could never come across it in our lifetime. Such an important thing is held by big shots all over the world. How could a person in their twenties have it? Just think about it, it's obviously fake. Aunt, you've been deceived. After listening to his explanation, Mrs. Young suddenly felt it made a lot of sense. But Mrs. He just arrived in a limited edition Bentley, she said. Aunt, don't you use the internet? You can rent any car now, Tang Yijie sneered. Aunt, I dare to swear with my life that his card is definitely fake. Good, I know the vice president of the Asia-Pacific region, Atlantis, I will personally have him come and expose this fraudster. Okay, Mrs. Yang nodded slightly and said, if he is a fake, then I will make them pay. In Dongzhou, dare to deceive me, I will make sure he doesn't get away with it, Tang Yijie smirked, finally able to avenge the racecourse today. The auction had begun, and the first item was brought up. It was a bottle collected by a woman, with a starting price of over a thousand. Xin Shen, are we just going to sit here and do nothing? Qin Meng asked softly. Just buy a few things casually, consider it charity, Xin Shen smiled and said, tell me what you like, and I'll buy it for you. Qin Meng's eyes were fixed on the stage, and suddenly, she saw a pair of beautiful high heels. She had never seen such beautiful shoes before. But she didn't ask for them, as she saw the price tag, 180,000 for a pair. She couldn't afford such expensive shoes even if she tried. Xin Shen noticed Qin Meng's change in expression and glanced at the shoes. He already understood what was going on. If you like it, buy it, he said. Even if it's a thousand pairs, I'll buy them for you, Xin Shen said calmly. After the first two items were auctioned, it was finally the turn of the high heels. After a brief introduction by the auctioneer, they were placed on the counter. Under the spotlight, the shoes shone with a unique charm. From teenagers to people in their 60s and 70s, every woman in the room was fixated on these high heels. The design of these shoes is indeed good, Xin Chen murmured after a glance, it's like I've seen them somewhere. After the auctioneer's gavel fell, the first tycoon quickly raised his sign, wanting to give them to his 18-year-old daughter. But then the second bid started. The third. The eighth. Almost every wealthy man with a female companion in the room was bidding for these high heels. The price had already risen to 250,000. Qin Meng smiled bitterly. Was this the game between the rich, spending hundreds of thousands on a pair of high heels without batting an eye? 
A.D. Suddenly, a cold voice spread throughout the hall. Some people turned back in surprise and saw a woman in a red dress sitting in the corner. It was Lu Yao Yao. It had been a while since they last met, and she had changed from long hair to short hair, looking more mature. Her eyes were fixed on Shin Chen, meaning to say, these high heels are mine. 85, Shin Chen raised his sign calmly. Ah! He Nianjin was shocked and said, little brat, what are you doing? Put your hand down, are you crazy? Qin Ziming also urged, hurry, put your hand down, this is a game between the rich, what are you doing as a demolition worker? Shin Chen smiled calmly and did not reply. One million, Lu Yao Yao reunited. Shin Chen also raised the bid, one million one hundred thousand. He Nianjin was furious, spending over a million on a pair of shoes, he must have lost his mind. I'm telling you, put your hand down, or I'll have to hit you. He Nianjin's body trembled with anger. He was just pretending to be a second generation rich, where did he get the courage to show off here? The play had really gone too far. Xin Meng pulled Shin Chen's foot and said nervously, don't raise your hand, we don't need to put on a show for others now. Who said I'm putting on a show, I'm buying it for you, Shin Chen said with a smile that wasn't a smile. Two million. Lu Yao Yao frowned. Two million one hundred thousand, Shin Chen continued to raise the bid. Are you doing this on purpose? Lu Yao Yao gritted her teeth. Shin Chen nodded, yes, he was doing it on purpose. He didn't hide his thoughts at all. Three million. Lu Yao Yao almost squeezed out the words through her teeth. Shin Chen naturally didn't care about a few million, compared to his wealth, no one on the entire planet was richer than him. On. Shin Chen was about to raise the bid when suddenly a calm voice came, no matter what price this woman offers, I will bid 50 times higher than her. This statement caused a stir in the entire room. The big shots sitting in the front row couldn't help but glance over. In an inconspicuous corner, a domineering woman sat there, with empty seats in front and behind her for five rows. Dozens of black-clad bodyguards stood behind her, like black iron towers, exuding a menacing aura. Who is this person? What does she do? What's her background, to have such a big attitude? These were the thoughts in everyone's mind at that moment. Lu Yao Yao was astonished, what's going on, how did someone suddenly appear out of nowhere? And, this person's tone was a bit too arrogant. Lu Yao Yao didn't believe that this woman could offer 50 times the price. She was about to question it when suddenly, a bodyguard walked up to the stage with a check. The auctioneer's expression changed directly upon seeing the check. After a while, the auctioneer walked to the center with a microphone and said in a trembling voice, I'm sorry, everyone, the auction today is ending early. All of our auction items have been purchased by this lady at more than 50 times the price. And, even this auction, from now on, belongs to this lady. This statement immediately set off a commotion. The billionaire sitting in the front row, with assets worth billions, also stood up. Their faces were filled with astonishment. They knew that not only the items being auctioned today, but even this auction itself, was renowned worldwide. Without hundreds of billions, don't even think about buying it. But this mysterious woman, with one move, acquired the world's top auction. This was no longer something that money could achieve. Lao Wang, is the demolition of the continent's mansion related to this woman? It's very likely, there are rumors of a transcendent figure coming to the eastern continent. This woman, most likely. Everyone trembled. As people of their level, they knew many secrets that others didn't. They felt from this woman a kind of oppression that came from the depths of the soul, something that couldn't be compensated for no matter how much money they earned. Let's go, don't ask anything. Don't look at anything. Anyone who dares to look directly at her, I'll drive them out of the family. Several billionaires left in fear, with their families. When the top big shots left, those sitting in the back with assets worth several billion were eager to go and hand over their business cards. Incredible. He Nianjin looked envious. She didn't know how much the auction items were worth, but she knew that this woman must be incredibly wealthy. A true top billionaire. Mrs. Yan was so shocked that she couldn't speak, sitting dumbfounded in her chair. 
Lu Yaoyao let out a sigh, she wanted to go and talk to that woman. But the bodyguard blocked her way. You don't have the qualifications to approach our young lady, scram. The bodyguard coldly and ruthlessly drove her away. Lu Yaoyao looked deeply at the woman, although she felt unwilling, she could only turn and leave. What are you two still looking at, let's go. Sheen Ziming said, she lives in the sky, we ordinary peasants don't have the qualifications to come into contact with her. He and He Nyinjin left first. After everyone had left, the woman stretched lazily. Then, she walked toward Xing Chen. The overhead lights gradually brightened. Dig, dig sister? Xin Meng's mouth opened, her eyes filled with astonishment. Xiaro, haven't seen you in a few days. Shen Shunning giggled and greeted her. Big sister, I knew it was you. Shen Shen was not in a good mood, why are you competing with me for things? Your high heels are stored in hundreds of warehouses. What do you know? Who said I want to wear these shoes? These are for my future sister-in-law. Shen Shunning took the high heels and squatted down to help Qin Meng put them on. Miss. The bodyguard behind them was shocked. The young lady of the family was actually helping someone put on shoes. Xin Meng's ears turned red instantly and she nervously said, I can't accept these shoes, they are too expensive. Silly girl, a pair of shoes is nothing. As your sister, I should give them to you. Look, they fit perfectly. Xin Shuning smiled, your temperament, plus these shoes, at least 10 levels of improvement in appearance. She then gave Shen Shen a look and said, My silly little brother, although he is very intelligent, he doesn't understand women, he's so naive. Sis, am I that shameless? Shen Chen was speechless. Shen Shu Ning covered her mouth and laughed, then took Qin Meng to the side to talk privately. Qin Meng's ears turned red, and she glanced over here from time to time. Shen Shen regretted not having sharp ears, otherwise he would definitely hear what they were talking about. After a few minutes, the two of them came back. Big sister, what did you talk about? I'm not telling you. This is a secret between me and my sister-in-law. Shin Shuning patted Qin Meng's arm and said, I wish you both the best. I have to go now. If this brat bullies you, you tell me. Okay, Shuning, take care. Qin Meng waved goodbye. After they left, Shin Shen asked, What did my big sister say to you? Tell me quickly. No, she doesn't want me to say. Xin Meng smiled and said, I will definitely tell you when I have the chance in the future. Oomph, forget it if you don't want to say. I don't want to know yet. Shen Chan snorted. Outside the auction house. Mrs. Yang and Tang Ijie had not left yet. There was also a blonde foreigner standing next to them. This blonde foreigner was the vice president of Atlantis in the Asia-Pacific region, whom Tang Ijia had invited. Mr. Jason, someone is impersonating your VIP card customer. Please help us expose him. Tang Ijia said politely. No problem. Jason nodded, we will never allow anyone to tarnish our VIP card customers, and we will definitely pursue legal responsibility. Tang Ijia laughed, this was great. With a foreigner involved, that country bumpkin wouldn't stand a chance. They're coming out, they're coming out. Tang Ijia saw Shin Chen and immediately gathered a group of security guards to surround them. Shin Chen instinctively protected Qin Meng behind him, looking at Tang Ijia with indifference. Mrs. Yang, what do you mean? I'm sorry, Mr. Shin, my nephew doesn't believe that you are a VIP card customer, so he wants to verify. Mrs. Yang said, Mr. Shen, this is Jason, he is the vice president of Atlantis in the Asia-Pacific region. If your card is genuine, Mr. Vice President will definitely recognize it. Oh no! Xin Meng's face changed, now they were definitely going to be exposed as fake. She suddenly felt panicked. Country bumpkin, dare you take out the card? Tang Ijia angrily said, I knew you wouldn't dare, because you're a damn fake. Hold on. You dog, did you see that I didn't want to take it out? Shin Shin said calmly, Mrs. Yang, you know the consequences of doing this, it will make me very angry. The consequences are not something you can bear. 
Mrs. Zhang took a deep breath and said, Mr. Shen, if the VIP card is genuine, I will take full responsibility for everything. I will personally break my nephew's legs and make amends to you. Breaking his legs is just for today, a few days ago he lost to me at the racetrack and still hasn't learned his lesson. Okay, if it's real, I'll not only break his legs, but also make him learn to bark like a dog, Mrs. Yang said in a firm voice. Tang Yijie laughed, yes, if the card is real, I'll kneel down and learn to bark like a dog for you. He was already convinced from the bottom of his heart that the card must be fake, so agreeing to anything was not a problem. I have to call some friends over to watch how you embarrass yourself, Tang Yijie immediately sent a message to his friend group. Coincidentally, some friends were gathering nearby, and after seeing the message, they all rushed over. A group of people surrounded the area, taking out their phones to start recording. Tang Yijie kept sneering, thinking it would be best to record with their phones, because when this country bumpkin embarrassed himself later, it would be good to have it on record. Xin Shen handed over the Supreme Card with a faint smile. After Jason took the Supreme Card, he began to inspect it with professional equipment and verify the identity. Tang Yijie gripped the stick tightly, feeling as if a wolf was howling inside him, eager to go up and hit someone. Mrs. Yang's heart was in her throat, watching nervously. Ding dong. The green light lit up, indicating that the inspection was successful. Jason carefully took the card and immediately handed it back with both hands, respectfully saying, I'm sorry, Mr. Shin, I was rude. This card is real. What, what? What did you say? Tang Yijie's expression suddenly froze, raising his voice, it's a mistake, it must be a mistake. How could this country bumpkin have a real card? Shut up. Jason scolded, although this is a supplementary card for relatives, it is indeed real. Mrs. Yan, you are so bold, daring to offend our Supreme Card customer. Our business with your hotel ends here. Boom. Mrs. Yan was suddenly struck by lightning, her face turning pale. She regretted it deeply. She should have believed without a doubt, after all, how could there be someone in this world who would impersonate a Supreme Card customer? Bastard. Mrs. Yang's anger surged, and she fiercely slapped Tang Yijie's face. She roared, you've killed your aunt, and I actually believed your nonsense. Kneel down for me. Tang Yijie's mind exploded, he shook his head vigorously, absolutely not believing that the card was real. Kneel down. Smack. Mrs. Yang, holding a stick, fiercely struck his knee, and Tang Yijie let out a miserable cry as he fell to his knees. You useless brat, you've killed me this time. Mrs. Yang was full of resentment as she ruthlessly broke Tang Yijie's leg. Tang Yijie writhed in pain on the ground, screaming in agony. So pitiful, Shen Shen said mockingly. Mrs. Yang took a deep breath, full of apologies, and said, I'm sorry, Mr. Shen, I was blind and believed someone else's words. Whether this wastes lives or dies, it's up to you. Despite Tang Yijie being her nephew, she could be ruthless when necessary. After all, if Jason were to cut off business ties with her hotel, it would be equivalent to offending Atlantis. The consequences of offending the other party would not only be the loss of this business deal, but also the loss of the global hotel market in the future. Her company relied on this for survival, and if she were to be blacklisted by global peers, wouldn't it be forcing her into a dead end? At this moment, Mrs. Young already hated Tang Yijie to the core. I was wrong, I was wrong. Tang Yijie was full of regret, finally realizing that he had offended someone he shouldn't have. He only hoped to be spared. Admitting your mistake is one thing, but our bet still needs to be carried out, Shin Shin said calmly. I've said before, one day, you will obediently fulfill your promise. With so many friends watching, bark a few times like a dog. Tang Yijie looked blankly at his friends, who were usually good company. Originally, he had invited his friends to come and watch Shen Shen embarrass himself. But now, he had become the clown. No. I won't. Tang Yijie felt deeply humiliated and began to scream hysterically. Jason coldly snorted. Mrs. Young shuddered and immediately became furious, do you want to learn or not? If you don't, I'll kill you right now, do you believe me? Tang Yijie felt hopeless, choked back tears, and looked to his friends for help. 
His friends all avoided him, not a single one helped. Suddenly, there was a feeling of despair. Woof. What? Your voice is too soft, I can't hear you. Shin Shen said with a smile. Woof woof, woof woof. Good, speak louder. Woof woof woof. He barked twenty or thirty times. Each bark was loud and clear. Shin Shen smiled and praised, not bad, not bad, you've learned it well. It seems like you've been playing a lot. That's enough. Tang Yijie gritted his teeth. Hmm, that's enough, you can scram now. Shin Chen nodded. Tang Yijie's heart burned with anger, and he stood up to leave. Wait, you have to crawl away. Dogs don't walk on two legs. Shin Chen pointed to a stray dog urinating. Tang Yijie's eyes burned with anger, wishing he could kill Shin Chen. But he held back. He lowered his head and crawled away little by little. Meanwhile, his friends all recorded videos with their phones, constantly exclaiming. Tang Yijie finally crawled out of the street and disappeared at the intersection. Mrs. Yang secretly breathed a sigh of relief, hoping that this would calm down Master Shen. Qin Meng, how do you feel? Was it fun? Shin Shen said with a smile. Qin Meng grumbled, isn't it too humiliating? After all, he helped Miss Ning. The bank matter has nothing to do with him. Shin Chen chuckled. Mr. Shin, if you need anything, feel free to contact us at any time. Jason and his men left. Mrs. Yang walked over awkwardly and said, Master Shin, I'm really sorry, it's all my fault. I'll treat you to a meal and apologize. Forget it, I don't have time for that. Shin Shen couldn't be bothered to deal with her and left with Qin Meng. Lao Qin, take a look at your WeChat moments. What's the big deal? Qin Ziming walked over, and he Yinjin pointed to the phone excitedly, take a look, someone is imitating a dog's bark, it's so funny. People nowadays have no limits for publicity. Qin Ziming casually took a look, and suddenly, he felt that the person looked familiar. He quickly snatched the phone and looked carefully. Ha, huh, isn't this Mrs. Yang's nephew, Tang Yijie? Isn't this Mr. Tang's son? Xin Ziming's eyes widened, and in the video, he even saw Xin Chen's figure. Could it be? Could it be? Xin Ziming's breathing became rapid. This is a disaster. This demolition household has caused trouble for us. Quick! Quickly call them back, quickly! He Nianjin didn't know what had happened and quickly called her daughter. After the call, she asked, Lao Qin, why are you so nervous? What happened? Qin Ziming clenched his fists tightly and said angrily, Do you know who Mr. Tang is? Mr. Tang is one of the investors in our company. This Shen Shen humiliated Mr. Tang's son, do you think our company will go bankrupt? Then it definitely will. He Nianjin was shocked, Lao Qin, are you saying that our family is going to go bankrupt? Yes. Qin Ziming slammed the table in anger and said, What does this little bastard want to do? Does he want to ruin our Qin family and make us destitute? Mom, Dad, I'm back. Qin Meng and Shen Shen had just walked into the house, and Qin Ziming immediately rushed over, angrily shouting, Demolition household, do you know who you've provoked? Are you here to destroy my Qin family? Dad, why are you suddenly so angry? Qin Meng quickly asked, What's going on, Dad, did you misunderstand Shen Shen? It's nothing, let your uncle speak, I'll listen. Shin Shen said with a smile. Shin Ziming was still furious. He opened the video and demanded, Tell me, did this Tang gentleman humiliate you? Yes, Shin Shen admitted openly. We had a horse race at the racetrack, and he lost to me. He was just fulfilling his promise. Shut up, I don't want to hear your explanation. Shin Ziming was furious. He is the son of Mr. Tang who is the major shareholder of our Qin family company. If my company goes bankrupt, I won't let you off the hook. After hearing this, Qin Meng was also shocked as she had no idea about this. Lao Qin, what should we do now? Is our family going to go bankrupt? My Arc de Triomphe, my mansion. He Nianjin burst into tears. Qin Ziming's face turned red with anger. What else can we do? 
Naturally, we have to take this culprit to apologize to Mr. Tang. Demolition man, you come with me to apologize to Mr. Tang immediately, or I won't spare you. Shinshin smiled and said, he can handle my apology, he's quite impressive. Kid, are you addicted to pretending to be a rich second generation? Don't act in front of me at home. Shin Ziming went back to his room and took his bank card. He had over a million in savings, all of which he had to use for the apology. Good girl, you have brought us a lucky star. Xin Ziming looked at Qin Meng with a cold smile. Xin Meng lowered her head and dared not speak. Come with me to Mr. Tang's house. Xin Ziming stormed out with a furious expression. Ying Zhan sat in the Audi, snacking casually. When he saw Xin Chen leaving, he immediately adjusted his seat and prepared to follow. Suddenly, he received a phone call. Ying Zhan, come to my place. Okay, I'll be there soon, master. Ying Zhan put down his phone and arranged for eight brothers to protect him secretly, then drove back himself. Master, I'm here. Ying Zhan walked into the office and stood opposite the old housekeeper, being very careful. The old housekeeper said calmly, Ten minutes ago, the Southern Frontier War Marshal came to Dongzhou. What? Ying Zhan was startled and asked, Master, why did he come? To protect the young master. The old housekeeper said calmly, the southern frontier war marshal is a soldier personally trained by the young master and is loyal to him. He heard that the young master was assassinated and was very unhappy. This time he came to Dongzhou to hold you accountable. And he intends to take your place. Ying Zhan smiled bitterly. A small mistake he made had made many people resent him. He felt desperate too. I'll go to the airport to meet him. Ying Zhan immediately turned and left. He arrived at the airport, which was already sealed off by the military. Every three steps, there was a guard, and every five steps, there was a sentry. The coast team was parked in a row. Dozens of men with earpieces stood in a neat line, ready to welcome the arrival of the Southern Frontier War Marshal. A fighter jet landed, and the Southern Frontier War Marshal arrived. Bang! Countless salutes were fired. Thousands of people immediately turned left and stood straight. Salute. Snap. Under the gaze of countless people, a man with a commanding presence walked out, his sharp eyes piercing into everyone's hearts like a blade. Ying Zhan was shocked. The killing intent was so terrifying, like a bloodthirsty tiger approaching. This was the famous Southern Frontier War Marshal, the top fighter of the Vanguard Army, Wan Tianzi. Ying Zhan took a deep breath and walked over proactively, saying, Dongzhou War Marshal, Ying Zhan. Wan Tianzi stared at him with cold eyes, and in the next moment, suddenly threw a punch. Ying Zhan's eyelids twitched, and he immediately defended himself. Bang! The force of the punch was terrifying, and it sent Ying Zhan back three steps. His arm went numb and almost broke. The gap in strength between the two was too great. This punch is for the other war marshals. Wan Tianzi's voice was cold. You have disappointed us too much. You are not worthy of the title of war marshal. Ying Zhan smiled bitterly and said, Brother Wan, I was indeed careless last time. Is that carelessness on your part? You are clearly incompetent. Wan Tianzi's eyes were extremely cold as he said, Do you know who the young master is? Allowing the young master to be frightened is your negligence. Why do you still have the face to live? Why haven't you atoned for your sins with death? Ying Zhan sighed, It's the young master's wish for me to live, and I will spend my life atoning for my mistakes. Wan Tianzi snorted coldly and immediately pushed his shoulder to walk out. He's coming out, the people outside, one by one, walked over excitedly. We pay our respects to General Wan Tianzi. We have long admired your name, and today we finally meet you in person. Several old leaders were excited and teary-eyed. With Wan Tianzi guarding the southern border, no foreign enemy had dared to step foot in over a decade. He was a hero protecting the country. Wan Tianzi put on his special military uniform and said expressionlessly, After I arrived, I don't need bodyguards when I go out, nor do I need a convoy. Don't mention my existence to the outside world. My identity information is top secret. His words shook everyone in the car. 
An elderly person of the highest rank asked cautiously, General, may I ask why you have come to the eastern province this time? To find my master. Master? Everyone exclaimed. My goodness! The person in front of them was the general of the southern border, with extraordinary strength. He had once single-handedly penetrated the enemy's camp, causing tens of thousands of enemy troops to retreat 800 miles away. The invincible general of the southern border was already a war god in the hearts of the people. How terrifying must his master be? Stop the car, Wan Tianzi said. The convoy stopped directly on the overpass. Wan Tianzi got out of the car, casually carrying a tattered bundle, and said, Don't track me. If I find out, I'll make sure your heads roll. He jumped down from the overpass of several tens of meters in an instant. The old men were shocked. Wouldn't he die from jumping from such a height? They hurriedly looked under the bridge. There was no one under the bridge. Wan Tianzi took a few steps, and Ng Zhan drove up in an Audi, saying, I'll take you to see the young master. Get in the car. Poof. Wan Tianzi got into the car and said, the general of the eastern province also likes to ride in luxury cars and wear luxury watches. You have already been corrupted by money. Ng Zhan's mouth twitched and he said, this is not the border, and there are no enemies. We naturally need to dress more normally to protect the young master. That's just an excuse. I absolutely will not wear anything of yours, Wan Tianzi said, then closed his eyes to rest. He had been on a plane all day and was a bit tired. An hour later, the car entered the estate. We're here, Ng Zhan woke up Wan Tianzi. Wan Tianzi opened his eyes and looked at the luxurious mansion in front of him, sneering, have you already moved into such a luxurious place? It's filled with the nouveau riche atmosphere everywhere. This is the young master's home, Ng Zhan said. Wan Tianzi immediately held back the rest of his words. Not bad, the young master has good taste. The two got out of the car and entered the mansion. The old butler came out with a smile. Master steward, Wan Tianzi was extremely excited, it's been eight years. You look better and better. Tianzi has also grown taller and stronger, the old butler said with a smile, let's talk inside. The servants brought tea. Wan Tianzi was not used to such luxury, and he tensed up, saying, Master Steward, where is the young master? I want to see him. Not so fast, the old butler said with a half-smile, the young master is currently busy. If you want to see him, you'll have to give advance notice. And with your current attire, you'll scare the young master. As soon as he finished speaking, a dozen servants entered the room with dozens of sets of clothes. You change into a new outfit, then come with me to see the young master. Luxury watches, leather shoes, luxurious suits, each worth millions. Wan Tianzi looked at the challenge, then at these things, and sighed in his heart. After changing his clothes, Wan Tianzi felt uncomfortable no matter what, feeling uneasy everywhere. Ng Zhen smiled and said, It's not that I want to wear these things, it's that we can't let the young master lose face. Wan Tianzi sneered, If the young master likes it, then I'll wear it. The old butler walked in and said, I have already informed the young master, we can go now. You too, bring the Lamborghini outside. No need, I'll drive the Audi. The young master wants to keep a low profile. Ng Zhan immediately pulled Wan Tianzi away. Once in the car, Ng Zhan handed a phone to Wan Tianzi and said, When you see the young master, don't address him directly by his status, try to be as normal as possible. Don't ask why, just know that's what the young master said. Wan Tianzi snorted and said, Once I'm familiar with city life, you can get lost, you useless person. Ng Zhan awkwardly smiled. Qin Ziming bought a gift, spending a large sum of money. Although he felt distressed about the money, he had no choice but to buy it. It was all because of this demolition household, daring to insult Tang's own son. He wanted to crush the other party's heart. Riding in the car, he arrived at Tang Zong's villa. He rang the doorbell, and the maid opened the door. Hello, my name is Qin Ziming, is Tang Zong at home? Tang Zong is at the hospital. Okay, thank you. Qin Ziming thanked her and left. He quickly drove to the hospital. 
Xin Chen and Xin Meng sat in the back, and Xin Meng complained, Dad, it's all because of that Tang Ijie. He insisted on betting with Xin Chen, and he lost. Shut up. Xin Ziming scolded, he's immature, are you also immature? What's the status of the Tang family's young master, even if he lost, you can't bring it up? You guys are bold, daring to make the young master fulfill the bet, you really have nerves of steel. If Tang Zong can't forgive this time, I will definitely make you break up. Xin Meng's face turned pale. Xin Shen held her hand tightly and comforted her, it's okay, trust me. Twenty minutes later, they arrived at the hospital. Xin Ziming went to the front desk to inquire about the location. At the hospital entrance, an Audi stopped. Ying Zhan and Wan Tianzi walked into the lobby. Young master, it's the young master. Wan Tianzi was extremely excited and immediately quickened his pace. Young master, I've missed you so much. Wan Tianzi rushed over and hugged Xin Chen tightly. Xin Chen was stunned for a moment and subconsciously said, You are, Wan Tianzi? Young master, it's me. Wan Tianzi was already in tears, Young master, we haven't seen each other in eight years, the brothers all miss you very much. Xin Chen sighed, Yes, it had been eight years. After finishing training those people, he hadn't been to the border for eight years. Those good buddies from the past, now all looked so different, he probably wouldn't recognize them. Wan Tianzi, one of the subordinates he had once trained, left a deep impression on Xin Chen. Among so many people, Wan Tianzi was the only one who had taken a bullet for him. The once handsome young man had turned into a weathered man.